After the end of World War II, the world was split into two, East and West. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. Do you copy? You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? Well, you've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant, but... Be careful. You might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Hmm, let's see. I'll be... I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. This will be a sneaking mission. You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox Unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment are procured on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Great. Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. Gotcha. Getting back to the subject, how exactly am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I lost it in a tree on the way down. I see. Well, you'd better go back and get it then. You know where it is? No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. To climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's covered in ivy and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk violating Soviet airspace, but I'll be in the gunship. My frequency is 140.85. I'll give you a call if I need to talk to you. If you need to talk to me, use the send function. OK, Snake, go get your backpack. I see you've retrieved your backpack, Snake. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. Your available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip and press the enter button. For other equipped items, just do the same thing from item. Got it. Use the survival viewer backpack. Yep, that's right. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop. If your stamina gets too low, it'll affect your performance. You won't be able to shoot accurately, for example, and your wounds won't heal as smoothly. Keep an eye on your stamina so you don't run out. To recover lost stamina, you can hunt for local flora and fauna. You can use either your tranquilizer gun or your knife to hunt. My only weapon is a Mark 22 Hush Puppy tranquilizer gun? That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy with it. The suppressor's durability is shown in the icon. Any weapons and equipment beyond what you're carrying now, you'll have to find as you go. I have to find my own weapons and equipment? Whose crazy idea was this anyway? Solo covert actions are standard Fox operating procedure. You can't leave any traces of your presence. No weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat, or bodily waste. The same goes for bullets and cartridges, too. Your presence in enemy territory is already a violation of international conventions of warfare. There aren't supposed to be any American soldiers in Russia. It could spark an international incident. You can't let anyone see you. You can't let the enemy know you're there. This is a stealth mission. You're a ghost snake in every sense of the word. And there'll be no rescue if you're captured. The military and U.S. government will deny any involvement in the affair. Then I'll just have to take care of myself, huh? I'm afraid so. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. SIS guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one be issued a potassium cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. How generous of you. Use it if you're taken prisoner by the enemy. It'll send you into a state of false death for a short time. Fooling them into thinking that I'm really dead. So how do I come back to life? Just take the revival pill. You mean that thing they put in my tooth before the mission? That's the one. 
But be careful. If you remain in a state of false death for too long, nothing will be able to bring you back. Remember that. I'll keep it in mind. You said this was a solo mission, right? Right. I guess that means I can't count on any reinforcements. Correct. The mission rests entirely in your hands. A real one-man army. Relax. There's a support team ready to back you up over the radio. Who? I'll introduce them to you. This time, survival is of utmost importance. The first member of the support team will be in charge of monitoring your physical condition, acting as a medic, so to speak, as well as recording your mission data. She's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She? Hello, Snake. I'm Paramedic. Nice to meet you. Paramedic? As in a medic who comes in by parachute. Aren't you going to tell me your real name? Are you going to tell me yours, Mr. Snake? My name, huh? It's John Doe. And they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. After a week, no one has a name. What's your name? Jane Doe. Very funny. I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. My frequency is 145.73. She's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency, 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Huh? Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary soldier and your mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? She also helped me plan this mission. She and I were at SAS together. Jack, is that you? How many years has it been? Boss? That's right. It's me. <sighs> Talk to me. Let me hear your voice. It's been five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. You've lost weight. You can tell just by the sound of my voice. Of course I can. I know all about you. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. Hmm. You didn't need me anymore. But there were still so many things I wanted you to teach me. No, I taught you everything you needed to know about fighting techniques. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? I can't teach you that. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. In fact, technique doesn't even matter. What's most important is spirit. Spirit and body are like two sides of a single coin. They're the same thing. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Listen to me, Jack. Just because soldiers are on the same side right now doesn't mean they always will be. Having personal feelings about your comrades is one of the worst sins you can commit. Politics determine who you face on the battlefield. And politics are a living thing. They change along with the times. Yesterday's good might be tomorrow's evil. Is that why you abandoned me? No, it had nothing to do with you. I already told you, Jack, I was on a top secret mission. A soldier has to follow whatever orders he's given. It's not his place to question why. But you're looking for a reason to fight. You're a natural-born fighter, but you're not quite a soldier. A soldier is a political tool, nothing more. That's doubly true if he's a career soldier. Right and wrong have no place in his mission. He has no enemies and no friends. Only the mission. You follow the orders you're given. That's what being a soldier is. I do whatever I have to to get the job done. I don't think about politics. That's not the same thing. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end, you have to choose whether you're going to live as a soldier or just another man with a gun. There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. I follow the president and the top brass. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. 
The president and the top brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader, no matter who's in charge. People aren't the ones who dictate the missions. Then who does? The times. People's values change over time, and so do the leaders of a country. So there's no such thing as an enemy in absolute terms. The enemies we fight are only enemies in relative terms, constantly changing with the times. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. And that's the way a soldier's supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. All right, but do me a favor. What is it? Call me Snake. Snake? Oh, right. Your code name is Snake. It suits you well. That's right. The legendary unit that the boss put together during World War II was a snake. The Cobra Unit, a group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world. As long as you've got a legendary hero backing you up, you'll be fine. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have with me. Oh, and one more thing, boss. Yes? It's good to hear your voice again. Same here. After all, who knows if either of us will make it out alive. Snake? You are always best at urban warfare and infiltrating buildings. But this is the jungle. Survival is going to be key. Those CQC techniques I taught you are sure to come in handy. CQC? Close quarters combat, huh? I've been in the Green Berets for the past few years. I'm probably pretty rusty. Not to worry. I'll be here to help you remember. After all, this is your first actual survival mission. I'll be supporting you over the radio. Where are you, boss? Next to the Major? The boss is communicating with us by radio from aboard a permit-class submarine in the Arctic Ocean. My frequency is 141.80. Call me if you need my advice on battle techniques. Gotcha. Your mission is to retrieve Dr. Sokolov. Dr. Sokolov is being held in an abandoned factory located to the north of your current position. Avoid heavy combat and don't let anyone see you. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. Snake, your presence in Soviet territory is already a violation of international law. We can't let the Kremlin find out that the CIA and the American government are involved. Contact with the enemy is strictly prohibited. Don't engage them in battle either. This is a stealth mission. Got that? The Major is right. The point of this mission is to sneak through the jungle without being seen. The success of the mission depends on how well you use your camouflage. Change your camouflage by selecting Camouflage from the Survival Viewer. The Uniform option lets you pick your uniform, while the Face option lets you change your face paint. Choosing camouflage that blends in with your surroundings will help you conceal yourself more effectively. Also, don't forget that anything that moves will stand out in the jungle. If you just stand up and run around like an idiot, you're bound to be spotted. But if you crawl instead, you should be able to sneak by without being noticed. You can see how effective your camouflage is by looking at the camo index. The camo index shows how well your current camouflage blends in with the surrounding area. The higher the value, the harder you are to spot and vice versa. The key is to make yourself one with nature. Keep that in mind as you go along, okay? Your objective, Sokolov, is inside the factory. They should be holding him in a room in the northeast section. Northeast section. Got it. Be careful. Your mission is to bring Sokolov back alive. He must not be exposed to any kind of danger. Do not approach Sokolov while in the alert phase. Right. Oh, and one more thing, Snake. You mean there's more? No, it's just that when you get to Sokolov, I want you to tell him something from me. And that is? Sorry for being so late. Is that all? Yes. Understood. Beginning my approach to the target. Major, this is Snake. Sokolov is safe with me. He's doing fine. No injuries. Good work, Snake. Now hurry up and get Sokolov to the recovery point. We'll rendezvous with you there. Roger. What about the sentries? I had to kill them. There was no other way. But no one will know we were involved. I put them to sleep. Nice and clean. No one spotted me. I managed to get past them. I see. What about the boss? We lost contact with the boss some time ago. What happened? 
It's probably just a weak signal. Just hurry and get Sokolov out of there. Major, do you read me? I read you. Snake, are you all right? I've run into a few snags. These guys were after Sokolov, too. Apparently, they were taking orders from a Gru colonel named Volgan. A Gru colonel? Part of an internal Soviet power struggle, according to Sokolov. Something between the KGB and Gru. Between Khrushchev's supporters and Volgan's. Sokolov was being guarded by the KGB and hunted by Gru? Snake, it sounds like this could be even hotter than Cuba. I don't like it. Something about the whole thing stinks. I agree. You'd better hurry. Sokolov ran off by himself, but I'll catch up to him. We're counting on you. Snake, can you hear me? Yeah. Just barely. Snake, listen to me. You need emergency medical treatment. Can you move? You've got to get those wounds treated. Hang in there. All right, let's get you fixed up. Paramedic? Okay, Snake. Just relax and it'll all be over before you know it. <sighs> Stay with me. I've seen people in worse shape before. Think you can handle it? Major. The boss. She's defected. We'll talk about that later. First, we've got to get you patched up. Okay, here we go. First, open the survival viewer with the start button. If you select cure, you can start the treatment. Healing is divided into treatment using medicine with the item window button and surgical treatment using the weapon window button. Your injuries include a fractured left elbow and rib bone and lacerations on your upper arms, right elbow, and abdomen. They need to be fixed using surgical treatment. Move the healing cursor with the left analog stick to the affected part of your body. Once you've selected the affected area, hold the weapon window button and use the left analog stick to select the medical item and then press the enter button. With this method, you can use items to help your recovery process. To treat a bone fracture, first secure the affected area with a fastener and then wrap it in bandages. That should do it. For lacerations, you'll need disinfectant to clean the wound, sutures to stitch it up, styptic to slow the flow of blood, and bandages to wrap the wound. If you do everything I mentioned, the wound should heal completely. Understood? Yeah. Stay with me. Go into the survival viewer and treat those wounds. This is Snake. Do you read me? Loud and clear. Glad to see you landed safely. I got blown pretty far off target. Snake, let's go over your mission objectives one more time. Rescue Sokolov. Find out what's happened to the Shagahod. Then destroy it. And finally, eliminate the boss. Eliminate the boss. This mission will be codenamed Operation Snake Eater. Because I'll be taking on the boss in our Cobra unit, right? Don't forget about Colonel Volkin. I'm not a hired killer. I know, but that was the Kremlin's demand. Demand? You mean it wasn't just a request? What's it to us if the Khrushchev regime is threatened by the Colonel and his faction? If supporting the current regime helps us avoid a nuclear exchange, then that's what we'll do. And what are the CIA's demands? Our priorities are the rescue of Sokolov and the destruction of the Shagahod. Roger that, Major Tom. Hold on, Snake. What now? I'm changing my code name. It turns out Tom wasn't the most auspicious choice. What do you mean? Well, the truth is, when I chose my code name, I picked the wrong one. The wrong one? Did you ever see the movie The Great Escape? It came out last year. Oh, must have missed that one. Anyway, it's based on a true story about prisoners who escaped from a POW camp in Nazi Germany. The prisoners dig three tunnels as part of their plan, but the Nazis find two of the tunnels before they're finished. The prisoners succeed in escaping by using the last remaining tunnel. The names of those three tunnels were Dick, Harry, and Tom. I get it. You use the name of the tunnel they escaped in as your code name because you thought it would bring you good luck. Yes, that's exactly right. At least, that was the plan. But? But I got the name wrong. The one they escaped in was Harry. Tom was one of the unlucky tunnels. It was discovered by the Nazis before it was finished. I watched the movie again just to make sure. In fact, I even ordered the actual film from the movie company. Yeah, it doesn't sound like the greatest name to use. So what should I call you? Hmm. You know, let's just use Zero, like we've been doing all along. All right, then. Major Zero it is. We'll start over from square one. From square zero. My frequency? 
is 140.85. Oh, I almost forgot. Paramedic is with us again on this mission. Is this her last chance too? If we fail, she'll have her medical license revoked. It's more or less the same kind of fate. Her frequency is the same as during the Virtuous mission, 145.73. She'll be recording your mission data as well, just like the last time. That frequency is also the same, 140.96. And there's one more person on your support team. His name is Mr. Sigint. He's an expert on the latest in weapons and equipment technology. You'll be going up against some of the world's most advanced weaponry when you infiltrate the research facility. If you have any questions, just ask him. His frequency is 148.41. Mr. Sigint, got it. Adam, your KGB contact, is waiting for you at the abandoned factory up ahead. The same factory Sokolov was being held in last week. Yes, meet up with Adam first. He's cleared the way for you to rescue Sokolov. How will I know this Adam guy when I see him? You'll know once you reach the factory. The whole area's been polluted by the fallout from that nuclear blast. No one else would dare come close. The password is Who Are the Patriots and Lali Lule Lo. Lali Lule Lo. Gotcha. You've been equipped with a 45 for this mission. Be careful, it's noisy. I thought standard Fox procedure was procure on site weapons acquisition. The circumstances are different this time. You're now on an official mission for the United States government. It would be necessary to make your presence known to a certain extent, to the Khrushchev regime at the very least. But remember, this is still a sneaking mission. Snake, if you fail this mission, it will mean an all out nuclear war. Keep that in mind and proceed with extreme caution. Understood. Commencing Operation Snake Eater. This is Snake. Major Zero. I read you, Snake. I was ambushed by the boss. You were what? The drone's been shot to hell. It's up in flames. That's not good. Enemy scouts are going to come looking for you. Yeah, I know. But what was the boss doing here in the first place? There's got to be a leak somewhere. No, that's impossible. The man the boss is working with, Volgin, isn't exactly on speaking terms with Khrushchev. I lost my gun. The boss destroyed it. Snake, I know how you're feeling. It's hard for me to believe, too, that a legendary hero like the boss would go over to the Russians. That she'd double-cross us like this. But that's how it is, and if you don't accept it, you'll never be able to beat her. That's not the problem. In terms of sheer technique, I'll never be able to beat her. I know that all too well. You've got to do it, Snake. She's your enemy and your objective. Enemy? We were together for ten years, and now you tell me she's my enemy? Enough. Hurry to the factory where Adam is waiting. Scouts have probably already been sent out to investigate the explosion. You've lost your weapon, right? That means you've got no chance of winning in a battle situation. Whatever you do, don't let them see you. She's right, Snake. You should get some sleep. Although, in your condition, you really ought to be back in the ICU. Whenever you save the game and quit, you'll go to sleep. Sleeping allows you to gain back stamina naturally. Depending on how long you sleep, you may also recover naturally from sickness and injury. When you're tired or hurt, the best thing to do is just get some sleep. So do yourself a favor and take a nap. Doctor's orders, okay? Yeah, okay. Snake, are you there? Eva? Did you miss me? Did you make it without any trouble? No one saw me. So you're back with Volgan? In a matter of speaking. What about the boss? Yeah, she's here too. Better be careful. Thanks, I will. The boss and I get along pretty well, though. I guess we traitors have a lot in common. Why would anyone want to defect? Betraying your country like that, I, I just don't get it. Are you talking about the boss? Why'd you do it? Weren't you born and raised in America? Yes, in a small rural town. I never even knew there were other countries, other cultures, other ways of thinking. Until I went to work for the NSA. And one day, I'd found I'd lost faith in the things I'd been taking for granted. What did you see? What was it that made you want to change sides? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me. I saw the universe. The universe? Not the actual universe. The universe as the intelligence community sees it. I realized that the gravity in this universe was holding me back. That's all. People and countries are both changed by their environment. And by the times. That sounds like what the boss was saying. 
There's a world of difference between this country and America, but it's only a difference of position, a difference of perspective. Coming here made me realize something. Half of what I'd been told was a complete and utter lie. The other half was a conveniently constructed lie. Where's the truth, then? It's hidden in the lies. Are you lying, too? Who knows? I've been trained to make even the most severe falsehood sound like the honest truth. Weren't you? No. I believe because I have to, even if it is a lie. That's part of my mission. I'll have to remember that. If you need me, give me a call on the radio. My frequency is 142.52. See ya. Snake, are you there? Eva, where are you? In the fortress, in Groznygrad. Dr. Sokolov is here, too. Is he all right? He's fine. Right now he's busy putting the finishing touches on the Shagohad. Good. That means they haven't killed him. Not yet, anyway. But you better hurry. They've already finished the Phase Two tests. Once the final preparations are complete, they'll have no more use for him. The Colonel won't have any qualms about killing him if he thinks the CIA is closing in. Eva, you can't let Sokolov out of your sight. I know. Snake, do you know where Groznygrad is? Granin told me that I should be able to get there from the mountains to the north, through an underground tunnel. Granin told you? Yeah, he even gave me the key to the warehouse. Why? Because he was drunk, I guess. You've got to be kidding me. Hell if I know. Snake, there's one problem with that route. What problem? The mountain entrance to the underground tunnel that leads to the fortress is sealed. You need a key to get in. A key? What about the key Granin gave me? That key won't work. But don't worry, I'll figure something out. I have an idea. There are some ruins at the top of the mountains. Meet me there. The top of the mountains. Got it. Wait, there's something else I've got to tell you. Now what? I heard that one of the cobras is waiting for you in the jungle at the foot of the mountains. He's a legendary sniper called The End. Yeah, I've seen him before. That ridiculously old guy, right? Don't underestimate him. He's known as the father of modern sniping. Is he alone? No spotter? None. He's all by himself. Apparently, he doesn't need a spotter. You can't be serious. The entire forest is on his side. The forest? Stay alert. Yeah. I'd hate to have it be the end for me. Wait. There's something else I've got to tell you. What's that? I heard that the ocelots have set up an ambush for you in the jungle at the foot of the mountains. Apparently, they've even got snipers positioned there. An ambush? Watch yourself. Hmm. Eva, I found that sniper you were talking about. That's the end. He's a legend, known as the father of sniping. I've got experience sniping in urban and marine environments. What about the forest? Never. I see. Well, that forest is divided into three areas, a river, a plateau, and a clearing. He should be lying in wait for you in one of those places. Sounds like this may take a while. It'll be a test of endurance. Be careful, though. From what I've heard, the end has an almost supernatural knack for camouflaging himself. So, whoever moves first loses. This guy's over a hundred years old, though, so I should have the advantage in terms of stamina. I wouldn't be so sure if I were you. Why's that? I've heard that his body is photosynthetic, like a plant. What is he, some kind of monster? On top of that, he can speak to the forest, too. So in other words, he knows it inside out. Uh-huh. But he doesn't know you. I'm sure you can beat him. Don't worry. I intend to. Did you manage to escape? Yeah, I'm out. Be careful. In your present state, you're practically naked. You don't have a single decent weapon, and you'll never survive in a battle. Take some time and pull yourself together. Eva says she's recovered your equipment, so rendezvous with her as soon as possible to get your gear back. Use the escape route Eva set up for you. Go down into the sewers through the manhole in the northwest section of Groznygrad. Start out by exiting the holding cells and heading northwest. Snake, you're already in the sewers? Eva, yeah, I just got down here. Mm. I'm coming to meet you now. The door at the north end is open, right? Uh, Snake? Let me guess. There's a problem. Yeah. What is it this time? The colonel found out you escaped. 
He did, huh? I figured as much. Yeah, and now all of Grozny Grad is on red alert. Just my luck. But once I'm out of the fortress... You can't get out. I can't? When the fortress went on red alert, they sealed off the sewers. You've got to be kidding me. I'm serious. And that means the escape route I laid out is... Is sealed off, too. Right. And they just sent a unit out looking for you. Down here? Uh-huh. They'll be there any minute now. You've got to get out quick. But isn't the exit sealed off? You should be able to get out by heading straight north. Book it, Snake. If they find you, you're dead. Snake, are you all right? That was a close call. What the hell happened to me? You were halfway drowned at the bottom of the river. Almost crossed over to the other side. Other side? So that really was... Something on your mind, Snake? Major, was there a man in the Cobra unit called the Sorrow? Yes, I've heard of him. He was an uncanny soldier who fought alongside the boss. What kind of man was he? The Sorrow was a man with... Well, special powers. He had ESP, which was the subject of extensive research in the Soviet Union at the time. He was especially gifted as a medium. A medium? Someone who can communicate with the spirit world and evoke the spirits of the dead. In other words, he could talk to ghosts. They say he could find out what was going on in a battle by talking to dead soldiers. What about him and the boss? What was the story between them? I don't know the details. Why don't we ask Sigint? Yo! I finished checking up on this Sorrow guy a while ago. Thought you guys already knew, though. Knew what? That he's dead. He's been dead for two years now. He died two years ago? At Selino Yarsk. You know, those cliffs you were at. And the boss is the one who did him in. The boss? Yep. Two years ago, the boss was sent by the CIA on a secret mission to Selino Yarsk. That's when she met the Sorrow, who'd gone back to the Soviet Union after the Cobras broke up at the end of the war. Except this time they were enemies. And then what? The boss killed the Sorrow herself and accomplished her mission. At least, that's what the records say. So, he was never there in the first place. He just couldn't let go of the boss. You okay, Snake? Yeah, I'm fine. It looks like it's not time for me to die yet. I sure hope not. Otherwise, the whole mission is shot. We're counting on you, pal. Roger that. Eva? Snake. You didn't call. I was worried. Are you all right? Yeah. I took a pretty freaky detour. What are you talking about? Nothing. Forget it. Let's just say I'm back. Good. But how did you escape from the sewers? I jumped into the river. From all the way up there? You're out of control. Yeah. I got carried away by the current and almost drowned. Great. That's perfect. What do you mean, that's perfect? I mean, if you ended up in the river, then I know a good spot nearby. Let's meet up there. Where is it? Keep going upstream until you get to a waterfall. A waterfall, huh? Right. Behind that waterfall, there's a cave. We'll meet in there. The cave behind the waterfall upstream. Got it. See you there. Snake, I see you've managed to sneak into the hangar. Yeah, the Shagahod's in here. The completed Phase Two Shagahod represents a grave threat to the West. We can't allow it to be mass-produced. You've got to destroy it. Eva's got the data on the Shagohod. Do you think that's safe? Well, I wouldn't exactly say it's safe, but Khrushchev is a shrewd leader. I can't imagine he'd use it for anything other than deterrence. Volgin, however, is a different story. He's planning to use the Shagohod to turn the Cold War into a blazing hot one. We can't let him have it. Agreed. That leaves just one more mission for you to carry out. The boss. Exactly. For now, just focus on destroying the Shagahod. Yes, sir. I'll let Sigint fill you in on how to destroy it. Yo, like Eva was saying, if you're looking to blow the whole place sky high, the best way is to take out those liquid fuel tanks with the C3. You know there's four tanks in there, right? You have to put C3 on all four of them. To plan a C3 charge, all you gotta do is equip the C3 and press the weapon button while standing in front of a tank. Just like TNT. But, uh, make sure you don't plant it in the wrong place. You barely got enough C3 as it is, right? Good point. I'll make sure not to plant it anywhere else. Good, man. And be careful. Liquid fuel has a nasty habit of going off at the slightest shock. So don't go using any heavy firepower near the tanks unless you're aiming to get yourself barbecued. I'll keep that in mind. The C3 charges all have to go off at once if you want to bring down the hangar in one fell swoop. 
So if I were you, I'd wait until after you plant the last charge to start the timer mechanism. All right. I'll make sure I finish planting all four charges before I start the timer. Once the timer's set, you've got five minutes until it explodes, right? Once the timer's set, you've got seven minutes until it explodes, right? Once the timer's set, you've got ten minutes until it explodes, right? Once the timer's set, you've got fifteen minutes until it explodes, right? Once the timer's set, you've got twenty minutes until it explodes, right? So make sure you get your ass out of that place by then. I think that's about all I've got. The rest is up to you. Good luck, pal. We're counting on you, Snake. Snake? Eva. I finished planting the bomb on the rail bridge. If we get rid of the bridge, the enemy won't be able to follow us. That should at least buy us some time. I've also set up the escape route. How are things going on your end? I just finished planting the second charge. Give me a little more time. Okay. I'll be waiting for you at the bridge. Major, I finished planting the C3. I'm on my way out now. Hurry, Snake. Is Eva taking care of the escape route? Yeah. Are you sure? She can handle it. She's been out of radio contact for some time now. She'll come through. I know she will. All right, then. We'll hurry up and get out of there. Snake, can you hear me? Paramedic. Thank God. Eva's been seriously hurt. So have you. Luckily, I think her organs are all intact, but... Calm down, Snake. Calm down? You'll both be fine as long as you get the proper emergency treatment. But you're the only one who can do this, understand? So you've got to calm down. Right. Okay. Okay. Now let's open up the survival viewer and treat the injury. Do you have supplies with you? I'm running kind of short. Then by switching the survival viewer over to Eva, you can treat her wounds too. Now get to work. Oh, and Snake, I'm pretty sure you know this already. But if you don't have enough supplies for the both of you, your wounds come first. Huh? Do you get my meaning, Snake? You've still got a mission to complete. Yeah, I know what I have to do. Snake? Like this. Snake, are you all right? I've been better. What about Eva? I healed her up. She can manage. Good. Snake, you'll take the lead and break through the enemy's line of defense. Eva will ordinarily be following behind you. If you lie on your belly, she'll lie down as well. If you slip and fall off a cliff, she'll follow right behind. You can call out to Eva by pressing the action button. Head to the lake along with Eva. Snake, the lake is just over that cliff. Eva should be able to climb it if you help her. Keep her close to you. Well done, Snake. The MiG's disengaged. Most likely under orders from Khrushchev. Is this his way of helping us? Who knows? Maybe he didn't want things to get messier than they already are. Or maybe he just wanted us to owe him one. The important thing is, you made it out alive. As long as Khrushchev is with us, I don't think they'll be coming after you. It should be smooth sailing all the way to Alaska. I'm sending someone out to Galena Base to meet you. To meet me? The DCI and the President himself are waiting at Langley. Don't keep them waiting. Yes, Grozny Grad and the Granin Research Facility have both been wiped out without a trace. I understand, sir, but they were necessary sacrifices. Yes, the CIA has taken care of the boss themselves. I believe the White House will be satisfied. Khrushchev is finished. Your time has finally arrived. Yes, the American president is relying on us to keep a lid on the whole affair. We've got him by the balls. It should make a valuable trump card in future negotiations. Yes, Chief Director, of course. I'll keep the KGB informed. Yes, it's me. The boss has accomplished her mission. The philosopher's legacy is now safely with us, in America's hands. With this money, yes, the philosophers can finally be revived. The film we handed the Chinese was a fake. 
<laughs> Peking must be in an uproar right about now. I'm afraid so. Only half the money has made it back to the United States. The KGB must still have part of the legacy. Yes, the weapon has been reduced to ashes. That's right. Grozny Grad has been obliterated by the Davy Crockett we brought in as well. Yes, that was the boss's work too. Speaking of which, I've obtained something from Granin that you might find interesting. It's a revolutionary new nuclear attack system. Perhaps it might just come in handy someday. Yes, we have John, I mean Snake, to thank for that. Khrushchev believed it as well. Yes, they bought our story. I don't think they'll be making a fuss. The secondary alert has been lifted as well. And the Soviets still haven't discovered my true identity. They have no idea that I've been triple crossing them. I will continue my activities as a contact for the new government. Yes, it appears that no one knew that I was Adam. Of course, I am always at the CIA's disposal, Mr. Director. Do you copy? You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? You've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant, but... Be careful. You might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Hmm, let's see. I'll be... I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. Oh, and Snake? Yeah. The crew isn't watching anymore. You can take off the disguise now. Good idea. This isn't right. Time for the Snake to shed his skin. Can you hear me, Major Tom? This is Snake. Kept you waiting, huh? This will be a sneaking mission. You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment to procure on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Great. Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. Gotcha. Getting back to the subject, how exactly am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I lost it in a tree on the way down. Snake, are you all right? Yeah. What happened to me? The end hit you with the tranquilizer dart and you passed out. Uh-huh. Then what? The end took you to the lab while you were unconscious and left you there. The end did? Yeah. Why? Why'd he let me live? Maybe he's still waiting. Waiting? Yeah. Waiting for you to show him the true end. Hmm. Snake, it appears you were knocked out by the end's tranquilizer rounds. Yeah, but why didn't he kill me? I don't know, but I expect he's still in Sokrovieno. Until you defeat the end, you won't be able to reach the mountains. Snake, go back to Sokrovieno, and this time, finish him. Major, I found the end. He's dead. What the hell happened? Maybe it was from old age. You mean he kicked the bucket in the middle of a battle? Maybe. I... Well, Snake, the victory is yours. No, I don't think so. What do you mean? It was his dying wish to fight me, but I disappointed him. Snake, listen to yourself. This is a mission. It's not a game. It's not a sport. You think you're competing for the gold at Tokyo or something? I guess you're right. Just focus on completing the mission. Yes, sir. Saving the game, Snake? Do you want to save? 
You want to save? You want to save? Hold on a sec. You going to save? You want to save? I'll get right on it. Snake, are you saving? Snake, you want to save, don't you? Ready to save, Snake? Saving the game? Do you need to save? Should I save for you? Snake, do you want to save? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. All right. Okay, good luck, Snake. Thanks. Chin up. I'll be in touch. Take care, Snake. I will. Snake, I'm behind you 100%. Thanks. That means a lot. Good luck. Thanks. Snake, be careful out there. Don't worry. Hang in there. I'm trying. Come back alive, okay? Naturally. You're hurt, aren't you? Don't push yourself too hard. All right. I think you should take a rest. You're going to overexert yourself. Okay. You're wounded. You better take it easy. Roger. You're badly wounded. Don't you think you should rest a while? Yeah, I think you're right. Take care, Snake. Right. Just a little farther, Snake. Yeah. Snake, come back in one piece, okay? I'll be waiting. Don't worry. Don't die on me, Snake. Not a chance. Snake, there's no memory card plugged into the memory card slot. You need a memory card to save the game. So put one into the memory card slot. Sorry, Snake. There doesn't seem to be any free space on that memory card. I couldn't save the game. Uh, Snake, you have to format it first before you can save. Didn't you want to save? I'm sorry. There was an error. I couldn't save the game. Snake, you want to save? Yeah. You might not want to. Why wouldn't I? Well, it just feels like something bad could happen. It's just your imagination. I hope so. Make sure you come back as soon as you can. Please, come back soon. Hey, Snake, you ever heard of Godzilla, King of Monsters? No, what is it? It's a movie. You haven't seen it? Nope. It's about this monster called Godzilla, who grows to an enormous size in a nuclear test and goes on a rampage in Tokyo. Nuclear test, huh? Then the Marshall Islands must be crawling with giant monsters right about now. It's just make-believe. Maybe that's why my pants have been so tight lately. Snake, it's a movie, not a report out of Los Alamos. I know. So then what happened? Godzilla is immune to all weapons, and humanity has no way to stop the monster. Dr. Sirizawa develops a new type of weapon, but meanwhile, Godzilla is getting closer and closer to Tokyo, obliterating everything in its path. It was originally a Japanese movie, but they made an American version, too. I recommend seeing the original Japanese one if you ever get the chance. It's mostly mindless fun, but it's also got a serious anti-nuke message as well. Where can I see the original? You'll just have to go to Japan. Really? That's too bad. Well, if you wait 40 years, you might be able to see it in America, too. Why is that? 2004 will be Godzilla's 50th birthday. You think they're still going to be making Godzilla movies, then? Of course. Everybody loves Godzilla. You sure know a lot about movies. I don't suppose you're the movie-watching type, are you? Not really. Okay, then I'll tell you everything I know. When the going gets tough, movies can save your life. It's always good to be able to look at things from a different perspective when you get in a jam. That's the magic of movies. No kidding. Well, I guess it might at least make a nice distraction. That's the spirit, Snake. Have a little fun. Snake, have you seen 007 from Russia with Love? Nah, I don't like those movies. Real spies are nothing like James Bond. It's pure fantasy. Snake, I don't think the Major's going to like you saying that. And even though it's fiction, I can't help but comparing myself to Bond. What exactly don't you like about James Bond? I mean, is it the fantastic gadgets? The cars? The guns? Major. Snake, wouldn't you like to have a gun shaped like a pen? What good is a pen gonna do me in the jungle? I'd look like a fool. Then what about a snake-shaped gun? You could make it look like you're grappling with a giant snake and then get a shot in on the enemy while they're distracted. Ha! Okay, now you're being ridiculous. We'll make you a snake-shaped gun that folds up and fits into an attaché case. Will you give it a rest? Oh, I get it. You're worried about how to handle the ladies, aren't you? No. I knew it. Hm, to tell you the truth, I don't like the idea of playing hanky-panky with enemy femme fatales either. But that's part of Bond's appeal. You could learn a thing or two from him. I mean, what about this Eva? What are you planning to do with her? I... I don't even trust her yet. No, that's not what I mean. You... you can't let yourself get involved. This is a game of spy versus spy. She's using you just as much as you're using her. 
I realize that. You've got to grab the initiative, and to do that, you have to get the upper hand in the relationship. That's what a spy is supposed to do. Get the upper hand? I don't think I'm cut out for that mission. Maybe if you change your code name to 00 Snake. Major. 007 is the biggest thing to come out of England since the Mayflower. I wouldn't be surprised if they made 20 more of those movies. Didn't you know? The Major is a huge James Bond fan. Don't get him worked up like this. Worked up? Maybe you don't realize this, but now that you've got him started talking about Bond, I'm going to have to listen to him lecture for a whole hour after he gets off the radio. You have my sympathy. It's too bad you can't enjoy such a great movie, though. I guess I'm just one of those people who can't enjoy spy flicks. Snake, do you know the creature from the Black Lagoon? Nope, never heard of it. These scientists are investigating a place deep in the Amazon called the Black Lagoon, and they get picked off one after the other by this fishman thing. And there was this scene when the heroine is going for a swim, and the creature sneaks up on her from underwater. Oh, I thought my heart was going to stop. I mean, of course, the 3D effects in It Came From Outer Space were a lot more intense, but... It wouldn't be referring to you coming from outer space, would it? How rude! Why do you say that? Because no one on Earth could be as charming as you. <sighs> Fine. I'll just get to the point, Snake. Be careful of what's around you when you're in the water. Just imagining you swimming in those jungle rivers makes me think of you being attacked by a fish man. I appreciate the concern. Fishmen aren't the only things that'll attack you in the water. Really be careful out there. Okay. And don't be attacking any pretty girls going for a swim, either. Are you calling me a fish man? You started it. Snake, have you heard of It Came From Outer Space? Yeah, you told me already. So this astronomer sees a meteor, but it's really an alien spaceship, right? And the aliens start replacing the townspeople with clones and forcing them to help repair the ship. The 3D effects were quite realistic. I've got all the real I can handle here in the jungle. No, you don't get it. Precisely because it's realistic, with the images jumping out of the screen at you, it makes for a nice escape from reality. I have to admit it made my eyes tired, but it was really intense. Unfortunately, they don't make very many of those movies anymore. When did it come out? I was still in college, so probably about ten years ago. Guess I'm out of luck then. You know, they're coming out with household versions of video cassette recorders. One day you'll be able to see old movies anytime you want. It'll be like having a movie theater in your own home. Really? It's like if you had a record with movie film etched onto it instead of music. It'll work the same way. You're kidding. No, really. And someday they might make movies where you control the characters yourself. Sounds like magic. It'll happen. Make sure you stay alive to see it, Snake. Snake? Have you heard of The Last War? Nope. Doesn't ring a bell. It's a Japanese movie where the world ends in a nuclear war. Tensions between East and West reach the breaking point, and before anyone can stop it, they launch the ICBMs. Humanity is wiped out by a war that no one wanted. The movie depicts that destruction from the eyes of ordinary people. Their simple daily lives are torn apart by the terrible power of a war that has nothing to do with them. Everybody's afraid of the next big war. But there's only so much that one person can do. That's why the people who have the power to stop it have to. Hey, Snake, have you ever seen Forbidden Planet? No, can't say I have. It's about this expedition that goes to the planet Altair IV in an ultra-fast spaceship. When they arrive, they meet the survivor of the last expedition, Dr. Morbius. Dr. Morbius was exploring the planet along with his daughter Altera and the versatile Robbie the Robot. Ignoring the doctor's warnings, the expedition team is suddenly attacked by an invisible creature called the Monster from the Id. The special effects they used for the science stuff were really neat. I wish I had a robot like Robbie that could make anything I wanted it to. I'm more interested in that invisible monster. If I were invisible, I wouldn't have to bother hiding or wearing camouflage. Maybe someday you'll be able to turn invisible. Yeah, that'll be the day. Snake, have you seen Earth vs. the Spider? Nope. It's about this spider that suddenly mutates into a giant monster. They bring it into the city in a state of hibernation, but it wakes up and starts wrecking the place. So why did the spider turn huge? I told you, it suddenly mutated. Yeah, right. Snake, it's people like you that take all the fun out of watching movies. 
always nitpicking and taking things too seriously. Honestly, why even bother? Look, the important thing isn't that it got big. Then what is important? The fact that there's a huge spider destroying the city. Suspend your disbelief. That's the whole point of movies. Snake, have you ever seen On the Beach? No, I don't know it. It's about the survivors of the Third World War. The entire Northern Hemisphere is obliterated in a nuclear holocaust, and it's only a matter of time before the few survivors left in the Southern Hemisphere are poisoned by the deadly fallout. Their only hope is an American nuclear submarine that escapes to the Southern Hemisphere. They set out for the Arctic to investigate the fallout. The movie came out in 59, and the year that the war was supposed to happen was 1964. In other words, this year. Nice warning. Let's hope it stays just a movie. Snake, have you ever seen The War of the Worlds? Mm, no. These flying saucers from Mars arrive on Earth disguised as meteorites. The saucers use their heat rays to attack the nearby towns. And then... Um... Something wrong? Uh, the thing is, I was too scared to watch. I had my eyes shut almost the whole time. Then you haven't seen it. No, it's not that. It's based on a novel by H.G. Wells. You haven't seen it, have you? That does remind me, though. When I was two years old, my father listened to the radio drama version of the story. It was right after dinner on Sunday, and we were relaxing in the living room. They said monsters had come out of a meteorite that landed in New Jersey. It sounded just like a real live news broadcast. My father said he and my older brother actually believed it and started yelling and panicking. My mother supposedly grabbed me from my crib and took me out to the car, still wrapped up in blankets. But then, just as my dad was about to start the car, he realized that it was all just a radio drama. Because on the car's radio, they were playing Bing Crosby tunes. No matter what station he turned to, no one else seemed to be reporting on this big history-making news story. Sounds like something out of the big broadcast. Nobody said a word. We all went back to our rooms. My father and brother got off with a scolding from my mother but I was the one who really suffered. After that incident, every time I acted up, my father and brother would scare me by saying, the Martians are coming. That's terrible. Isn't it, though? So, you haven't seen the movie. I, I saw it. So, so even nuclear weapons wouldn't work against the Martian war machines. Uh-huh. Anyway, Snake, if you conceal yourself like the Martians did, the enemy won't know what hit them. Conceal myself? Maybe not in a meteorite, but if you can hide yourself inside something a little more close at hand. Hmm, close at hand. Something like a box. Ah, uh, I get it. So, you never saw the movie. I saw it, all right? Snake, have you ever seen For a Fistful of Dollars? Nope, never. It's a spaghetti western. Spaghetti western? It's really cool. Especially the main character's stylish gunplay. Gunplay? I saw it in England on the Major's recommendation, but it hasn't come out in the States yet. It's so cool. They'll bring it to America, I'm sure. You have to see it sometime. Sure. Snake, have you seen the movie Them? No. It's about these giant ants that appear in the desert of New Mexico after a nuclear test. The army tries to fight them off with flamethrowers. The ants were so big that they filled up the entire screen. The whole movie theater was screaming. Hmm, an ant that big could make a good meal. Yeah, well, if you find any, don't eat them. Come on, they're not that bad for you. If you end up growing huge like that, you won't have any place left to hide. Just like a girl who gone. Snake, have you ever seen Jason and the Argonauts? I can't say I have. It's based on Greek mythology. There's this ship called the Argo, and it sets sail in search of the Golden Fleece. Along the way, it encounters many dangers. They run into all kinds of monsters, like bronze giants and the deadly seven-headed hydra and the vicious bird-like harpies. The most spectacular part of all was the battle scene with an army of skeletons. It was like they were actually standing up and fighting. Are you serious? If you don't believe me, go see it for yourself. Then you'll understand the magic of movies. It was totally amazing. Yeah, all right. If I make it back alive, I'll go see it. It just came out, so I'm sure it'll still be playing. Snake, have you seen Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb? What? Dr. Strangelove. 
Have you seen it? Uh, no. It's about this insane American Air Force commander who sends a bomber out to drop an H-bomb on Russia. It's a black comedy. Doesn't sound very funny to me. The actor who plays Dr. Strangelove also plays two of the other main characters. It's actually kind of funny once you get past the scary parts. It just came out this year, so I bet you could still go and see it. Maybe when I'm in a lighter state of mind, I'll give it a try. Snake, have you ever seen The Guns of Navarone? Never. It's about a mission to blow up the huge guns on the island of Navarone during World War II. Six men are chosen to participate in the operation, each with his own special ability. They only have until an English destroyer passes by the island to complete their mission. Facing impossible odds, the six men have to sneak onto the island from a cliff on the southern shore. That doesn't sound like something I'd want to watch in my free time. Maybe not for you, but the Major was absolutely crazy about it. The Major? He told me to tell you how great it was. Tell him I'll go see it as soon as I get back to the States. Do you want to tell him yourself? Uh, no, let's save that for later. I'd better get back to the mission. Yeah. Hey, Snake, have you seen 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Nope, haven't seen that one. After a number of battleships mysteriously sink at sea, the American government investigates and finds that the culprit is this pacifistic Captain Nemo. The scene where the giant squid attacks Captain Nemo's submarine, the Nautilus, is breathtaking. The movie was filmed in Cinemascope, and it was great to see it on the big screen. A giant squid, huh? What? Don't tell me you think it sounds tasty. Snake, have you ever seen the beast from 20,000 Fathoms? Nope. It's about this monster that comes to life from deep within a glacier as a result of an H-bomb test in the Arctic. It crosses the ocean and emerges in New York. I especially like the scene where the monster attacks the lighthouse and the one where it pops out of a valley in Manhattan and makes a big hole in a building. And the last scene on the burning roller coaster was simply incredible. And because I saw it in a drive-in theater, I actually felt like I was a part of the movie. It's funny, isn't it? How you can let yourself get absorbed into these things without thinking even when you know it's not real? Distinguishing between what's real and what's not isn't always as simple as we think. Well, don't get too absorbed in your mission. It's important to take a rest every now and then. Snake, have you seen The Magnificent Seven? Sorry. It's a remake of the Japanese classic The Seven Samurai, only in a Western setting. This tiny Mexican village is attacked every year by bandits. Finally, the village elder can't stand it any longer and decides to hire someone to protect the village. Seven gunmen respond to the call. They teach the villagers how to shoot and prepare for the oncoming attack. But then, the enemy shows up at the village with a huge band. Then what happens? You'll just have to see it for yourself. I don't want to spoil it. Oh. Movies are only fun when you actually watch them. There's something you have to experience for yourself. Hey, Snake. Have you ever seen My Mother Was a Teenage Spider Queen from Mars? I can't say that I have. Neither have I. Paramedic, what was that movie you were talking about earlier? Which one? My Mother the Teenage Whatever. Oh, that. Sorry. The Major was talking to me at the time and I wasn't really paying attention. Don't worry. I'll get it right next time. Hmm. Snake, have you ever seen North by Northwest? Miss that one. It's about this ordinary guy who runs an ad agency. He's mistaken for someone else and gets kidnapped and forced to do a certain job. As a result, he gets tangled up in a conspiracy, and pretty soon he's traveling to New York, Chicago, and even Mount Rushmore in pursuit of the real culprit. Hitchcock's films always keep you on the edge of your seat, but sometimes they can be funny when you least expect it. That's why I love them. Have you seen all of his films? All of them? Oh, not even close. He's been making movies since before I was born. I guess I might have seen some of them on TV. But the first movie I ever saw in the theater was a Hitchcock film. We all went and saw it as a family. It was Rebecca. This was when you were a kid? Yeah, my parents loved watching movies, so they took me along. I didn't quite understand the plot, but for some reason I thought it was really scary. Actually, I remember the candy bar they bought me on the way home better than the movie itself. That's when you fell in love with movies? You could say that. It was like an irresistible force at that point. I was completely swept away. Snake, have you ever heard of The Blob? No, I haven't. 
A meteorite falls in a small town, and inside there's this kind of living ooze. The ooze starts swallowing people and grows to an enormous size. After it eats a bunch of the townspeople, it starts to fill up a movie theater. Then these young people try to save the town from its gruesome fate. It's pretty frightening to see something that's not even supposed to be alive suddenly start moving around and eating people. Not something you see every day. Snake, you know the bridge on the River Kwai? Haven't seen it. It's about a group of Allied prisoners in Japanese-occupied Burma in World War II who worked together to build a bridge. Under the leadership of an English officer, the prisoners and the Japanese gradually bring the project toward completion. But at the same time, the Allied forces are hatching a plan to blow up the bridge. War and futility go hand in hand. I suppose so. I didn't think you were the type to go for war movies, though. Actually, this guy invited me to go see it with him. A date? I guess you could call it that. Still, you just don't seem like the type. Well, he seemed to like war movies. He was a Navy boy. I was still an intern back then. They brought him in with a broken leg. He said, when I'm all healed up, will you go see a movie with me to celebrate? If it's okay. He was so shy. Where is he now? With the Seventh Fleet. I see. Snake, have you ever seen Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Y no, I haven't. It's about this town where one by one the people disappear and are replaced by someone else. It keeps getting worse and worse until finally the main character's friends and family start getting replaced. It turns out it was a giant plant thing producing human clones. Creepy, huh? Clones? A clone is a body or cell that's genetically identical to another one. They didn't use that term in the movie, though. <laughs> you mean a copy of a human being? It's technologically feasible. We know it's possible to do it in theory, and they've already started the research. One day, maybe toward the beginning of the next century, the genes of super soldiers like you are going to be a hot commodity. Just to make copies of me? Precisely. Like a thoroughbred horse. Right. Huh. Hmm. You know they'd never allow it. Maybe, but technology changes people. We can't predict how people will think 50 years from now. Some things shouldn't be changed. We're not the ones who decide that. I think maybe the only thing we can do is to try and pass on our beliefs to our children. So that they won't head in the wrong direction. Snake, have you ever seen the Alamo? No, I haven't seen that one. It's a true story about a band of American volunteers holed up in a fort called the Alamo. They fight against the Mexican army for the freedom of Texas. Remember the Alamo. Now the Alamo is Los Alamos, the center of the atomic bomb project. How ironic. Snake, have you seen Curse of the Werewolf? Nope. There's this young woman who's in the service of a nobleman. She can't stand the cruel treatment she's given and runs away from the castle. She collapses in the woods but is saved by a scholarly couple from a nearby town. In the end, she dies giving birth to a baby boy. That boy undergoes a strange transformation every time the moon is full. Before he knows it, he's turning into a werewolf and killing people. The terrible curse grows so bad that he can no longer control himself and starts to hurt the ones he loves. Poor guy. It's frightening when you can't take responsibility for your own actions. You be careful, too. Don't do anything you might regret later. That's why I call and save with you, right? It's more than just that. Don't you ever forget to look where you're going and rush out where the enemy can see you. Or use too much ammo or too many items. Acting without thinking can be dangerous. Always pay attention to your surroundings and know what's going on around you. Huh? Snake, above you! Huh? Nice reflexes. Keep that up and you'll do fine. Uh, right. Snake, have you ever seen the thing? No, don't think so. The corpse of an alien life form is found in the Arctic and taken back to a base. When the corpse thaws out, it comes back to life and starts attacking the scientists and soldiers in the base. Scientists and soldiers, huh? They sure have it rough. The victims in these kinds of movies are usually soldiers or scientists. They get their blood sucked by the alien. If I see any aliens, I'll be sure to keep my distance. <laughs> Knowing you, you'd probably catch it and eat it. Hey, Snake, have you ever seen Frankenstein? No. The scientist, Dr. Frankenstein, succeeds in creating a human being out of dead body parts but his creation escapes from the laboratory and heads down to the nearby town. The creature is physically strong, but mentally he's like an innocent child. 
So his emotions drive him to kill people, and he doesn't even understand what he's doing. The scene where he's playing with flowers with a little girl by the side of a lake sent chills down my spine. A classic tale about the dangers of rapid scientific progress. When human beings become too powerful, they lose their ability to think rationally. Really makes you think, doesn't it? Especially nowadays. Snake, have you seen Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein? Hmm. No. Abbott and Costello play delivery men who have to deliver a box to a spooky mansion. But what they don't know is that inside the box are Frankenstein and Wolfman. Then Dracula shows up and they get chased around by the monsters. It's a comedy with an all-star monster cast. Sometimes tragedy can be funny. Snake, have you seen The Incredible Shrinking Man? Uh-uh. It's about this guy whose body starts shrinking after he's exposed to a combination of radiation and insecticide. After a while, he's being stalked by tiny spiders and his pet cat. Imagine that, Snake. The guy's body just keeps getting smaller and smaller. I thought you were a doctor. Yeah, so? So how can you get so excited about a story you know could never happen in real life? Whether I'm a doctor or not has nothing to do with it. It's a movie. You can't expect it to follow the same rules as real life, can you? It's the same no matter who you are. Movies are fun because they take you away from your everyday life. Even though they're not real. Because they're not real. You need to loosen up, Snake. Yeah, maybe. Although in your case, reality might be more exciting than the movies. Snake, have you ever seen the quarter mass experiment? Nope. These three astronauts go up in a test rocket. Two of them get vaporized, but the third comes back with a bizarre change in his body. After conducting an investigation, they discover that the astronauts were attacked by an alien life form. But then the surviving astronaut escapes and starts looking for prey. Prey? Anything he touches with his hands has the energy sucked out of it. Every time that happens, his body gets bigger and bigger. Space is a scary place. You never know what's out there waiting. Yeah, even if your body doesn't change, your mind might never be the same. Yeah, that's what I've heard happens. Snake, have you ever seen The Day the Earth Stood Still? Never heard of it. It's about this man who comes to Earth in a flying saucer and warns us humans against using nuclear power to make war. But when the human race fails to meet his demands, he causes all motion on the face of the Earth to come to a standstill. We could really use a visit from that guy right about now. He was a friendly alien who wanted peace on Earth. If only there were more people like him on this planet. Let's hope your wish comes true. Snake, the area you're in now is inhabited by snakes, birds, and other animals. You should also be able to find wild mushrooms, fruits, and vegetables. Oh, and butterflies, too. You'll also see frogs and butterflies, and the occasional crocodile. Crocodiles? Crocodiles. They're called Indian gavials. They're extremely vicious, so don't get too close. There are frogs, too. That area is home to the reticulated python. The reticulated python is said to be the longest snake in the world. It's not venomous, but it still poses a threat, so watch out. I see you caught yourself a reticulated python. The reticulated python is said to be the longest snake in the world. The biggest ones can grow up to 10 meters in length. Although they're not poisonous, they're still very dangerous, so be careful around them. They have a highly ferocious temperament, and they can swallow whole, even large animals like deer and pigs. Their most distinguishing feature is the mesh pattern of their scales. This pattern acts as a highly effective natural camouflage. If you think there might be a reticulated python about, pay close attention to your surroundings. Otherwise, you could get bitten before you even know it's there. It's a huge snake, but you should be able to capture it alive by using the tranquilizer gun. I'll bet if you capture one and throw it at an enemy, it'll give him a good scare. Right. But how do they taste? Huh? Do they taste good? You're actually going to eat one. Why else would I be asking? Cannibal. What was that? Nothing. Let's see what the guide says. Ah, you're in luck. It says they taste pretty good. Good. I can hardly wait. Ugh. <sighs> You've eaten one, haven't you? Yeah. It wasn't half bad. Oh, cannibal. What was that? Nothing. Talk to you later. Snake, that area is inhabited by the giant anaconda. The giant anaconda is said to be the largest snake in the world in terms of weight and thickness. 
It's not venomous, but its huge size makes it dangerous. Be careful. I see you've captured a giant anaconda. The giant anaconda is believed to be the largest snake in the world in terms of weight and diameter. It's not poisonous, but its large size makes it extremely powerful. They say it even eats crocodiles. Its only natural predator is man. And snake. And snake. The giant anaconda is a very large snake, but you should be able to capture it alive using the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So how does it taste? I knew you were going to ask me that. Glad I didn't disappoint you. So? Well, the guide says it tastes all right. Good. I'll have to try some. Ugh. The taste is... Oh, you've already eaten one. Yeah. It was delicious. Ugh. No, really. It tastes like chicken with a surprisingly light flavor. Maybe a little bit stringier than chicken, but all in all, I'd say... Uh, Snake? What? I don't really care. Oh. Okay. Yeah, talk to you later. Snake, that area is inhabited by the green tree python. I see you caught yourself a green tree python. The green tree python isn't venomous, so no need to worry. It's fairly docile, too, so I don't think it's likely to attack you. The green tree python originally comes from Australia and New Zealand. It's a really pretty green color, and it lives... Oh, my God. What's wrong? Snake, what did I just say? They come from Australia and New Zealand. No, after that. They're a really pretty green color. <sighs> I thought so. What was I thinking? Seeing a snake and calling it pretty? What's wrong with that? Everything. When a normal woman sees a snake, she's supposed to scream or get sick or something like that. And do you think you're normal? What was that? N nothing. Ugh, it's all your fault. Jeez, I'm sorry. But enough of that. What do you mean, enough of that? This is serious. No, I... I just wanted you to tell me how it tastes. How should I know? <sighs> it was awfully pretty, though. Snake, be careful. That area is inhabited by coral snakes. Wow, you caught a coral snake. The coral snake is a venomous snake that originally hails from the Americas. Its venom is a very potent neurotoxin, so don't let it bite you. If you do get bitten, go into the survival viewer right away and use Cure to neutralize the poison with a serum injection. The colorful red and black patterns on the coral snake are a warning sign. Apparently, the bright flashy colors and pattern let other animals know that it carries a deadly poison that keeps them from attacking. There are many animals that mimic the colors of known poisonous animals as a defense. See, by mimicking other poisonous creatures, they increase their chances of survival. There is another non-poisonous snake called the milk snake that borrows its coloring from the coral snake. Uh-huh. You're not even listening, are you? No. <sighs> okay, we'll talk about something you're interested in then. The taste? Yes. It says here that coral snakes are pretty good in a snaky kind of way. A snaky kind of way, huh? That area is inhabited by the milk snake. I see you've caught a coral sn uh, I mean, a milk snake. The milk snake closely resembles the coral snake, but it's actually not venomous. Even so, you'll still take damage if it bites you, so don't get too close. Hmm. So is there a way to tell the difference between a milk snake and a coral snake? It's pretty difficult. They really do look almost exactly alike. I guess if I had to pick something, I'd say it's that the milk snake is much less aggressive. Okay. Ah, I just thought of a better way. You're going to love this. What? Eat it. Eat it? Yeah. The guide says milk snakes don't taste very good. Is that right? Yeah, I know. But if I've already caught and eaten it, what does it matter which kind of snake it was? It doesn't, does it? Shoot, I thought I had a good idea. <sighs> that area is home to the Thai Cobra. I see you've caught a Thai Cobra. The Thai Cobra is a large venomous snake that carries an extremely potent neurotoxin. Be careful not to get bitten. If you do get bitten, go into the survival viewer right away and use Cure to give yourself a serum injection. The Thai Cobra originally comes from Indochina, Thailand, and southern China. The ones in that area were probably imported as pets and research subjects before they escaped and turned feral. Not as food? Come again? They weren't imported as food. They're not for eating. Why not? They taste pretty good. Ugh. <sighs> So they don't taste good, then? That's not my point. It's not a matter of whether they taste good or not. People don't raise snakes for food, period. 
Okay. So you're saying they might be good to eat, right? Only one way to find out. That area is inhabited by the Taiwanese cobra. I see you've caught yourself a Taiwanese cobra. The Taiwanese cobra is native to Taiwan and southern China. It's quite vicious and carries a potent neurotoxin in its fangs. Be careful. If it bites you, go into the survival viewer immediately and use the cure option to inject yourself with serum. Sounds interesting. Don't ask me. Huh? The guide doesn't say. If you absolutely have to know, then you'll just have to try it yourself and see. I didn't say anything. But you were going to ask, weren't you? About the taste? Maybe. I'll talk to you later, Snake. Snake, King Cobras are making their home in the area you're in now. I see you've caught a King Cobra. The King Cobra is the world's largest venomous snake. Its large size means that it has a lot of venom to inject. One bite is supposedly enough to kill an elephant. And it's extremely vicious as well, so watch out. If you get bitten by a King Cobra and injected with venom, your life will start to decrease rapidly. As soon as you're bitten, go into the survival viewer and use Cure to give yourself a serum injection. The King Cobra's diet consists mostly of other snakes. Be careful, or you might end up as its next meal. Got it. So... What? How does it taste? Yep. Ugh. It seems you're the one whose diet consists of other snakes. You're making me blush. The guide says they taste just fine. Hmm. Ugh. Snake, there's supposed to be a Suchinoko in that area. Suchinoko? You've never heard of it? It's a mysterious snake that's found all over Japan. If it lives all over Japan, then why is it so mysterious? Many people have seen them, but no one's ever caught one. If you do manage to catch one, it'll be a major historic discovery. I think you should look for it. If I have time. So what kind of snake is this, Tsujinoko? The body is about as thick as a beer bottle, and the tail tapers off to a point. It doesn't slither around like other snakes, but rather goes in a straight line like an inchworm. Sometimes it even jumps several yards at a time. It's got sinister-looking eyes, and it can even blink and move its eyes around. It's also been known to snore, cry, and stand up straight on its tail. And this is an actual snake? Of course. Uh-huh. Then how come you seem to know so much about them? Is it in that guide of yours? No. Then maybe you saw it in a movie, like Curse of the 50-Foot Tsuchinoko or something. There's no such movie. I heard about it from Sigint. Sigint? He's an expert on UMAs. UMAs? Unidentified mysterious animals, dummy. Oh, excuse my ignorance. Why does he know so much about them? Probably because he likes them. At the CIA, he was the vice president of an unofficial group called the UMA Watcher Club. The UMA Watcher Club? Yeah, just the other day he was working on the newsletter at his desk. At the office? How does he get away with that? Well, the major is the chairman of the club. Uh-huh. Snake, you caught a Tsuchinoko. What? Is it true, Snake? Yeah. Way to go, my man. You really are the boss's apprentice. Yes, it looks like sending you in was worth it after all. Hurry up and finish your mission and then bring it back to us. Under no circumstances are you to eat it, is that clear? <sighs> that area is inhabited by Indian gavials. The Indian gavial is a large crocodile native to India and Nepal. It's extremely aggressive, so watch out. It's got a tough hide, so you'll have a hard time catching one. Capturing them alive is probably out of the question. I see you've captured an Indian gavial. The Indian gavial is a crocodile that originally lived in freshwater regions in India and Nepal. Why are Indian crocodiles way out here? They're captive crocodiles that were brought here for research purposes but escaped and became wild again. Indian gavials are large creatures. Adult males grow to over six meters in length. You'll never catch one alive, even if you use the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So, how do they... Taste? Yes, I did look into that. You know what they always say, tastes like chicken. Sounds delicious. I tried the meat. It was great. Well, good for you. But be careful when capturing an Indian gavial. Normally they're cowardly creatures, but the ones in the forest there are belligerent. Apparently they attack humans. What do you mean? They weren't the direct subject of any serious research, but some think they may have become violent as a side effect of the atomic research that was conducted nearby.
Snake, that's the home to the otten frog. I see you caught an otten frog. The otten frog is a large, corpulent species of frog. They're known as a delicacy, so it might be worth catching them for food. The otten frog was originally found only on Amami Oshima in Japan. Frogs usually have four toes on their front legs, but the otten frog is unique in that it has five. Got it. By the way, you said they were known as a delicacy, right? Right. So that means they must taste pretty good, huh? I guess so. I tried one. It was pretty tasty. I can see why it's a delicacy. Glad to hear it. I hear that in Japan, otten frog sashimi and sukiyaki are popular dishes. Really? Yeah. Japan, huh? That place is starting to sound better and better. Snake, that area is inhabited by the poison dart frog. I see you've captured a poison dart frog. The poison dart frog is native to the tropical rainforest of Central and South America. They normally grow between 2 and 5 centimeters in length, but for some reason the ones in that area seem to be much bigger than that. Poison dart frogs are known to carry a potent neurotoxin called pomeliotoxin. Long ago, people used the poison to coat their arrows for hunting. Watch out, because if you eat one, you'll get food poisoning. Yeah, I know. How? You really want to hear? Never mind. I got it. Snake, that area should be inhabited by tree frogs. I see you've caught a tree frog. The tree frog is a green frog that's found throughout Asia. It's arboreal, spending most of its time in shrubs and bushes. Use the tranquilizer gun to catch one alive. I bet you could scare an enemy good if you toss one at him. But the tree frogs that live in that jungle are a lot bigger than ordinary tree frogs. They've got an appetite, huh? You've got a one-track mind, don't you? But seriously, that is one theory. However, there are people who think it's a mutation caused by nuclear testing and waste from the research facility. Do you think they're safe to eat? Yeah, I ate one, but it didn't taste that great. Is that all you ever think about? What else is there? Lots. Like what? Like why a frog would get so big in the first place. Whether it's a temporary phenomenon created by a unique environment, or a permanent mark of evolution, or a product of the toxic waste coming out of the research facility. If it is the waste that's causing it, then it means humans are interfering with the ecosystem. It really makes you think about the changing relationship between... This isn't interesting. Oh, fine. Be that way. So, how about it? You mean, is it edible? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess it's probably okay. Probably. I don't know. The guide doesn't say anything. Pretty useless guide, if you ask me. Well, try one for dinner and you can help improve it. That area is home to a small bird called the red avatavat. I see you've caught yourself a red avatavat. The red avatavat is a small bird native to southern China and southeast Asia. This is its mating season, so the males ought to be a brilliant red color right now. If you want to catch one alive, use the tranquilizer gun. By catching one and then releasing it, you might be able to distract the enemy's attention. I see. How do they taste? The... what? The flavor. You... you're not going to eat such a cute little bird, are you? Yeah. Oh. Something bothering you? No. Okay then, so, how about it? How should I know? And they taste... You've eaten one already, haven't you? Yep. But it didn't taste very good. Oh, that's good. What's so good about it? it? Tasted terrible. No sense of irony whatsoever. What's that? Nothing. Talk to you later. Snake, that area is inhabited by magpies. Magpies are dark blue and white birds with long tails that belong to the crow family. You should be able to capture them alive using the tranquilizer gun. I see you've captured a magpie. Magpies are members of the crow family. They're distinguishable by their beautiful dark blue and white bodies and their long tails. Their favorite food is insects, but they'll also eat small fish, acorns, and fruit. They're omnivores, which means... They'll eat anything. Right. Just like you, huh? If you use the tranquilizer gun, you should be able to capture magpies alive. Okay. So how do they taste? You always ask me that. Naturally. So... I've never heard of anybody actually eating a magpie, but I suppose there's no reason you couldn't. You don't say. Oh. They taste... well, you should know since you've already eaten one. Yeah, it didn't taste all that great. Oh, what a shame. Yeah, no kidding. Um, Snake? What? I was being sarcastic. Oh, really? I didn't notice. Mm-hmm.
That area is home to the Sunda whistling thrush. I see you've caught yourself a Sunda whistling thrush. The Sunda whistling thrush is a bird native to Java and Sumatra. It's distinguished by its large blue body and long beak. It really stands out in the forest. If you're aiming to catch one alive, use the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So... How does it taste? Yeah. I don't know. You don't know. The guide doesn't say. I guess there's no reason you couldn't eat them. Oh, I see. But it's nice and plump, so I'm sure it'd make a hearty meal. That's a good point. Ugh. It tastes... Ugh, you've already eaten one. Yeah. I wouldn't call it a delicacy, but it certainly was filling. <sighs> there should be white-rumped vultures living in that area. I see you've captured a white-rumped vulture. The white-rumped vulture is a type of vulture found in India. Its diet consists mostly of dead animal carcasses. I don't think it'll attack you, but it's a fairly large bird of prey, so you probably won't be able to capture it alive using the tranquilizer gun. Got it. But there is something here that's bothering me. What is it? They say the white-rumped vulture doesn't just eat animal carcasses. It eats human ones as well. Is that so? Yeah. So then if a person eats a white-rumped vulture, does that mean he's eating human meat too? What do you think? Stop it already. You're going to make me lose my appetite. Yeah, you had to tell me that after I ate one. Paramedic, I saw a parrot just a minute ago. Paramedic, I caught a parrot. What kind of parrot? It's green all over with a large beak. Then it's probably an Alexandrian parakeet. It's sometimes also called the Alexandrian parrot. The Alexandrian parakeet originally comes from Indochina and is distinguished by its green body and red beak. It's very talkative and makes a good pet. But it's strange. The guide doesn't say anything about there being Alexandrian parakeets in that area. I'm thinking it must be someone's pet that got away. Hmm. Snake. What? Don't even think about it. Eating a cute little bird like that. But I didn't say. Just don't. <laughs> Snake, that area is home to the Big Eye Trevely. I see you've caught yourself a Big Eye Trevely. The Big Eye Trevely is a type of mackerel. The adult fish lives around coral reefs, but the young can be found in freshwater areas such as estuaries and rivers. Good to know. So, how do they taste? Hmm, the guidebook doesn't say. Huh. Well, if they're a kind of mackerel, they should be okay to eat, right? You'd think so, but... But what? Well, I've heard stories about people getting ciguatera poisoning after eating the adult fish. Ciguatera poisoning? Uh-huh. Fishes that live near coral reefs are sometimes contaminated with a poison known as ciguatera toxin. It apparently gives you food poisoning when you eat it. So I can't eat those big-eyed trevely? I don't know whether those trevely are contaminated with ciguatera or not, but use caution just in case. Snake, it says here you can catch maroon sharks in that area. I see you've caught yourself a maroon shark. The maroon shark is found mostly in Southeast Asia, but it's not actually a shark. It's related to the carp. It's also known as the red fin cigar shark, the river barb, and the sultan fish. Interesting. So how does it taste? According to the guide, it's good. But it's kind of oily and it has a lot of little bones. Fine with me. I never worry about the little things. So I gathered. The taste is, well, you've already eaten one, right? Yeah, it was pretty good. That's all? Yeah. You didn't mind all the little bones or how oily it was? Not really. Ugh. Snake, that river is inhabited by arowanas. I see you've caught yourself an arowana. The arowana is an ancient fish that lives in tropical freshwater areas. Because of its large size, I don't think you'll be able to capture one alive. Ancient fish like the arowana are living fossils. They've hardly changed their form since the Devonian and Jurassic periods. Other ancient fish besides the arowana include the coelacanth, the starlet, and the knife fish. Almost all organisms on Earth have evolved in various shapes and forms, but these fish have kept the same form for hundreds of millions of years. Baffling, isn't it? Sure. Well, I can see you're not interested. Not at all. I'm fascinated by ancient fish. Why? They're supposed to be huge, aren't they? You're wondering whether they'd make a good meal. Yeah. So, do they? 
The guide says they taste just fine for a fish. Great. Not at all. I love ancient fish. Why? They taste pretty good. <sighs> Snake, that area is home to the Kenyan mangrove crabs. I see you've caught yourself a Kenyan mangrove crab. The Kenyan mangrove crab is a land-going crab. It lives in burrows dug near seashores and mangrove swamps. It's not poisonous, but it might hurt a little if it attacks you with its pinchers. Treat it with caution. Got it. So this thing must taste pretty good, huh? Why do you say must? It's a crab, isn't it? It is. And crabs are good to eat. What's so good about them? You don't like crab? Not at all. Why not? Why? How can you eat those things? They're all purple and yellow striped, and they stink like cat pee. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Don't listen to me. Let's see here. The guide says, no way. It says they're delicious. Well, if you want to eat one, then go right ahead, but count me out. Mm -hmm. Snake, be careful. That cave is inhabited by vampire bats. I see you've caught a vampire bat. The vampire bat bites its victims and sucks their blood. Got it. Speaking of bats... Just save it. Huh? I know you're going to talk about vampire movies, Attack of the Vampire Donuts, or Dracula vs. the Space Hippos, or something like that. Actually, I was going to say that bats are known to use supersonic waves to sense their surroundings. Oh. Bats use supersonic waves to sense their surroundings, so you might be able to keep them away by blasting them with a special kind of sound wave. Alternatively, you could try equipping a torch and waving it around with the CQC button. As for taste, I suppose there's no reason you couldn't eat them. Hmm. Snake, do you hate vampire movies? What? Just now, you sounded like you really hated them. I did? Yeah. Oh. Well, no one really likes them, do they? Some people do. Like you? Yeah. They're fascinating, you know? Like the movie Dracula- Don't say it. Why not? Just don't. Are you afraid? What? You're afraid of vampires, aren't you? Don't be ridiculous. But... Listen, there are no such things as vampires. They're just a stupid made-up legend. Even if they do seem real sometimes. Well, sure. You think I'd be afraid of something like that? No. Exactly. Right. I'm not afraid of vampires. Uh-huh. It's just that... Whenever somebody starts talking about vampires, I end up dreaming about them that night, and I don't need that right now. That's all. Okay. Snake, you will encounter Baltic hornet's nests in that area. I see you've got yourself a Baltic hornet's nest. Baltic hornets are a variety of hornets that inhabit that area. The difference between them and other hornets is that they produce honey in their nests. Inside the nests are larvae, pupa, and adults. You can eat them all. In particular, the honey you find inside the nest is delicious and full of nutrients. It's easy to digest and helps pep you up when you're feeling tired. In short, it's the perfect survival food. Honey can also be used as a burn ointment. When honey is applied to a burn, it creates a protective coating over the skin. When you knock down a hornet's nest, a burn ointment will appear along with it, so don't forget to pick it up. Of of course, the hornets aren't going to give up their nest without a fight. If you knock a nest down, a large swarm of hornets will come flying out, so be careful. Snake, be careful. That area is supposed to be inhabited by cobalt blue tarantulas. I see you've caught a cobalt blue tarantula. The cobalt blue tarantula is a poisonous spider with a highly potent venom. If you get bitten, go into the survival viewer immediately and use cure to administer a serum injection. There are many different varieties of tarantulas. The cobalt blue is part of a group called earth tigers. They build their nests mainly underground and are highly aggressive. Their diet consists of not only insects, but also mice and even snakes. Interesting. So how do they taste? Are you really going to eat them? Naturally. So? It says here they're not very good. Damn. Don't act so surprised. Isn't it obvious? Why would it be obvious? It's a spider, for goodness sake. A big one, but still a spider, and there's not much to it. Yeah. If only it were as big as the one in Earth versus the Spider. The what? Earth versus the Spider. 
It's a movie about this gigantic spider. When it's small, it's about 15 feet wide. But when it's big, it's about 35 feet wide. What do you mean when it's small and when it's big? <sighs> the size changes from scene to scene. It happens all the time. Huh. Snake, watch out. That area is home to the Emperor Scorpion. I see you've caught yourself an Emperor Scorpion. The Emperor Scorpion is said to be the largest scorpion in the world. Its venom is a potent neurotoxin, so take care that you don't get stung. If you do get stung, go into the survival viewer and use Cure to inject yourself with serum right away. Okay. So how's it taste? Not very good, I'm afraid. Oh. Don't get so discouraged. There are other ways to use it besides eating it, right? Like what? Like catching one alive with a tranquilizer gun and throwing it at the enemy? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I wonder if you even remember that you were on a mission. <sighs> Snake, that area is inhabited by markors. I see you caught a markor. The markor is a kind of wild goat that lives in mountainous areas. It's quite large, so I don't think you'll be able to capture one alive, even with the tranquilizer gun. All right. Speaking of which, do you know the origin of the name Markor? No. It means snake eater in Persian. Snake eater? Lost your appetite? Not at all. So, how does it taste? It's supposed to be pretty good. All right. It tasted pretty good. I think I'll have it again sometime. Hmm. Snake, that area is inhabited by European rabbits. I see you've caught a European rabbit. The European rabbit is said to have come from the Mediterranean region originally, but nowadays they're found all over the world. They've been used since ancient times as a source of food, so it might be worth catching them. Rabbits are known to eat their own excrement. Uh, they eat their own? That's right. It's called cecal feces. When the rabbit eats fiber, the fiber is fermented in the rabbit's appendix, or cecum, and turned into a nutritious substance full of vitamins. The rabbit excretes the substance and then eats it again to absorb the nutrients. That's a neat trick. I think I'll give it a try. Snake! Rabbits and humans don't work the- I'm just kidding. You really thought I was going to eat it? A little, yeah. Even I wouldn't do that. I guess not. But how did those seagull feces taste? What? I'm just kidding. Oh, it seems the rabbits in that area have some kind of natural resistance to poison inherited in their system. If you capture one, you should be able to get some serum out of it. Try to capture a few. Snake, that area is inhabited by the Japanese flying squirrel. I see you caught yourself a Japanese flying squirrel. Japanese flying squirrels are non-venomous, and they shouldn't attack you. The head, front legs, hind legs, and tail of the Japanese flying squirrel are connected by a membrane of skin, which allows the squirrel to glide from tree to tree. It says here that if it catches a good wind, it can fly more than a hundred yards. Sounds like it's going to be tough to catch one. Yeah, I had a hard time catching one. So aren't you going to ask me? You know it. How does it taste? Not sure. Not sure? The guy doesn't say anything about it. Why not? Gee, maybe it's because no one would ever think of eating a flying squirrel. Then I must be the first one. <sighs> maybe you are. But for all the trouble it took to catch one, it wasn't that good. If only you were so enthusiastic about the mission. Uh, what was that? I didn't say anything. So long, Snake. Snake, there are rats living in that area. I see you caught yourself a rat. The rats in that area are the descendants of wild Norway rats that were domesticated by humans as pets and lab animals. They're not poisonous, and I don't think they'll attack you, but they're quick little creatures, so you might have a hard time catching one. Uh-huh. So how do they taste? Snake. What? They're rats. I know what they are. Do they taste okay? <sighs> the guide says they're not that bad. Good enough for me. Ugh. You'll find a fruit called the Yabloko Maloko growing in that area. The Yabloko Maloko is a variety of star fruit. It grows mainly on the branches of trees and is quite delicious. I see you found a Yabloko Maloko. Yablo what now? Yabloko Maloko. It's a Russian name that roughly translates as milk apple. It's a type of star apple. The juice is thick and sweet, like milk, hence the name. And if you cut one in half lengthwise, you'll see a star-shaped ring radiating out from the center. Hence the star apple. Right. 
The star-shaped part has a gelatinous texture and is said to be especially tasty. Sounds useful. You're welcome. For once. Did you say something? No, uh, back to the mission. I ate one. It didn't taste that great. Are you sure? It's supposed to be delicious. Nope, it tasted terrible. Hmm, that's strange. Yeah, looks like that guide of yours. No, it's your sense of taste. Hmm. A fruit called the Russian false mango grows in that area. I see you found a Russian false mango. The Russian false mango is a mango-like fruit found only in Selinoyarsk. The egg-shaped fruit is sweet and tangy with a pleasing aroma, just like a mango. Yeah, it was pretty tasty. See? Also, the seeds can be used to make a medicine that aids in digestion. It might come in handy if you ever have an upset stomach. Snake, there's a fruit called the Golova growing in that area. The Golova is a variety of jackfruit found only in Salino Yarsk. It's big and tasty, so I think it'd be worth searching for. Looks like you found a Golova. Golova? Yeah, it's a fruit that's found only in that region. It's related to the jackfruit, which is commonly found in Southeast Asia. Jackfruit, huh? Yep, he's a cannibal. Huh? I didn't say anything. No, I'm sure you... I said, I'm sure you'd like it. Oh. Golova means head in Russian. It's probably called that because the fruit grows to about the size of a human head. It's supposedly pretty good to eat with a uniquely sweet flavor. The fruit itself is fairly large, so you could make a meal out of it. Yeah, I tried one. It was pretty good. Naturally. Golovas grow directly off the trunk of the tree. If you're running low on stamina, it might be a good idea to keep an eye on the tree trunks. Snake, there should be vine melons growing in that area. I see you found a vine melon. The vine melon is a kind of melon commonly found in Salino Yarsk. Like the name says, it's a melon that grows on a vine. The flesh is crisp and delicious. Yeah, I tried one. It was all right. That's good. The vine melon is full of potassium and carotene, so it's good for you as well. Next time you see a vine, why not check to see if there's a melon growing on it? You should be able to find Russian oyster mushrooms in that area. I see you found some Russian oyster mushrooms. The Russian oyster mushroom is an edible variety that belongs to the Shimeji family. It's known to be particularly rich in vitamin B1 and niacin. Apparently, it's usually found growing on tree stumps and hollow logs, so look there if you want to eat some. I tried some, but they weren't all that good. Really? I think they're great. You just lightly saute them in butter with some potatoes, add a little salt and pepper, and... How am I supposed to saute them out here? You're not. I'm just saying that... <sighs> Snake, the Ural luminescent mushroom grows in that area. I see you found some Ural luminescent mushrooms. The Ural luminescent mushroom is a mushroom found only in Selinoyarsk. It looks like a shiitake mushroom, and it's often found growing on the trunks of trees. If it looks like a shiitake mushroom, then it must be edible, right? Yep. I can't guarantee that it'll taste just like a shiitake mushroom, though. And it tastes like... It was poisonous. What? It was a poison mushroom. Are you sure? What do you mean, am I sure? I mean, of course it's poisonous. Says so right there in the guide. <sighs> By the way, paramedic. What? I tried that Ural luminescent mushroom you were talking about. So how did it taste? It was poisonous. What? It was a poison mushroom. Really? Yeah. That's weird. The guide says it's... Are you sure that guide is reliable? Don't worry, it's fine. It just happened to be wrong this one time. No. Snake, there should be fly agaric mushrooms growing in that area. I see you've found some fly agaric mushrooms. The fly agaric is a relative of the death cap mushroom that grows only in that region. You'll find it growing on the ground, but it's poisonous, so if you pick one up, don't eat it. If you do eat one, go into the survival viewer immediately and use cure to take some antidote. The poisons found in the fly agaric include phallotoxins and amatoxins. It says here that when you eat it, the initial symptoms include nausea, stomach pain, and diarrhea. Finally, your liver and kidneys will break down into a sponge-like substance and you die. Sounds like a horrible way to die. Isn't it? Yeah. So how does it taste? Huh? How does it... Were you listening to me? The fly agaric is poisonous. 
I heard you. But if I did eat it, it might taste good, right? I give up. Snake, there's a mushroom called the Russian glow cap growing in that area. I see you found some Russian glow caps. The Russian glow cap is a kind of luminescent fungus, a mushroom that glows in the dark. Why would a mushroom glow in the dark? It's bioluminescent, just like a firefly. It uses the so-called luciferin luciferase reaction. To put it simply, luciferin reacts with luciferase in the presence of magnesium 2 plus ions, breaking it down into oxyluciferin and carbon dioxide. The carbonyl groups in the oxyluciferin are initially in an electrical excited state. When they return to their base state, they give off light. Did you get all that? Not really. Oh. By the way, does that mushroom recharge your batteries when you eat it? Huh? I mean, it seems like if you ate a glowing mushroom, it might recharge your batteries or something. Snake, your batteries are organic batteries. They produce electricity by utilizing the potential difference between cells. Organic batteries are known for their highly efficient energy conversion, but they still rely on chemical reactions between proteins and enzymes to... So you're saying they'll get recharged? Believe what you want. Great! I ate one and it recharged my batteries. Huh? I thought a mushroom that glows that bright was bound to charge up my batteries if I ate it. And I was right. You're serious. What's wrong? Mm, nothing. Paramedic. What's up? You were right. About what? I ate a Russian glow cap and it charged up my batteries. Huh? What's wrong? I, uh, that's, that's great. Um, Snake, can you excuse me for a second? Sure. Did you just hear that? Yeah. There's no way eating a bioluminescent mushroom would cause your batteries to recharge. What do you think it means? Beats me. Maybe it's all in his mind. You mean like a placebo effect? <laughs> Why not? You've seen how gullible he is. Well, I guess there's no harm done. Should we let him keep believing it? Sounds good to me. Okay, Snake, I'm back. Yes, the Russian glow cap is a glowing mushroom, so it'll recharge your batteries when you eat it. Mm -hmm. There's a mushroom called the Spatsa growing in that area. I see you found a Spatsa. Spa. Spatsa. Spatsa. Right. Interesting name. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. Huh. So, paramedic. What? What kind of mushroom is a spatza? Uh. You really want to know? I guess so. Okay. Let's see. The spatza. Yeah. It's gray. Hmm. And it grows on the ground. Yeah, and. That's all. That's all? That's all the guide says. Okay, so I don't know that much about it. Why don't you eat one and see? It might be pretty tasty. Eat one and see? What do I look like, a lab rat? Shh. What? What did I say? What if the rats hear you? You'll hurt their feelings. <sighs> I already tried one. Really? How was it? I passed out. It was that good. No, I mean I fell asleep. You were that tired? No, I mean the mushroom put me to sleep. I know, I was just teasing you a little. Hmm. Paramedic. Yeah? I ate one of those spots of mushrooms you were talking about. Really? How did it taste? I passed out. Seriously? Yeah. So that's why they call it the bringer of sleep. What? Oh, I looked the word spots up afterwards and found out it means bringer of sleep in Russian. Well... But anyway, the reason the spatza puts you to sleep when you eat it is because it contains a type of anesthetic substance similar to an alkaloid. The spatza appears to contain a type of vegetative alkaloid with anesthetic properties. Maybe if you soak a handkerchief or something in it, you could use it to put the enemy to sleep. I'll bet if you pick one, you could soak it into a handkerchief to create a sleeping drug. Eating a spatza and falling asleep might cause your life and stamina to recover as well. Why don't you find a safe spot and try it out? There should be a mushroom called the Bicol scaly tooth growing in that area. I see you found a Bicol scaly tooth. The Bicol scaly tooth mushroom is used as an antidote to poison. It usually grows on the trunks of trees, so look for it there. How does it taste? I think you're going to be disappointed. Damn. Oh, quit your whining. You know what they say, good medicine tastes bitter.
You should be able to find Siberian ink cap mushrooms growing in that area. The Siberian ink cap is a mushroom in the ink cap family. It's known to be edible, so keep an eye out for it. I see you found some Siberian ink cap mushrooms. The Siberian ink cap is a mushroom from the ink cap family. Its life cycle is transitory. As soon as the spores mature, the cap starts to turn black, liquefy, and melt away. And that's why they call it an ink cap? That's right. It doesn't really turn to liquid, but you get the idea. In its immature state, before it melts away, it's valued as a source of food. I ate some, but they weren't that good. Really? Just be sure not to eat them while you're drinking alcohol. Why's that? Ink caps contain coprin, which inhibits the function of aldehyde dehydrogenase. This prevents the body from breaking down alcohol, causing a buildup of acetaldehyde. Meaning? Meaning it will give you the hangover from hell. Oh, I'd better go warn Granin. Huh? Nothing important. Wait a minute. What? You think I'd drink alcohol in the middle of a mission? Wouldn't you? Hell no. Well, I'm knocking a shot back now. What? Just teasing you. <sighs> oh, come on. Where's your sense of humor? I need a drink. I see you have a calorie mate. Calorie mate? The thing you're holding now? Oh, the little block that looks like a cookie? It was pretty good. Wasn't it? Yeah, but what the hell was it? What? i never seen anything like it. What? Hold on. You just ate something without even knowing what it was? Yeah. It looked good. Ugh. So, what was it? Try it. It's pretty good. Okay. But what is this thing? Never seen anything like it. Calorie Made is an energy supplement that contains all the proteins, lipids, vitamins, carbohydrates, and minerals needed for a balanced diet. It's a well-balanced food. Because of that, it's just perfect for giving your body the nutrition it needs in combat. It sounds like a space-age food. Real astronaut food is not very good, but that should taste fine. Yeah, and it'll help balance out all this jungle food I'm eating. It's easy and quick to eat, so it's perfect when you're running late for an important mission in the morning. I've never been late for a mission. Really? Aren't you always keeping people waiting? What? Huh? It's easy to keep track of your calorie intake and receive the nutrition your body needs, so it's good for losing weight, too. All of the geisha girls in Japan use it for watching their calories. Is that why they're all so slim? Right. And any diet where you eat nothing at all is bad for the body. I see. You seem to know a lot about Japan, don't you? Yes, I love Japan. You got some instant noodles, huh? Instant noodles? Uh-huh. It was invented in Japan just recently. Add some hot water and it's ready to eat. It's cheap and can be stored for a long time. And besides, it's delicious. It's like a miracle food. Wow. Speaking of which... Yeah? Are you going to eat that? I was planning on it, yeah. Oh, all right. Is there some reason I shouldn't? No, that's not what I meant. Then what did you mean? I was just going to say that if you weren't going to eat it, you should bring it back to me. I've always wanted to try some. Whatever. <laughs> Looks like you're in a building. If people are living there, there's bound to be people food. People food? Soviet military rations. It beats eating raw snakes and mushrooms all the time, doesn't it? I'm getting to like raw snake and mushroom. You really are turning into an animal. Snake, you should be able to find some rations in that area. I see you've got yourself a ration. Rations are portable meals carried by Soviet soldiers. No, they're not. Huh? They're disgusting portable meals carried by Soviet soldiers. I've heard some nasty stories about how they taste. It looks like the rumors are true. Great. Hey, you should be grateful. Those things are designed to last. No matter how long you keep a ration, it'll never go bad. And they're surprisingly good for you, too. I'd take a snake over this any day, even if it's a little rotten. You are hopeless. There should be an herb called Chinese plantain growing in that area. The Chinese plantain is an herb that resembles a plantain root. The leaves and seeds contain large amounts of ocubin, choline, and tannin. When you mash it up and apply it to a wound, it helps stop the flow of blood and eases the pain a bit. The Chinese plantain becomes a styptic when you pick it up. If you see one, don't forget to take it with you. Snake, I think there's a plant called Slav Horhound growing in that area. Slav Horhound is an herb in the Horhound family. 
It contains large amounts of diterpene, flavonoids, and alkaloids, which give it strong germicidal properties. If you find one, it should make a good disinfectant. You should be able to find ezocomfrey in that area. Ezocomfrey is a plant in the comfrey family that's found only in Selenoyarsk. If you find one, you can use it as a cast to treat broken bones. How can a plant be turned into a splint? The roots of the ezocomfrey are extremely sticky. You can use them as a kind of plaster cast to fasten the affected area in place. I get it. There's an herb called the amarkudzu growing in that area. Amarkudzu is a member of the bean family and a close relative of the kudzu weed. The roots contain a number of isoflavins such as daidzin, which give it strong fever-reducing properties. It'll make a good cold medicine if you find some. I see you've got the survival knife equipped. The survival knife is a necessity in the field. Press the weapon button to swing the knife. Press it repeatedly to perform a combo attack. The knife lets you kill an enemy silently, so you should find it useful when the situation calls for stealth. In addition to fighting the enemy, you can also use the knife to capture wild animals. That one knife can provide you with everything you need to survive in the field. Use it well. I see you're using the Easy Gun. The Easy Gun is a silenced tranquilizer gun for special ops use, developed for Fox by the CIA's technology division. A silenced tranquilizer gun? I don't see a suppressor on here. Apparently, the tranquilizer rounds themselves are designed to suppress the sound. Interesting. In other words, I won't have to worry about the suppressor wearing out on me, right? That's right. It's also equipped with a laser sight, so that you can make accurate shots even at a distance. In addition, merely equipping the easy gun should have a positive effect on your camo index. I've even heard it helps you recover your stamina. Put it to good use. The weapon you're equipped with now is called the XM-16E1. It's a new type of rifle currently being developed by the U.S. Army. If it's still in development, then what's it doing here? My guess is they captured it when it was being battle-tested in Southeast Asia. But the one you've got there is quite a bit different from the ones I've been hearing about. For one thing, it's camo-painted, and it's fitted with a three-shot burst mechanism. It even looks like you could attach a suppressor. All of these modifications are geared towards jungle combat. This doesn't look like the work of the Soviets. My guess is they were added on site by an American gunsmith during Army field trials. Open the weapon window and press the Enter button to attach or remove the suppressor. Press the Action button to switch between semi-auto, full-auto, and three-shot burst modes. Make use of each of these functions as the situation warrants. I see you've got your hands on an SVD. The SVD is the Soviet Union's most advanced automatic sniper rifle. It's said to be better designed and more durable than anything the West has. It looks kind of like an AK-47. The shape is similar, but the internal mechanism is one of a kind. It uses 7.62 by 54 millimeter rimmed cartridges, which are more powerful and precise than the ones the AK uses. It can be a powerful weapon if you know how to use it. Sniper rifles aren't meant to be used on the move. When you equip one, you'll immediately go into first-person view. The more stable your stance, the less your hands will shake when you're aiming the rifle. Make sure you're lying down before attempting to make a long-distance shot. To use the scope, press the Aim button. You can also use the Action button to change the level of magnification. By taking out enemies from a distance with a sniper rifle, you can shift the odds in your favor. Use it well. You've got a white phosphorus grenade, I see. White phosphorus grenades use white phosphorus to create an incendiary blast. They were widely used on the Pacific Front. Upon detonation, all living things in the area of effect will suffer serious burns. Just make sure you don't end up getting burned yourself. That's certainly a strange-looking grenade you've got there. Yeah, I've never seen one like this. What is it? It must be a new type of grenade developed by the Russians. From what I can tell, it's a non-lethal weapon that uses a flash of light and intense sound to overpower the senses of human targets. You can probably use that grenade to knock out the enemy without killing them. It might prove useful. That's an interesting grenade you've got there. Yeah, 
I've never seen anything like this before. Apparently, it's designed to disrupt radio waves by scattering tiny pieces of metal into the air. The Russians probably developed it as a personal anti-electronics weapon. You can use that grenade to block radio communications between enemy soldiers. Then they won't be able to call for reinforcements, huh? That's right. But remember that as long as the radio disruption lasts, your active sonar and motion detector will also be rendered inoperable. I see you've got a smoke grenade. The smoke grenade does exactly what the name implies. It creates a thick dispersion-resistant cloud of white smoke that blocks the enemy's field of vision. It should be useful when you need to make a quick getaway. Keep it in mind. What is that you have in your hands? Honestly, when did you start reading magazines like that? I, uh, uh, uh. Didn't I teach you how to take care of business without having to rely on that sort of thing? <laughs> anyway, I'm sure some of the enemy grunts will find that sort of magazine as appealing as you seem to. Place it on the ground and you might be able to divert their attention. Ah, you've got a directional microphone. The directional microphone is a high-performance listening device. When you equip it, you'll go into first-person view, where the microphone will pick up sounds in whichever direction it's facing. By pointing the microphone into the forest, you can sometimes hear the footsteps of enemy soldiers lurking beyond the trees. In jungle combat, success depends on how well you can sense the enemy's presence. Use it wisely. You got a magazine, huh? That's an empty magazine for your guns. It can be an effective weapon itself, if you know how to use it. You mean throwing them at people? No. You can't take out an enemy just by throwing a magazine at him. But if you use the sound it makes when it lands to attract the enemy's attention... I get it. It creates a diversion. Weapons will be in short supply during this mission. If you want to succeed, you'll need to use your head. I see you're using binoculars. The ones you've got are a high-performance military model equipped with a zoom function. Yeah, they give me a flat image across the entire viewing range. They're completely waterproof and highly shock and flame resistant. You won't need to worry about them breaking. Scouting is key during a sneaking mission. If you can determine enemy positions and the lay of the land from a distance, it'll make your job that much easier. Use them wisely. Those things you're wearing, those are... Thermal goggles. Some kind of electronic gadget that shows the distribution of heat sources in image form. I know they're based on the same principle behind the FLIR system on gunships, but to think they actually made it small enough to carry with you. They're not just making good rockets, huh? Never underestimate the power of Soviet science. Tell me about it. In any case, those thermal goggles should allow you to easily see through enemy camouflage and spot traps. Just don't leave them on for too long, or you'll drain the batteries. I see you found yourself an RGD-5. RGD stands for Rochnaya Granada Degtereva in Russian. It basically means hand grenade of the Degtereva design. It's the standard issue blast fragmentation grenade of the Soviet Army. It's lighter than the M26. And it carries fewer explosives as well. But I'd say it's more or less equal to an M26 in terms of performance. Be careful though, the safety pin ring is on the opposite side. You'll be fine as long as you keep the safety lever pressed down with your finger. I'll keep that in mind. Blast fragmentation grenades use a combination of blast and shrapnel to kill their targets. This makes them effective against standing targets, but significantly less effective against targets lying on the ground. Remember that. I see you've got yourself an M37. Yeah, a 12-gauge shotgun. It holds up to four shells, but because it uses pump action, you can only fire one shot at a time. I know that much. It's not exactly the best long-range sniping tool, but it's got a wide distribution pattern, and a direct hit is enough to blow an enemy to bits. It's about two pounds lighter than an ordinary shotgun. That should make it a bit easier to handle in the jungle. Right. They don't call it the feather light for nothing. Not only that, but the barrel and the stock on this one's been sawn off, too. Making it easier to carry around with you. Yeah. But why did those guys have an American-made shotgun? Good question. It might have something to do with studying Western weapons, but... Tell me, have you ever heard about the SAS using shotguns in the jungles of Malaya? Mm, just stories. 
In the jungle, enemy encounters can happen when you least expect it. They found the shotgun to be extremely effective in these situations because of its ability to deliver massive firepower in a short period of time. Since then, the shotgun has become the weapon of choice for a lot of point men. And now the Soviets have adopted the technique? Could be. I see you're using the 45. Yeah, it's an M1911A1. The stopping power of those 45 ACP rounds ought to come in handy. And it uses a simple single-action system, so it won't jam up on me so much. Even if I get caught in mud or sand, it'll keep on shooting. The perfect handgun for this mission. Yeah, we'll make a good team. The 45 can also be equipped with a suppressor. The suppressor will reduce the noise of the gunshot. If you find a suppressor, open the weapon window and press the enter button to attach or detach it. But remember, the suppressor will deteriorate little by little each time you fire. The gun you're using is a test model of a suppressor-equipped pistol currently in development by the Navy that's been modified by the CIA into a tranquilizer gun. The suppressor-equipped pistol it's derived from is itself being developed for use by special forces based on the M39. The Mark 22. That's what they're going to call it if they decide to adopt it for official use. It uses a slide lock mechanism that will keep the firing sound down to a minimum. But I'll have to reload it by hand every time I fire, right? Right. You won't be able to fire multiple shots at once, so make every shot count. Aim for the enemy's vital spots. There's talk of designing the Mark 22 to accommodate special subsonic rounds, but for this mission, you'll be using specifically designed tranquilizer rounds. In a way, these tranquilizer rounds are like miniature syringes. When one of them strikes a target, the impact causes a needle contained within to shoot out. At the same time, chemicals inside the round are mixed to create a gas, which pushes the plunger and injects the tranquilizer into the target. You can knock out an enemy immediately by shooting them in the head. But if you shoot them in the arm or leg, the tranquilizing agent will take some time to set in. Aim carefully. You have some life medicine on you. Life medicine is a recent pharmaceutical product developed by the Soviet Union. It works with your metabolism to quickly treat wounds. If you use it, you can recover life on the spot. Try it when your life is starting to run low in battle. So, you want to use a mousetrap. The mousetrap is designed to capture smaller animals. If you press the weapon button and place the mousetrap on the ground, you might be able to catch something with it. Use the survival viewer map to see where you've already placed the traps. However, don't forget that the mousetrap is designed to lure animals in using some kind of bait in the middle. If you capture one animal by using it, don't expect to capture any more. Crawl to pick it up again, refill the bait, and put it back on the ground to catch more animals. Are you smoking a cigar? Uh-huh. I don't approve of you smoking during a mission. Hey, you used to smoke them. Never mind what I did. Uh. But that being said, cigars can be useful in a number of different ways, like getting rid of leeches. Did you say leeches? Yes. If a leech clamps onto you, try pressing the lit end of a cigar into it. The leech should cringe and detach itself from you. If you try to yank it off by yourself, you run the risk of it leaving its teeth inside you. With the cigar method, you won't have that problem. Fascinating. And unlike a cigarette, a cigar burns slowly, so you can use it in place of a torch in dark places. I never knew a cigar had so many different uses. Now you know. But quit smoking them during the mission. Uh, Hear me? Yes, ma'am. Ah, you're using the survival knife. Yeah, this thing provides me with all the bare essentials I need to survive in the field. Hey, wait. What'd you do with the knife I made you? That was a work of art. It had matches and fish hooks and thread and stuff in the grip. Sorry to have to tell you this, but that thing is useless in a fight. No way. Really? Yeah. When the grip is hollowed out like that, there's not as much space to stabilize the blade. So the joint between the blade and the grip is weaker. That makes it easier to break. I get it. You're right. With your knife, you don't have to worry about it breaking no matter how much you swing it around. So the important thing is durability. Man, I gotta write this stuff down. Next time, 
I'll make it so the matches and fish hooks go in the sheath instead. Huh. Snake, what do you have in your hand? A fork. Why? A fork? What'd you do with your knife? It ain't dinner time yet. Sigint, you have to think bigger than that. A fork's good for more than just eating dinner. Oh yeah? Like what? It's a weapon. A weapon? Yeah, I can use it with the weapon button the same way I use the survival knife. Of course, it's not going to be much use for CQC. This mission is all about procuring on site. I have to use whatever limited equipment I can find any way I can to achieve my objective. So I have to make the most out of every item by adapting them to different situations. Take this fork, for instance. At first glance, it looks useless, but it can be an effective weapon if used the right way. You have to learn to think flexibly and see all the different possibilities. Think flexibly, huh? Thanks for the advice, man. No problem. And the best part is, if I use this to spear a snack, I can eat it right there without having to put it in my backpack first. I knew it. You are using it to eat. Aha, you're using the easy gun. Yeah. What is this gun, anyway? I've never seen anything like it. Of course you haven't. It's a noise-suppressed tranquilizer gun I designed especially for Fox. A noise-suppressed tranquilizer gun? But it doesn't have a... It doesn't need a suppressor. What do you mean? The noise-suppressing mechanism is built into the tranquilizer rounds themselves. The inside of the powder case contains a tiny piston. It's set up so that when the firing gas pushes the piston, the piston pushes the bullet out of the chamber. The firing gas is sealed within the chamber by the piston, preventing it from escaping outside. That's why there's no sound when it fires. Fascinating. While I was at it, I also fitted it with an experimental laser sight. That ought to give you a good aim even when you're shooting from the hip. And just having the easy gun equipped makes it tougher for your camo index to drop. Wow. And it'll help you recover your stamina. Nice. And you won't make a sound when you walk. Good to know. On top of all that, it looks just like a liberator. A what? A liberator. We supplied them to the resistance in Europe during World War II. They look alike, don't they? Yeah. To be honest, that's the part I had the most trouble with. Getting the feature I just mentioned to work in a gun of that size and shape wasn't easy. But why? Why what? Why do you go to all the trouble of making it look like a liberator? Because it looks cool, man. Why do you think? <sighs> hey, you've got an M1911A1. Yeah, a 45. 50 years since the Army adopted the first model and they're still using them. It's a real gem of an automatic pistol. But aren't you going to need more than just one little handgun? Not at all. When you're in a tight spot or fighting in close quarters, sometimes a handgun works better than a rifle. And if I equip a knife at the same time, I can instantaneously switch over to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. I see. That 45 you you've got there is a lot different from the original, though. Looks like someone did some serious work on it. So you've got an M1911A1, huh? Yeah, Eva gave it to me. She said it used to belong to a Western officer. Looks like someone did a little work on it, too. It's more than a little. First of all, the feeding ramp is polished to a mirror sheen. It's not going to have any feeding problems. The slide's been replaced with a reinforced version, and it meshes perfectly with the frame. The frame itself has been iron welded and scraped down multiple times for maximum precision. The front strap part of the frame has been checkered to make it dig into the hand. That prevents any slipping. The sight system's original, too. It's a three-dot type. It's got an enlarged front sight, giving it superior target sighting capability. The regular hammer's been replaced with a ring hammer. That enhances the cocking control and increases the hammer down speed. They also reworked the grip safety to accommodate the ring hammer. Looks like they eliminated it altogether. This is a tool for pros. The thumb safety and the slide stop are extended to allow for more precise handling. The base of the trigger guard is whittled down so you can use a high grip. And the trigger itself is a long type for easy finger access. The trigger pull is about 3.5 pounds. That's about a pound and a half lighter than normal. The magazine well has been widened to make it easier to put in a new magazine. The magazine catch button has been cut down low to make it harder to hit it by mistake. The mainspring housing has been changed to a flat type to increase grip. 
and it's even been fitted with stepping so it doesn't slip from the recoil when firing. On top of that, they added cocking serrations to the front part of the slide. That lets you load and eject cartridges faster in an emergency. Whoever did this is a professional. No question, this thing could shoot a one hole at 25 yards in a machine rest. Well, I'll be damned. That's some gun. Yeah, I've never used a weapon this fine in my life. You say you're using a single action army. The single action army was first manufactured in 1873. It's been in production ever since then, except for a short hiatus. People started calling it the single action army after the army adopted it as their official sidearm in 1875. It's also sometimes called the peacemaker, owing to the fact that a lot of sheriffs used it to keep law and order in the Old West. There are a lot of different models. The one you've got is probably the black powder model. The only thing is, it takes a while to reload. This is a gun with history. You can do all sorts of tricks with it. Why don't you practice with it for a while? Go into first person view and use the right analog stick. Using the Patriot, huh? Yeah, it's the same one the boss was using. Where'd you get it? Hmm? I said, where'd you get it? Sigint, don't get worked up over details. Whatever. Anyway, the Patriot is a one-of-a-kind sidearm made especially for the boss. It's basically an XM16E1 with the barrel cut short and the stock taken off. The idea was to create a large pistol that combined the feel and quick handling of a handgun with the force of a rifle. But with a barrel that short, the recoil is unbelievable. It's tough to aim, but it more than makes up for it in firepower. From the looks of it, it's fitted with a 100-round drum magazine. And it never runs out of ammo? Never. Why is that? Because the internal feed mechanism is shaped like an infinity symbol. Ah, I get it. Yep, that'll give you unlimited ammo. I see you're equipped with a Scorpion. The Scorpion is a new type of small submachine gun made in Czechoslovakia. I've heard of it, but... But you never used one, right? Well, they only started making it three years ago, after all. There are a bunch of different models of Scorpion. What kind of rounds does that one take? 32 ACP. Then it's got to be the VZ-61. The Scorpion is different from a lot of other submachine guns in that it operates on a closed bolt system. So you get a high degree of precision even when firing in semi-auto mode. Another special feature on the Scorpion is the rate reducer, a mechanism that also functions as a shock absorber. What it does is lock the bolt in place for a split second when it's in the rearward position. That keeps the firing rate down to a reasonable level and also helps make the gun easier to control when firing in full auto mode. The Scorpion's firing rate is 750 rounds per minute. It ought to be a heck of a lot easier to control than the Mac 11, which has a rate of 1,200 rounds per minute. You should be able to handle it with one hand no problem in semi-auto mode. In full auto mode, you could probably manage short bursts. And it looks like that one's fitted with a laser sight, too. The Soviets probably developed this one on their own. You can't use the aim button to aim from the shoulder, but with the laser sight accuracy, it shouldn't be that big of a problem. Snake, you've got a... I know. It's some new kind of rifle out of the West. Looks kind of like a black rifle. No, it's not an AR-15. It's an XM-16E1, a top-of-the-line rifle that the Army adopted recently on a trial basis. The U.S. military was working on a new concept for a light infantry weapon from the late 40s through the mid-50s. In the end, they decided they wanted a 22 caliber high muzzle velocity rifle with full auto capability. What they came up with was the AR-15, the so-called black rifle. The one you've got there, the XM-16E1, is a modified AR-15 that's been fitted with a bolt-forward assist. I heard they're doing performance evaluations down in Southeast Asia. So, they captured one in Vietnam and brought it here? That's my guess. But that thing looks a lot different from a regular XM16E1. There must have been a gunsmith present at the field test who made all these modifications on the spot. The fact that it's painted in camouflage colors shows that more and more people these days are starting to realize the importance of camouflage. Hmm, they made it so it takes a suppressor, too. Yep, that's a nice feature to have for a recon unit on a sneaking mission deep in enemy territory. You can attach and detach the suppressor by opening the weapon window and pressing the enter button. Oh, and the firing mechanism's been modified to enable three-shot bursts. 
Why the hell would they do that? These days, a lot of new recruits aren't used to firing in full auto mode. They have no trigger control and end up emptying the whole clip at once. Maybe they were experimenting with ways to prevent that and came up with the burst mechanism as a possible solution. Stupid idea, if you ask me. Hey, give it a chance. It might come in handy. Open the weapon window and press the action button to switch between semi-auto, full auto, and three-shot burst modes. Have fun with that. Got yourself an AK-47, huh? The AK-47 is the official assault rifle of the Soviet Army. The first model was completed in 1946, and in 49, it beat out all its competitors to become the standard assault rifle of the Soviet military. It uses 7.62 mm by 39 rounds developed in 1943, and a 30-round box magazine originally designed for a different assault rifle. You can aim it from the shoulder by equipping it in first-person view and holding down the aim button. It's sturdy and extremely reliable with high power and precision. There's no better assault rifle in the world. I see you got yourself an M63. The M63 is an American-made system weapon. Yeah, I've heard of it before, but... But you never got your hands on one. Doesn't surprise me. It's brand new. They only developed it last year. I'm thinking they probably captured some in Southeast Asia and sent them back for research. The term system weapon refers to a design where most of the parts are interchangeable, allowing you to create a lot of different variations from a single original model. Using a set of basic components as the core, you can mix and match parts to create any number of different weapons. It's like a convertible rifle. By switching barrels and magazines around, you can make everything from an assault rifle and a carbine to a light machine gun and even a belt-feeding medium machine gun. Not only does this save the trouble of having to organize a bunch of different weapons on different lines, but it also has the added benefit of cutting down on the amount of training needed for each soldier. Most of the parts are made by press work and lost wax casting, so they can be manufactured in countries that lack a developed technological base. Nice touch. The variation you've got there is the belt-fed light machine gun. It was originally designed for use in squad support missions. Mm, it's a lot lighter than the M60. <laughs> yeah, you won't find a lighter weight light machine gun than that. It ought to be pretty easy to handle in the jungle. Make good use of it. Ah, you've got an SVD. That's the Soviet's top-of-the-line semi-automatic sniper rifle, adopted just last year. SVD stands for the Russian words that mean Dragunov Semi-Automatic Sniper Rifle. For a long time, the standard Russian sniper rifle was the Mosin Nagant. But at the beginning of the 1950s, when Soviet troops started carrying automatic rifles and assault rifles, the need for an automatic sniper rifle increased. The SVD was developed to fulfill that need. It can use the same ammo as the Mosin Nagant, 7.62 mm by 54 rim cartridges, but they developed a new type of ammo with a tighter firing pattern to go along with it. I heard that these new rounds have a steel core and are two and a half times more precise than regular rifle bullets. Nothing can match that thing in terms of precision. Try it out for yourself and see how powerful it is. When you equip a sniper rifle, you'll go straight into first-person view. Once you're in position, press the aim button to look through the scope. The trigger is the weapon button as usual. You can change the magnification on the scope by pressing the action button. You can fire from a standing position, but your aim will be a heck of a lot steadier if you're lying down. Try it out. You're using a Mosin Nagant? Yeah, it's what the end was using. I see. The M1891-30 Mosin Nagant is a real beauty of a bolt-action sniper rifle. It's been in use since World War II. Mosin Nagants are created by selecting the best made weapons out of the regular M1891-30 rifle production line for their high precision and upgrading them to sniper rifles. They add an optical sight, make the trigger pull lighter, bend the charging handle underneath, you know, that kind of stuff. The Mosin Nagant has been known far and wide since the war for its superior capabilities. They were so highly valued that a lot of German snipers on the Eastern Front preferred to use captured Mosin Nagants instead of their own rifles. It looks like the end took the one he'd been using since the war and modified it to fire tranquilizer rounds. Yeah, it's also been fitted with a folding stock and a pistol grip. Maybe for parachute jumps? Well, I don't know why he did it, but that's the tool of a legendary sniper. It's got to be a fine piece of work.
But remember, the Mosin Nagant is a bolt-action rifle, so you'll have to load a new tranquilizer round into the chamber by hand every time you fire. That means no repeat firing. One shot, one kill. You're using an RPG-7, huh? The RPG-7 is a state-of-the-art, portable anti-tank weapon developed as the successor to the RPG-2. It first saw active deployment in 1962, year before last. Actually, maybe portable is not the right word. The launcher and the grenade together weigh over 20 pounds. It's not something you can use on the move. When you equip it, make sure you use first-person view to aim. Got it. You can fire it as soon as you're in position, but if you use the aim button to look through the scope, you should be able to get a pretty accurate shot. Then just use the weapon button to pull the trigger, and the propellant will shoot the grenade out of the launcher. Immediately after that, stabilizer fins will deploy from the back of the grenade. After it travels about 35 feet, the rocket fuel inside the grenade will ignite, accelerating the grenade towards its target. Even if it doesn't hit the target, the safety mechanism will kick in and cause it to self-destruct when it exceeds the target range or after a few seconds of flight. The warhead is made of the plastic explosive heat. It's capable of penetrating up to 13 inches of armor. That should be enough to shoot down a heavily armored attack chopper. Oh, one more thing. The rocket fires when the grenade first starts its descent, so don't try to fire it real close to the ground. So you can't use it from a lying position. Right. Don't forget that. I won't. Got some C3, I see. C3 is a type of plastic explosive developed in the West for special operations use following World War II. It's composed of 77% RDX and 23% moldable plastic. Like Eva was saying, you can mold it into different shapes like clay. C3 is less volatile than TNT, so a little heat or shock won't be enough to set it off. It's extremely easy to handle and highly effective. Looks like Eva set up the detonators with a special timer mechanism. Yeah, she made it so that when the timer hits zero, all four charges will detonate at the same time. Did she now? Then you better wait until you plant all four charges on the liquid fuel tanks before you start the timer. And remember, you only have enough C3 to do the job. Don't go sticking that stuff anywhere but the liquid fuel tanks in the hangar, got it? Got it. To plant a C3 charge on a tank, Equip the C3 and press the weapon button when you're next to the tank. Make sure they're well placed. Ah, you got yourself some claymores. The M18A1 claymore is a new type of anti-personnel directional mine developed in the U.S. after the Korean War. The gently curved casing is packed with a pound and a half of high-grade explosives. The side facing the enemy is lined with 700 steel ball bearings. So when the mine explodes, the ball bearings simultaneously burst out of the casing. Anyone in the kill zone, be he friend or foe, is instant Swiss cheese. The mine is triggered by an electric detonator. Apparently, the detonator's got some kind of special motion detector built in. Yeah. When the mine is planted, it reacts to anything that comes close and automatically explodes. Just make sure you don't trip your own mine or something stupid like that. I'll be careful. You can pick up a planet claymore by crawling over it. Mines planted by the enemy can also be picked up in this way, so if you come across a minefield, it's a good idea to crawl through it and pick up the mines. What are they doing making minefields out of western mines anyway? They're probably doing field performance evaluations on mines they either captured or stole from the west. The structure of the Claymore isn't actually all that complicated. They must be learning a lot about them. It might not be long before we start seeing Claymoraski mines. Um... That's a weird grenade you got there. From what I can tell, it's an anti-electronics weapon that works by scattering a bunch of metal foil in the air to interfere with radio signals. Call it a chaff grenade, if you will. By using a chaff grenade, you can disrupt the function of enemy radios and electronic devices for a short period of time. But keep in mind that as long as the chaff is in effect, you won't be able to use your motion detector or active sonar either. Looks like you've got some TNT. TNT is short for trinitrotoluene, a pale yellow crystalline compound made from a trinitrified mix of nitric acid and sulfuric acid. It's used throughout the world as a military explosive. It has a low sensitivity and is chemically stable, making it easy to handle. It's also got a low melting point and can easily be shaped by boiling or steaming it. But because the sensitivity is so low, you need a booster to actually get it to explode. No problem. It came with its own remote control detonator. Good. 
Then all you have to do is press the weapon button to place the TNT, and then press the CQC button to set it off. The map screen in the survival viewer will display the locations where you've planted TNT. Take warning though, the radio signal for the detonator is pretty weak. Don't forget that pressing the CQC button will only set off TNT that's planted in the same area. Hey, you got a mouse trap! That mouse trap is a portable tool for capturing small animals alive. Press the weapon button to place it on the ground. Come back a little bit later and there might be a frog or a snake caught in there. Whether or not you actually catch anything, though, is all a matter of luck. Don't get all down if there's nothing in the trap. Try and try again. Also, don't forget that you need some bait in the trap or nothing's going to come crawling in there. If you capture an animal with a trap, it won't have any bait left. Just crawl to pick it up, then put some more bait back in and set it down again. You can use the map in the survival viewer to see where you've placed traps. If you forget where you put a trap, just look at the map. I see you've picked up a directional microphone. The directional microphone is exactly what it looks like, a listening device. When you equip it, you'll go into first-person view and the mic will pick up sounds in whatever direction you point it in. The directional microphone will let you hear a lot of things you couldn't hear otherwise, like really soft noises and the footsteps of faraway enemy soldiers. You ought to find it useful when you want to know whether there's an enemy on the other side of the woods or something. Try it out. Hey, what's that you're wearing? Night vision goggles. This gadget lets me see in the dark by amplifying light and displaying it as images. Amplifying light? That's what it looks like to me. Well, I'll be damned. They're working on something like that here in the States, but so far it's not viable unless it's coupled with an infrared searchlight. And now the Russians have something you can carry with you. Anyway, those goggles should give you a decent visual range even in dark places. But don't look at anything bright like fire or it'll get burned into your eyes and you won't be able to see for a while. Be careful. Using the mind detector, huh? When you equip the mind detector, it lets you know with a sound if there are any Claymore mines nearby. A mine detector is basically a metal detector, so ordinarily it reacts to scrap iron the same way it reacts to mines. They say that only about one out of every 100 objects it responds to is an actual mine. Not exactly what you call reliable so they're researching other ways to detect mines, like sniffing for molecules given off by explosives and using a kind of underground radar. One of these days, they might actually make something that works. But the one you're using is apparently set up so that it only reacts when it finds a claymore on the ground. No need to worry about it being fooled by anything other than a mine. Uh, Snake, what are you doing? I'm in a box. A cardboard box? Why are you... I don't know, I was just looking at it, and suddenly I got this irresistible urge to get inside. No, not just an urge. More than that. It was my destiny to be here. In the box. Destiny? Yeah, and then when I put it on, I suddenly got this feeling of inner peace. I can't put it into words. I feel safe. Like this is where I was meant to be. Like I'd found the key to true happiness. Uh-huh. Does any of that make sense? Not even a little. You should come inside the box. Then you'll know what I mean. Man, I don't want to know what you mean. Between you and Paramedic, is everyone but me that is hooked up with the Major Strange? <sighs> yeah, well, anyway, I suppose even that dumbass box might make a decent disguise if you wear it inside a building. Snake, you smoking a cigarette? It's not a cigarette. It's a cigar. Ah, uh, same thing? It's not the same thing. Why am I the only one who can tell the difference? Doesn't matter to me. What I want to know is, why'd you take it with you? Because I need it. For what? I can't smoke a cigar if I don't have one, can I? So you just wanted to smoke it? Yeah. Man, you got problems. Do what you want. Just keep in mind that your life goes down when you're smoking it. What you got there, Snake? Some kind of drug. The label says pentazamine. Pentazamine? What the hell is that? Beats me. Let's ask Paramedic. Yo, Paramedic! Yeah? You ever heard of a drug called Pentazamine? Yeah, it's an anti-anxiety drug related to benzodiazepine. It's a minor tranquilizer used to treat things like depression, autonomic ataxia, and aporioneurosis and things like that. Besides its calming and antidepressant properties, it's also known for its anti-convulsant effect. Anti-convulsant effect? Yeah. 
So in other words, it can help keep your hands from shaking. Yeah, I guess so. This could be useful. What are you talking about? Nothing. I just thought that if I took this drug when I used a sniper rifle, it would help make my aim steadier. Oh, I see. That's an interesting idea. I think it might work. Give it a try. Got some life medicine, huh? Life medicine is- Life medicine is a drug recently developed by the Soviet Union for use in battle. The, co the components are still a mystery, but it seems to activate the body's regenerative processes and makes injuries heal faster. Well, open open the, the window and press the enter button to instantly replenish your life. Useful, huh? Huh? What's wrong, Sigan? Ugh! Never mind. So, you found yourself a cigarette-shaped narcosis gun. The cigarette-shaped narcosis gun is just what the name says. A sleeping gas gun shaped like a cigarette. It must be a test model that Granin's lab is working on for KGB spies. Equip it and press the weapon button to fire sleeping gas. It's got a short range, but any enemy that gets hit by the gas will be knocked out cold. You can't be seen with a weapon while you're disguised as a scientist. But you ought to be able to equip that cigarette gun without attracting any attention. Make the most of it. Ah, a handkerchief soaked with a knockout drug, you say? With that thing, I'll bet you could put the enemy to sleep just by grabbing them in CQC. You could also press the weapon button to wave the hanky around and spread the knockout drug that way. But there's only enough drug for one use, so you'll have to go soak it if you want to use it again. You should be able to find some sort of anesthetic around there. The Mark 22 is a tranquilizer gun. You can use it to take enemies down without hurting them. The thing is, the amount of time it takes for the tranquilizer to work depends on which part of the body the dart hits. If you need to drop an enemy in one shot, aim for the head. The Mark 22 can also be equipped with a suppressor. With a suppressor equipped, you won't need to worry about anybody hearing the shot. But the suppressor will deteriorate each time the gun is fired. The durability of your suppressor is displayed on the weapon icon whenever the suppressor is equipped. Be sure to keep an eye on it. A suppressor can be unequipped by pressing the enter button while the weapon window is open. It's a good idea to take the suppressor off a gun when you don't need it. The weapon you've got equipped now is a prototype model of the Mark 22, a suppressor-equipped pistol currently in development by the Navy. It's been modified to act as a tranquilizer gun. The Mark 22 is a heavily modified special ops version of the M39 pistol used as a sidearm by the SEALs. Probably the biggest change from the M39 is that it's got a longer barrel, which allows it to be equipped with a suppressor. And it uses a slide lock mechanism. That makes it a lot quieter, but it also means you have to load a new round into the chamber by hand every time you fire. It's also fitted with tall, adjustable sights, so you can use the front and rear sights to line up your shot, even with a suppressor attached. Looks like they got rid of the magazine safety, too. Good eye. That feature wasn't too popular with guys like you who know their guns. The sheer release lever's been taken off as well, meaning the hammer won't fall even with the safety on. So I can just cock and lock. That, and you get the added bonus of not having any mechanical noise from decocking, even with the safety on. The perfect pistol for a sneaking mission, huh? Ah, I see you got yourself an M37. The M37 is a 12-gauge pump-action shotgun. Don't expect any kind of accuracy from a distance, but one blast will send the enemy flying, and it's got some serious firepower, too. Good thing to have with you in close-range combat. It takes a while to reload, though, so plan accordingly. The thing that really distinguishes the M37 is that it's lightweight. It's about two pounds lighter than other shotguns. In fact, it's so light that it's been nicknamed the Featherlight. Yeah, and to top it off, this one's had its barrel and stock sawed off. That's probably a modification to make it easier to wield in the jungle. Those Soviet boys know what they're doing. I guess the other distinguishing feature would be the lack of an ejection port on the side of the receiver. Ambidextrous, huh? Exactly. It's been designed so you can use it left-handed or right-handed with equal ease. But that's not all. The low number of apertures means that it won't get jammed up as much with mud and dirt when you use it out in the field. This weapon is made for the jungle. Good to know. But what are they doing with an American-made shotgun? Good question. I guess they could be doing research on Western weapons, but... Did you ever hear about the SAS using shotguns in the jungle combat in Malaya? Just stories. In the jungle, you're always running into the enemy when you least expect it. The SAS found the shotgun to be extremely effective delivering massive firepower in a short period of time. 
Because of that, lately a lot of point men are starting to use shotguns as their weapon of choice. Vogan's men might be trying that tactic out for themselves. A torch? A little primitive, but a light's a light. From what I can tell, that torch is made of white birch dipped in turpentine. It burns long, so I don't think you'll have a problem with it burning out on you. If you equip it and press the CQC button, you can use it to smack the enemy. You can also swing it around by pressing that button repeatedly. Useful when you need to clear the room of bats and stuff. With the weapon button, you can light and extinguish a torch, so make sure that thing is out if an enemy is closing in. Get used to it. The light from the torch is visible from a long way off, though. It probably goes without saying, but marching into battle with a torch in your hand is not the sanest course of action. You should only light a torch when you're someplace like a cave where you can't find your way around without a light. Yeah, I hear you. Gonna use a grenade, huh? That's an RGD-5, the standard blast fragmentation grenade of the Soviet Army. The grenade itself is composed of two steel-plated casings. Each of those casings has an inner fragment liner that causes it to burst into over 300 shards when the grenade explodes. The grenade will deliver heavy damage to any enemies within its blast area. The safety pin is on the opposite side relative to the M26, so be sure to hold the safety lever down with your finger when you grip it. The safety is released when you actually throw the grenade, and it'll explode about three seconds later. So what you're saying is, it won't explode in my hand while I'm holding it? Of course not. Oh. To throw a grenade, press and release the weapon button. Remember that how far you throw it depends on how hard it's pressed. Press lightly if you want to drop it close to you, and press harder if you want to lob it away. It'll probably be easier to control your throw if you do it in first-person view. Ah, uh, you're thinking of using a white phosphorus grenade. Like the name says, a white phosphorus grenade is one that uses white phosphorus to create an incendiary effect. White phosphorus grenades were used by the U.S. military during World War II. Back then, they were known as Willie Peets, after the first two letters of white phosphorus. The one you've got there is probably the exact same thing. White phosphorus is a white, waxy substance that spontaneously combusts when it reacts with oxygen. The combustion temperature is over 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Any human targets within the area of effect when it explodes are going to get seriously burned. Just make sure you don't accidentally set yourself on fire. If your body does catch on fire, either plunge into some water or take off the burning clothes and put on new ones. Rolling repeatedly should put the flames out pretty quick, too. Hmm. I've never seen a grenade like that one before. There are two basic types of grenades. Fragmentation grenades, which use shrapnel to kill or maim the target, and explosive grenades, which use the blast from the explosion as the offensive means. But the grenade you've got there isn't either of those. My best guess is that it's meant to knock the enemy out without hurting them. Most likely, it's an entirely new kind of weapon developed exclusively at Groznygrad. I've heard that the SAS is working on a low-impact grenade for training purposes, but I never thought they'd be used in an actual battle. The flash of light that occurs when the grenade explodes is probably produced by magnesium. It's the same stuff that's used in camera flashes. I'm thinking they cut down on killing power by reducing the amount of explosives and made up for it by making the flash and bang so strong that it overwhelms the enemy's senses. I guess you could call it a stun grenade. If I'm going to be stunned, I'd rather it be by a woman. Snap out of it. Anyone around when that thing goes off will be laid out. It ought to come in handy when you're trying to storm a room or when you don't want to kill the enemy. Thinking of using a smoke grenade, huh? As you might expect, smoke grenades can be used to create a smoke screen. The combustion agent is a mixture of zinc oxide, ammonium chloride, aluminum, and some other stuff. When it explodes, it releases a thick cloud of grayish-white smoke that resists dispersion. That should provide some nice cover. The smoke will confuse the enemy by blocking their field of vision. That'll help you out when you're trying to make a quick getaway. It also works the other way around. You can use it as cover to sneak up on an enemy position. The smoke screen should work just as well when you're being chased by dogs, too. You say you're using a magazine? A magazine is what's left when you empty the clip of a gun. But what do you plan to do with it? I'm going to throw it. Throw it? Yeah. The sound it makes when it hits the ground will distract the enemy's attention. Ah, a diversion. Guess state-of-the-art weapons aren't the only things that determine victory or defeat. I see you're using the binoculars. Those are high-performance binoculars made especially for the military. 
They're completely waterproof and are filled with nitrogen gas to prevent lens fog. The eyepiece, objective lenses, and the prism have been coated to reduce glare. They ought to work plenty well even in dark places. And they're even equipped with autofocus and zoom functions. Won't find a better pair of binoculars than that. What are you, a binocular salesman? Hey, I know a good product when I see one, that's all. Huh, I know. Know what? You made these binoculars, right? Y yeah But they're good, aren't they? Yeah. Hey, what's that you've got there? Thermal goggles. From what I can tell, they detect and display sources of heat. You're kidding me. They actually made a passive infrared night vision device small enough to carry around with you? What, is that special or something? Is it special? Here in the West, we've just barely got the technology to install it on aircraft. So that's what that thing is they put on the gunship. But doesn't the Army have something like that for driving vehicles at night? I thought I saw... You mean the ANPAS-5? That's an active infrared night vision device. It fires infrared beams from an infrared projector and uses the reflections to build an image. Those goggles you've got there are completely different. Basically, when you've got those equipped, you'll be able to spot enemy soldiers in the jungle with ease, even if they're camouflaged. They might even help you find traps. Ah, but you won't be able to see the terrain as well, so watch your step. Using the anti-personnel sensor, I see. The sensor vibrates when it detects organic reactions from human targets. It's been adjusted to respond only to humans, so unlike other sensors, it'll let you ignore animals and focus only on the enemy. It'll even detect enemies that aren't moving, and you won't have to worry about it giving away your position. But on the flip side, it won't tell you the exact location of the target. Keep that in mind when you're using it. Also, remember that when you use it in first-person view, it'll only scan in the direction you're facing. <sighs> Something wrong? The Major told me the exact same thing. You mean during the Virtuous mission? Yeah. He must have been reading those notes I gave him word for word. That guy doesn't know tech. <sighs> the motion detector will display any moving objects in your vicinity. But the enemy isn't the only thing that's moving around in the jungle. If there are animals moving nearby, the sensor will pick up those animals too. And remember that there's a limit to how sensitive it is. Enemies and animals that don't move around very much won't get picked up. Did he tell you that too? Yeah. Did you give him notes for it? Yep. <sighs> Active sonar sends out a special type of sound wave whenever you press the left analog stick. It uses the echo from those waves to calculate and display the position of nearby objects. Unlike the motion detector, it'll show you objects that aren't moving. But because you're blasting out sound waves, there's a risk that the noise will alert enemies and animals to your presence. Be careful about when and where you use it. Yeah, I've heard that one too. Did he use the exact same words? Yeah. Man, that guy still lives in the Stone Age. Just the other day, he bought this brand new washing machine and- Sigint? Oops. Uh, talk to you later, Snake. I see you have the bug juice equipped. It's useful for keeping the bugs away. If you open the item window and press the enter button, you'll be able to keep the nasty critters like hornets and leeches at bay for a brief period of time. Use it well. Snake, did you take off your uniform? Yeah. What's the matter? Just needed to loosen up. <sighs> I know there's a naked option under uniform in the camouflage window that lets you take off your uniform. But without a uniform on, your camo index will remain low, and you'll burn through your stamina more quickly. So stop acting like a fool and put some camouflage on now. <sighs> Did you hear me? Yeah. I see you're wearing the Olive Drab uniform. Olive Drab, or OD for short, is what you might call the pre-camouflage uniform. Plain-colored OD fatigues are still worn by infantry today, but they'll be replaced sooner or later by patterned camouflage. As you can see, it's got no colors or markings on it, so of course it won't make a very effective disguise. You should change into some other type of camouflage as soon as you can. I see you're wearing the tiger stripe camouflage. The tiger stripe pattern has been in use since 1959 among the South Vietnamese Marine Corps, but the pattern originated with the French. It's said that it developed out of the brushstroke pattern, also known as lizard camouflage. It provides some cover in trees and grass, but it's especially effective in earth and mud environments. You should find it useful when you're concealing yourself by crawling on the ground. I see you're wearing the leaf pattern camouflage. 
The leaf pattern was developed to provide cover in forest environments. The U.S. military isn't the only one using it. Countries that anticipate operating in forest environments are developing various types of patterns, each suited to the vegetation of the particular region. The Soviets and the Eastern European countries all use their own unique patterns. Leaf pattern camo will give you an especially low profile in areas of thick vegetation. I see you're wearing the tree bark camouflage. The tree bark pattern was originally created for use by hunters. Unlike the somewhat abstract design seen in other patterns, tree bark is characterized by a design that resembles photographs of stumps and branches pasted together. It's especially good when you're pressed up against a tree. I see you're wearing the squares pattern camouflage. The squares camouflage consists of a series of squares, each varying slightly in color and shape from the next. It has the effect of making the contours of the person wearing it more difficult to distinguish. You'll find it especially useful against brick and rusted metal backgrounds. I see you're wearing the black camouflage. People tend to associate black camo with night operations, but that's not always the case. Wearing all black when you're out in the forest at night makes your silhouette darker and more prominent, and you end up standing out instead. To get the most out of your camouflage, it's essential to choose a pattern that matches your surroundings, even at night. Don't forget that. Not a problem. I'll be out of here by nightfall. I certainly hope so, for your sake. That being said, black camo can be quite effective in dark environments. It also blends in well with the black soil of humid areas. Make sure it matches your surroundings before you put it on. Snake! What's up, boss? Don't you what's up me. Just what do you think you're doing? What do you mean? What do I mean? What is that camouflage you're wearing? Oh, this. What do you think? Of all the... Looks pretty good on me, doesn't it? Are you out of your mind? You can't wear that in battle. It's like saying to the enemy, Hey, here I am. Shoot me. Well, I'll admit it is a little on the flashy side. Then why don't you... But it does look good on me, doesn't it? <sighs> you don't think so? Listen, wise ass. Camouflage isn't going to do jack if it doesn't help you blend in with your surroundings. Well, I think it looks good on me. Fine. Wear whatever you want. Thought you'd like it. I see you're not wearing any face paint. Selecting no paint for face under camouflage lets you remove your face paint. But without face paint, your camouflage alone won't be sufficient. So if you need a high camo index, make sure you're wearing face paint. Got it? You're wearing the woodland face paint, I see. The woodland face paint is designed for use in forests. It'll give you a high level of camouflage in a wooded environment. Try using woodland paint when you're traveling through the forest. You're wearing black face paint, huh? Painting your face black will raise your camo index in dark areas. If you find yourself in any dark areas, make sure to use the black face paint. Snake, what's up? Why are you naked? I know there's a naked option under uniform that lets you take off the upper part of your uniform, but without a shirt on, your camouflage sucks and your stamina goes down faster. You don't get any advantages whatsoever. Sure there are. Like what? It feels good. Man, you do whatever you want. I will, thanks. Just one question, though. What? Is there a way to take off my pants? Say what? My pants, can I? Oh, hell no. This Fox unit is a nut fest. <laughs> I see you're wearing the Olive Drab uniform. Olive Drab, or OD for short, is the standard battle uniform for GIs. It's a solid color outfit with no camouflage pattern, so naturally it's not going to be much use as camouflage. I'd change into something else as soon as possible if I were you. You're wearing the tiger stripe pattern camouflage, huh? Tiger stripe is a forest camouflage. As you may have guessed by the name, it mimics the stripe pattern on a tiger's coat. It was originally worn by South Vietnamese Marines. Then it caught the attention of an American military advisor, and now they're thinking of introducing it into all kinds of special forces units. It works best in places with lots of trees and grass, but it should blend in with dirt and mud, too. Wearing the leaf pattern camouflage, are you? Leaf pattern is a forest camouflage created to provide cover in woodland areas. Now that our involvement in Vietnam looks set to expand, they're thinking about adopting it for official use. It'll help you blend in especially well when you're hiding in the bushes. So you're wearing the tree bark camouflage. 
Tree bark is a forest pattern created primarily for use by hunters. It'll give you an exceptionally low profile if you wear it when you're pressed up against a tree. Ah, you're wearing the chocolate chip pattern. Chocolate chip? You mean this camouflage? Yeah. I've never heard of a camo pattern called that before. Yeah, I know. I just thought it up right now. The chocolate chip pattern is probably designed to provide cover in a desert environment. It should work best against a sandy or rocky background. Makes sense, but why'd you call it chocolate chip? Because that's what it reminds me of. What? Those little round cookies the Major's always snacking on? They're not cookies, they're scones. Major! And it's not a snack, it's afternoon tea. Snack? Tea? Same thing? No, it's not. Look here, afternoon tea is a fine old English tradition. Uh-oh, here we go again. Talk to you later, Snake. The origins of afternoon tea go back to the Victorian era. Anna Maria, the seventh Duchess of Bedford, was... Looks like you're wearing the splitter pattern camo. Splitter was used quite a bit in World War II on German aircraft and stuff. The pattern helped mask the plane's attitude and direction in dogfights. Even now, it's still being used as camouflage in some places. It works best when you wear it against a steel or stone background. Wearing raindrop pattern camo, huh? Raindrop was used by Germany during World War II. Even now, it's still used a lot in Eastern Europe. It's designed to be especially inconspicuous in the rain, so you'll get the most out of it if you put it on during a downpour. Looks like you've got the squares pattern on. Squares is a mountain camo that's basically a bunch of square patterns. It might look conspicuous at first glance, but it actually blurs the contours of the person wearing it and makes them more difficult to pick out. It should give you a low profile against reddish backgrounds like bricks and rusty metal. Wearing the water pattern, are we? The water pattern was used a lot by the old German defense force. Even though it's called the water pattern, it wasn't designed specifically to blend in underwater. They only gave it that name because the pattern resembles the waves on the surface of a pool of water. But still, it really does look like it could be confused for liquid waves. It might conceal you underwater. Ha <laughs> ha! So you're wearing the black camouflage. The black uniform isn't really camouflage. It was intended to have a psychological shock effect on enemies and hostage rescue operations and stuff like that. But it should also make you pretty hard to see if you wear it in a dark environment. And it might also work on black, earthy surfaces like you'd find in swamps. The camo pattern you're wearing now is called snow. Snow, as you might have guessed, is a winter camouflage developed to provide cover in a snowy environment. It's not solid white, though. It's got a little bit of vegetation pattern mixed in, too. It should work pretty well if you wear it against a white background. Those are some funky clothes you're wearing. Looks like you got yourself some funky clothes there. Yeah, it's called a sneaking suit. Sneaking suit? What's that all about? I'm not sure, but it looks like what the boss was wearing. Huh. Well, whatever it is, it's a fine piece of work. The suit seems to be made of some kind of special bulletproof fiber. Wearing it should reduce all the damage you take by half. The waterproofing and heat and moisture insulation are top-notch. Just having it on will reduce the amount of stamina you burn. It even increases your overall camo index. You got yourself a keeper, Snake. Yeah, maybe we should make it the official uniform of Fox. So you're wearing the scientist uniform. Wearing that scientist outfit lets you pose as a scientist. But be forewarned, you can't equip most of your weapons while you're disguised as a scientist. Even when you're disguised, your cover will be blown if you get blood on your clothes or something. If you do get blood on your clothes, take them off and switch to another outfit. The blood stain should come out after a little while. But, um, Snake? What? There's really no point wearing a scientist's uniform out there. Why not? Why not? Look around you. You see any scientists? No. So why are you wearing it? Because I feel like it. Uh, man, you screwed up. Okay, you're disguised as Rykov. You ought to be able to pass for the real deal in that outfit. You can go anywhere you want and nobody's going to ask questions. But don't forget that you can't equip most of your weapons when you're in disguise. Okay, you're wearing Rykov's uniform. But there's still something missing. I don't think the disguise is going to work unless you make yourself look more like him. You're wearing Rykov's uniform? But the enemy already knows you disguised yourself as him, and on top of that, you lost your cap. I don't think that disguise is going to fool anyone anymore. Besides, that uniform doesn't have any camouflage patterns, so your camo index is going to be low. Don't you think you'd be better off wearing some other kind of gear? You're wearing a maintenance crew uniform? 
With the maintenance crew uniform on, you can pretend you're one of the workers assigned to the Shagohod hangar. But people are going to suspect something's up if you suddenly get down on your belly or start punching somebody. Don't do anything that'll draw suspicion. But there aren't any maintenance personnel around there. All that outfit's going to do is make you stand out. I'd change to something else if I were you. Snake, what are you wearing now? A uh, tuxedo? What, you late for a wedding or something? Come to think about it, the tuxedo is an all-black outfit. It'll probably help you blend in in a dark environment. One thing you can't do, though, is equip knife-type weapons. And you can't use CQC either. Remember that. Snake, what's that camouflage? It's called Hornet Stripe. I got it from the pain. No kidding. Sounds like a pretty unique design. From the looks of it, it's somehow infused with the power of hornets. The power of hornets? Sure. When you're wearing that outfit, hornets won't attack you. Neither will spiders or leeches. You might even be able to tame the ones that come flying out of a hive. Hey, Snake, what's that you're wearing? It's spider camouflage. It used to belong to the fear. Is that right? Well, it's not as good as the stuff the fear was wearing, but it still seems to have a pretty decent amount of stealth capability. From the looks of it, the wearer uses stamina to power the stealth function. With this thing on, your camo index will stay at a high level no matter where you go. But if you run out of stamina, the stealth function will stop working. Keep that in mind. Snake, what's that you're wearing? It's moss camouflage. I got it from the end. Interesting. It seems to have part of the end's power sealed within it. If you wear it in a place where the sun shines, you'll automatically recover stamina. It'll also give you a high rate of camouflage in Siviato Gorni and Socro Vieno, the end's home territory. Snake, what's that you're wearing now? It's fire camouflage. The Fury had it on him. That camouflage seems to have fire-resistant properties. When you wear it, you'll only take half damage from flames and explosions. You won't ever get burned, either. Sounds like something the Fury would use, all right. Uh, that's some bizarre camo you got on, Snake. It's spirit camo. I think it was a gift from the Sorrow. The Sorrow? But he's been... Man, I don't even want to know. Anyway, that camouflage seems to have some kind of special power. When you're wearing it and grab an enemy using CQC, you can drain stamina out of the enemy while choking him, and you won't make a sound when you move around. Sounds good. Tell me the truth. Did you really get that from the Sorrow? Yeah. Hell, the Major says he's been abducted by a UFO, so why not? What? Snake, what kind of camo is that? It's called Cold War. Volgan had it with him. Cold War camo, huh? Well, I suppose the Soviets won't attack you from behind when you've got that thing on. Really? You mean it's got advantages other than being stylish? Stylish? Yeah. Don't you think so? Uh, sure. Whatever you say. Uh, that's some crazy camouflage you got on. Yeah. It's snake camo. Snake? <laughs> well, I guess it does kind of suit you. Thanks for the compliment. Still, it does look like pretty effective stuff. It's a good all-purpose camo. It should give you a high level of cover against just about any type of background. Snake, what is that stuff you're wearing? I don't know. It's called Gakko camo, whatever that means. What? Paramedic? You've never heard of Gakko? Nope. Never. You must live in a cave or something. Well, excuse me. By the way, Snake, that outfit is really killing your camo index. Unless you want the enemy to see you, I suggest you change your clothes as- Why? Why? Because his camo index is- Camo index shmamo index. Uh, hold on now. He's wearing the Gakko suit. Why? Because it looks cute. Snake, talk some sense into her. What's wrong with being cute? Am I the only normal person around here? Um, you mean you're not wearing any face paint? You can take off your face paint by selecting no paint from face. Just select no paint when you want to skip wearing any face paint at all. But your camo index is never going to be as high without face paint as it is with it. Unless you want the enemy to see you, you ought to be wearing face paint. So, you're wearing woodland face paint. The woodland paint is most effective in forest environments. It'll work best if you use it when infiltrating forest areas. Wearing black face paint, huh? Painting your face with black paint should give you a high rate of camouflage in dark areas. Wearing the water face paint, are you? Water face paint should be most effective underwater. So put it on when you want to hide in the water. Looks like you got your face painted in desert color. Desert is a brown colored face paint used for operations in mountainous terrain as well. 
It should let you blend in well in mountain and desert environments. Looks like you're using splitter face paint. Splitter is an indoor face paint. Painting your face with splitter should help you blend in better when you're infiltrating a building. You're wearing snow face paint. Snow face paint was designed for use in Arctic operations. It's most effective against snowy backgrounds. Snake, what's that face paint you're wearing? Kabuki. Kabuki? Right. It's used in traditional Japanese theater. Apparently, it gives whoever's wearing it some kind of mystical power. Get out of here. That's what I heard. From who? Paramedic. Figures. Well, whatever it does, it doesn't make for very good camouflage. Really? Yeah. You should switch to another kind of paint. But I was just starting to like it. Oh, beautiful. Snake, your face paint is... I know. It's called zombie. Zombie? What does that mean? Beats me. Are you serious? Hello, paramedic. You mean you've never heard of zombies? Nope. Never. You guys don't know anything. A zombie is a dead body that's been cursed and brought back to life by a master of black magic. Supposedly, they revive the dead and use them as slaves. It's also seen as a kind of punishment. People who commit terrible crimes can be forced to labor even after they're dead. Interesting. How do you know all this stuff? I saw it in movies. Like White Zombie. Never seen it? Uh, nope. Can't say I have. How about Plan 9 from Outer Space? No. Missed it. You can't just focus on the things you like all the time. You have to expand your horizons, try new things. You guys need to get out more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, anyway, that face paint doesn't look all that useful. Go ahead and wear it if you want, but I think you should change to... You don't need to change anything. Why not? It makes them look awesome. Doesn't it? Look, arguing about it isn't going to get us anywhere. Snake, you do whatever you want. It does make you look cool. Snake, what's with that face paint? It's called Oyama. Oyama? Yeah, it's the name of an androgynous Japanese deity. Are you serious? That's what I heard. From who? Paramedic. Never mind. In any case, that face paint doesn't seem to work very well. Your camo index is way down. Unless you want the enemy to see you, i change to something else. Oh. Okay. Let me guess. You were just getting to like it. It kind of grew on me. Fine. Get yourself shot. Ah, you're wearing the mask. I made it myself. Pretty good work, don't you think? A while back, they were planning to disguise someone as this one Gru officer and send them in to steal some secret documents. I created the mask for that operation. But then the mission ended up being canceled. And then the Major came and told me to throw it out. Can you believe that guy? But you didn't throw it out. Are you kidding? Tossing a superior quality product like that into the garbage without using it will be an insult to science. So I decided to use it to hide your face from the crew of the gunship during the Virtuous mission. So I decided to sneak it into your gear. Okay, but is it really that big of a deal? Of course it is. What's so great about it? Everything. But if I had to pick one reason, I'd have to say it's because it's the first mask ever that can blink its eyes. What about the lips? What's that? Can it open its mouth? <laughs> That's a good one, Snake. <laughs> you crazy, man. I'm serious. Are you even listening to me, Snake? Where's your common sense? Damn. Sorry? Snake, what in God's name? Snake, what are you... How does it look? It looks cool. Huh? It looks cool on you. It does? Yeah. I don't think cool is the right word. Why? What's wrong with it? What's wrong? Don't you think it looks silly? Doesn't it make you laugh? Aren't you going to ask me what the hell I was thinking? No. Huh. I think it really does look good. It reminds me of the alligator people. Oh, the... what? The alligator people. It's a science fiction movie. You've never heard of it? No. Oh, well, you should see it sometime. It's about this guy who gets hurt in a car accident and tries to heal his wounds by injecting himself with a crocodile serum, but then his head turns into a crocodile head. You look just like him with the mask on. That's awesome! Right. Huh? Oh, never mind. I suppose you might be able to disguise yourself as a crocodile by wearing that cap and sticking your head out of the water. A cap shaped like a crocodile head, you say? Yeah. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. 
You know, animal disguises are one of the oldest tricks in the book in the intelligence world. I don't know whether it's true or not, but I've heard that during World War II, the OSS used to use cow suits. Supposedly, they sent agents out to hide in herds of real cows so they could spy on enemy units as they passed by. Nowadays, I guess most people wouldn't even give a crocodile-shaped cap a second look. They think it was just a gag item. But if you use it the right way, it can be an effective weapon for spying. I gotta hand it to you, Snake. You're one sharp guy. <laughs> you okay, Snake? Now forget it. Huh? Snake? Eva, what do you think? What a dork. You must be kidding me. Are you willing to risk your life for that joke? All right. Finally, I get a normal response. What? Everyone was giving me strange responses and acting like nothing was odd about it. I was starting to wonder myself, but now I feel better. I'm not sure what you're talking about, but you look adorable in it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I gotta go. <laughs> this is too much. All right. Um... Snake? Uh... Snake? My mouth hurts when I talk. Did you get cut up? It feels like someone shoved me under a lawnmower. Do me a favor. Tell me a story to take my mind off the pain. Snake, have you ever heard of Renfield? Is that a movie? It's the name of a character. He's locked up in a cell waiting for the master to return, eating the spiders that crawl along the walls. Ugh, change the channel. He waits and waits for ages. Finally, just as he's beginning to forget whether he's human or not, the master comes for him, saying the time has come. Renfield is overjoyed. Wait, isn't this... The master spreads his huge wings and a gust of wind fills the cell. Come on, I don't want to hear this. And there, standing before Renfield in human form was... Dracula. Exactly! If you stay there too long, your old buddy Dracula is going to come and get you too. So you better start thinking of a way out of there. <sighs> you better not leave me without someone to talk to. <sighs> Please, Snake, think. There's got to be a way out of there. I'll try. Okay. Just let me know if you start having nightmares about Dracula. <sighs> Snake, what happened? Major, what year is this? Beg your pardon? Where am I? It's 1964. You're in a cell in Groznygrad. What did they do, Snake? Make you drink an entire keg of vodka? No. You know, I hear they've got 98-proof vodka in the East. Back in England, we don't call stuff like that fine spirit. We call it sulfuric acid. Imagine, if you will, your internal organs being slowly eaten away as smoke pours out of your mouth. Really, Snake, you shouldn't be touching that. Was it a dream? A dream? Well, how nice. And here I thought I sat up all night worrying about you for nothing. It was almost real. I was holding this sword in my hand. Snake, are you okay? You're not going loony on me, are you? Not at all. I'll make it back no matter how much of that sulfuric acid they make me drink. Good show. I'm sure you'll find a way out of there. Yeah. Dream a little dream of your own while you wait for word from me. Snake, what happened? What do you think? Are you not feeling well? No, I'm feeling fine. I had the most amazing dream thanks to you. Ah, you didn't really dream about Drac. Don't say it. The last thing I need is a double feature. It was surreal. I was being attacked by a horde of weird human-like monsters. What's wrong with me? It must be a form of persecution complex, probably triggered by extreme stress. The external stimulus of the room is- I've got a different theory. I think it was caused by your pillow talk. But I didn't... <sighs> I'm sorry, Snake. I didn't know you were that sensitive to it. I mean, who'd have thought, Drac... Uh, uh... Sorry, that just slipped out, I swear. <sighs> Come on, Snake, don't be mad at me. All right, I forgive you. Really? Yeah. Good, I'm glad. Snake, there must be a way out of there. Don't get discouraged. You'll find it. I intend to. Snake, you okay? Yeah, I had a terrible dream. No kidding. What happened? I don't want to think about it. I was being attacked by monsters that looked human, and I'm not even sure if I was really me. At least it was just a dream. 
It's all over when you wake up. True. When you think about it, the fact that you can imagine a situation worse than the one you're in now means life can't be all that bad. I sure hope so. Well, let me tell you about the absolute worst, most sickening nightmare I ever had. This isn't one for the kids. Okay, so there's this big pile of crap, right? It's shaped like a giant tank and it's walking around on two legs, going on a rampage and stomping on people and houses and stuff. And this giant turd is carrying the nastiest missiles you ever saw. Like, whenever it launches one of its turd missiles, whatever it hits, people, trees, buildings, turns into shit. My hometown, my old school, my family, my girlfriend, old man John, Everything in that turd's path turned into shit. That's pretty sick, man. Good thing it was just a dream, huh? Yes, that's a good thing. You feeling better now? Yeah. <laughs> good. Then let's get down to business. You see, Snake, people are just sacks of shit, and they're full of holes. Fill them up with water, and it's got to come out from somewhere. Okay, maybe that was a bad example. What I'm trying to say is, no matter what the situation... There's always a way out. Don't throw in the towel yet. Clear your mind. Think it through. Assess the situation. You'll find a way to escape. Got it. Don't let my nightmare come true. Right. Snake? Eva, do they drug the prisoners here with hallucinogens? I don't think that's their style. Why? I had a pretty bad dream. A dream? This monster that I'd never seen before was coming at me with a knife. And I wasn't me, I was something else. That doesn't surprise me. You're in a mild state of shock from all the pain and exhaustion you're going through. Ah. Uh. Maybe one day you'll learn to stop hiding yourself. What do you mean? I know how you feel, Snake. I'm a spy too. You don't realize it, but the fake you is eating away at the real you. The person you're pretending to be is becoming the person you are. And the real you is screaming out from somewhere deep inside. That's what you saw in your dream. Maybe so. I'd sing you a lullaby or something, but unfortunately I don't know any. So pick your favorite song, and I'll sing it for you in your head. Any song? And you can have as many encores as you want. Sounds fun. <laughs> it's a deal, then. I'm sure you'll find a way to escape. Good luck. Thanks. It appears you've been completely surrounded. Yeah, so I gathered. If Eva is to escape from there... Right. I'll have to take them all out. Snake, you must defeat all the ocelots. That's the only way to ensure Eva's safe escape, as well as your own. But you're up against a lot of them. Don't try to take them head on. Approach them without being seen and dispatch them one by one. And don't forget to use your camouflage. Snake, they're conducting a sweep of the inside of the factory. Sooner or later, they'll come to your room. If you're just standing there doing nothing, they'll find you and they will kill you. Get out of that room quickly. Use the trapdoor that Eva showed you. You might be able to wait it out by hiding in a locker as well. Snake, don't try to engage the ocelots head on. There are too many of them. If they surround you, you'll be finished. Use your camouflage to approach them without being seen and take them out one by one. If you don't camouflage yourself properly, you run the risk of being spotted and attacked by snipers or other faraway enemies. Don't forget to use the camouflage screen in the survival viewer to disguise yourself. Always maintain a high camo index. Snake, enemy soldiers who move in file pose a serious threat. Try to take them out one at a time, starting with the one at the back. Snake, there were drums filled with fuel in the factory. If you shoot a bullet into one of those drums, the resulting explosion should send any nearby enemies flying. Use them to your advantage. Snake, there's no telling where the enemy might be hiding. Be sure to check the ceilings and the bushes. Don't let your guard down, even for an instant. Eva needs you to distract the enemies until she can escape on her motorcycle. She's probably out there somewhere waiting for her chance. Don't worry about her. Focus on defeating the enemy. Understood? Snake, it's too early to relax yet. There are still enemies out there somewhere. Find them and eliminate them. Snake, it appears they've got snipers in place. Snipers are excellent shots. If they hit you, you're likely to be wounded. Find the snipers and neutralize them before they can shoot you. If you do get shot at, take cover behind something. Understood? Snake, your life will naturally recover even if you're wounded. But how fast it recovers depends on how much stamina you have. 
If your stamina is low, your life will recover more slowly. If you want your wounds to heal, you should eat something first and replenish your stamina. You can make your life recover faster by staying in a crouching or lying position. If you get injured, find some place where you're safe from enemy attacks and let your life recover, okay? When you have a serious injury, like a gunshot wound or a burn, your maximum life will decrease. So if you're seriously hurt, go into the survival viewer immediately and use cure to treat it. Snake, you run a higher risk of getting seriously injured if you're hit by an attack at close range. If you're engaging in proximity combat, use caution. If you get seriously injured, go into the survival viewer and treat it right away. Snake, keep an eye on your stamina gauge. When you run low on stamina, you won't be able to fight at full strength. You'll recover less life and your aim won't be as steady. Don't let that happen to you. Use the food option in the survival viewer to eat some food and replenish your stamina. Snake, if you fire that thing without a suppressor attached, the bang and the muzzle flash will give your position away to the enemy. Attach a suppressor and you won't have to worry about all that. To attach a suppressor, open the weapon window and press the enter button. Snake, they're using stun grenades. Watch out! Stun grenades? Yeah. It's a new weapon they invented themselves. It uses an intense blast of light and sound to knock out the enemy temporarily. If you're looking at the light from one of those things when it goes off, you can kiss your optics goodbye. If one gets tossed your way, turn around quick. Heads up, Snake. Looks like some of those guys are equipped with M63s. The M63 is an American-made light machine gun. It's got more firepower than you might think. It can punch through a wall, too, so watch out. You said some of them are using shotguns? Those shotguns are M37s. They're an American model designed for field combat. Not all that dangerous from a distance, but at close range, they'll tear you to shreds. Be careful. Looks like some of them are using scorpions. The scorpion is a Czechoslovakian submachine gun. They don't have the stopping power of a rifle, but they're easier to handle and lethal at a medium range. If you eat more than a couple of rounds, it's not going to be pretty. Don't fool around. Snake, watch out for those grenades they're tossing. You'll be injured pretty bad if you get caught in the blast. You could get burned, too. If somebody throws a grenade at you, get away from it and hit the deck. Those rifles the ocelots are using aren't AK-47s, are they? No. They kind of look like AKMs, but they're different. Different how? They've got steel handguards and vertical type foregrips. And the muzzle suppressor is bigger. A carbine version of the AKM, huh? Hungary has a unique modified version of the AKM called the AMD-63. I heard something before about them making a prototype carbine version of that. My guess is, they probably imported some of those prototypes. If they're using a carbine version of the AMD-63 like I'm thinking, then they could be a serious threat. Those things handle better than the AK-47s, especially at close range. And don't forget, the ocelots are elites. They're going to be better shots than normal Spetsnaz, and you're that much more likely to get seriously hurt. Keep your eyes open. Snake, the only way to proceed is to fight. You have to defeat Ocelot. You can't jump over that crevice, and hand-to-hand -hand combat is out of the question. You'll have to shoot it out with him. Take cover behind something and wait for an opening, then attack him in first-person view. I think what Ocelot really wants is a showdown with you. As long as you keep your gun holstered, he'll probably do the same. This will be a quick draw contest. You'd better have sharp reflexes. Watch Ocelot in first person view. When you see an opening, quickly draw your gun and shoot him. Ocelot is using a revolver. Revolvers take a long time to reload when they run out of bullets. When he stops to reload, that's your chance to attack. Ocelot can use ricochet shots to attack? Then you won't be safe anywhere, not even behind an obstacle. Don't stay in one spot for too long or you'll make yourself an easy target. Stay alert. Snake, you won't survive a fall into that crevice. Make sure you don't fall into it while rolling by mistake. Even if Ocelot hides in a blind spot, you can still shoot him from up in the trees. If he hides from you, climb a tree and attack him from there. Ocelot's pistol uses really powerful bullets, and he's a crack shot too. So if he hits you, you'll probably be severely wounded. If you get seriously wounded, go into the survival viewer right away and treat it with cure. Got it? It looks like there's a hornet's nest up there. If it falls down, you'll be attacked by the hornets inside. If you get attacked by hornets, swing your survival knife around or use a smoke grenade to drive them off. Wearing light-colored clothing can also be effective. You could also try throwing the hornet's nest or using a white phosphorus grenade. There's a hornet's nest over by Ocelot, too. If it drops on him, it might just create an opening. 
Try shooting it down. Paramedic. What's wrong? Are you hurt? No. Then what? These hornets won't go away. The hornets? Yeah, they've been flying around over my head in a figure eight pattern and won't go away. Any idea why? Well, hornets use the figure eight dance to signal that they found food. Food? Yeah, like flowers or nectar. What does it mean? I don't know, but at least they're not attacking you, right? I think it's best to just leave them alone. You've got bigger things to worry about, like Ocelot. Good point. You can beat him, Snake. Who said I couldn't? That guy is using a single action army. It's a six shot 45 caliber revolver. The only drawback is that because it's a revolver, it's a pain in the ass to reload. Ocelot will be open to attack while he's reloading. Use that window to unload on him. Ocelot has two single action army revolvers that gives him 12 bullets in all. Keep a close eye on his remaining rounds. When he stops to reload, open fire. Ocelot is a force to be reckoned with. Don't even think about running away. The only way to proceed with the mission is to defeat him. They say that Ocelot can hit targets hiding behind obstacles by using ricochet shots. Rocks and trees won't protect you. If you stay too long in the same spot, you'll only be making yourself an easy target. Don't stand still. Keep moving. I'm not sure why, but Ocelot seems to have a thing for his cap. You might be able to get him to let down his guard by shooting it off his head. All the exits are being blocked by members of the Ocelot unit. They're fiercely loyal to Ocelot. Even if Ocelot ordered them not to get involved, they might just step in to back him up if he gets in trouble. If you get attacked by one of the Ocelots, use a grenade or something to fight back. Snake, as long as the Pain is using his hornets to protect his body, you won't be able to damage him with gun attacks. You'll need to use a grenade to get rid of the hornet swarm first. Go into first-person view and throw a grenade at him. The shotgun should work as well. Get rid of those hornets protecting him and then attack him with a gun. Snake, if the Pain's hornets stick to you, you won't be able to move freely. If hornets start to stick to you, take care of them before they prevent you from moving altogether. Either jump into the water or wave your survival knife around to drive them away. If you become unable to move, wiggle the left analog stick and press the buttons rapidly to shake them off before you get shot. Understood? Snake, bullet bees are digging into your body. Snake, watch out for those bullet bees he shoots. Snake, you've got bullet bees burrowing inside your body. Snake, watch out for those bullet bees. Bullet bees are the name the pain gives the special hornets he raises inside his own body. And if they get into your body, your wounds will become worse and worse until you get rid of them. If you're afflicted by bullet bees, go into the survival viewer immediately and use cure to dig them out with your knife. Once the bullet bees are out, don't forget to apply styptic and disinfectant to the wound. Snake, not even the pain's special hornets can pursue you into the water, and the grenades he throws will only be half as deadly underwater. If you sense danger, escape by diving into the water. To dive underwater, press the crawl button while you're swimming on the surface. To move forward underwater, press either the CQC button or the crawl button. Use the left analog stick to control your direction. In a pinch, you can press the action button to quickly rise to the surface. Also, handguns and rifles can be fired underwater. You can use these to attack targets above the surface as well. Snake, you've got alarm pheromones all over your clothes. When the pain hits you with alarm pheromones, the hornet's attacks will become more aggressive. They'll assault you more often, so be careful. If you get covered in the alarm pheromones, you should go into the survival viewer and change your clothes immediately. The pain can utilize the hornets under his control to seek out his enemies. Being spotted by the hornets is the same as being spotted by him. Keep an eye out for hornets above you when you emerge from underwater. The pain seems to be directing swarms of hornets to attack you. Be careful. If you're attacked by a swarm of hornets, your life will steadily decrease. Snake, you won't be able to see a thing with a swarm of hornets covering your head. The hornets can't follow you into the water. If you find your vision being blocked by a swarm of hornets, dive into the water. You could also try driving them away with the smoke from your cigar. Waving your torch around with the CQC button should also work. You might be able to trap some of the hornets by throwing a hornet's nest at them. If you succeed, it should reduce the number of hornets the pain has at his disposal. It might even make the nest taste better. Try it out. Hornets are known to display extremely aggressive behavior in response to the color black. So don't wear black clothing. 
Instead, try wearing white clothing. It should reduce the severity of the hornet's attacks. Using insecticidal bug juice on yourself should make the hornet's attacks less severe. Try it out. When the hornets come to attack you, you can cause the swarm to scatter by shooting at it with your gun. Also, the hornets can't follow you into the water, so you can get away by diving into the water. Hornets are also vulnerable to fire and smoke. You can keep them away from you by using a smoke grenade. Swinging a torch around using the CQC button should also work. The pain is said to possess the power to control his hornets at will. Watch out for insect-based attacks, especially his so-called bullet bees. The pain doesn't just use hornets. He's got guns and grenades in his arsenal, too. Be especially careful about those grenades. Snake, watch out for those bullet bees. Bullet bee is the pet name the pain gave to a special type of hornet that he keeps inside his body. When the pain gives the order, they fly at their target like bullets, burrow into his body, and eat away at his insides until he's dead. If you get hit by a bullet bee, go into the survival viewer right away and heal yourself on the cure screen. That being said, despite the name, a bullet bee is really just a type of hornet. They can't follow you into the water. If the pain launches any at you, dive under the water. The pain can supposedly use his hornets to create a copy of himself and confuse the enemy. If he does that, try and figure out which one is real and attack it. When he copies himself, the hornets that normally protect him will be used to create the double. That means you'll be able to damage him with a gun. But be warned. If you screw up and shoot the double, or you take too long to shoot, you'll get hit with a counterattack. You say he's using a Tommy gun? He's got a Tommy gun. The Thompson submachine gun, or Tommy gun, is a submachine gun that saw a lot of action in World War II. That thing can spit out 745 ACP rounds in a minute's time. Its sturdiness and reliability made it popular during the Korean War, and it's still the weapon of choice for a lot of Special Forces units. Sure, it's a little bit old-fashioned, but it still packs a nasty punch. The pain has the power to control swarms of hornets at will. Watch out for his hornet-based attacks. Not even the pain's special breed of hornets will be able to follow you underwater. You're a good swimmer, right? If you're being harassed by any hornets, dive into the water. The fear is using something called stealth camouflage to conceal himself. But you should be able to spot him if you look closely in first-person view. Watch for rustling grass, falling leaves, anything that will betray his presence. Find him and shoot him in first-person view. You can knock down the fear's bolts with your gun or knife. If you can't dodge a bolt, go into first-person view and shoot it down. Snake, are you all right? You've been shot with a poison bolt. The poison is spreading throughout your body. Your life is going to keep decreasing unless you do something about it. Hurry and neutralize the poison. Go into the survival viewer and use Cure to give yourself a serum injection. But I don't have any serum. The rabbits in that area have poison-resistant properties. Capture a rabbit and use it to get serum. The serum will neutralize the poison, but don't forget to treat the bolt wound itself as well. To treat a bolt wound, you'll need your knife, a styptic, and a disinfectant. Use your knife to dig out the bolt, and then apply styptic and disinfectant to the wound. Follow those steps, and the wound should heal right up. Now start the treatment. Hurry! Snake, watch out for the fear's poison bolts. If you're hit with a poison bolt, the poison will enter your bloodstream. Unless you neutralize it with serum, your life will just keep diminishing. If you're hit by a poison bolt, go into the survival viewer immediately and use Cure to give yourself a serum injection. You can get serum by capturing the rabbits that live in that area. After you neutralize the poison with the serum, don't forget to treat the wound itself, too. The fear's stealth camouflage apparently drains his stamina rather quickly. Once he's used up his stamina, he'll have no choice but to go looking for food. That's your chance. Throw one of your food items to set a trap for him. Plant a claymore or some TNT and lure him into it, or lure him into one of his own traps. Giving him poisoned or rotten food may also work well. Used properly, your food can be a weapon. Snake, be careful. Those woods are riddled with traps. Watch your step as you go along, and look out for areas of bottomless swamp. Even if you don't trigger a trap, the fear can still use it to attack you by setting it off himself. Be careful about standing too close to traps. On the other hand, you might be able to use his own traps against him. For example, you could place some food next to a trap and lure him over to it. Use your head. Snake, you've been caught in a snare trap? 
You're going to get yourself shot if you stay up there. Use the action button to cut the rope and escape from the trap. Hurry before he finds you. The fear coats his poison bullets with venom from the Brazilian wandering spider. The Brazilian wandering spider is said to have the deadliest venom of any spider in the world. It's a potent neurotoxin, so if you get hit by one of the fear's poison bolts, go to Cure in the survival viewer and inject yourself with serum immediately before it kills you. The rabbits in that area have antibodies that protect them against the venom of the Brazilian wandering spider. They probably built up an immunity from the fear using them to test his poison bolts. Catching one of those rabbits will give you some serum. If you run out of serum, go catch a rabbit. Snake. The fear is supposed to be wearing some kind of stealth camo. I don't know how it works exactly, but it seems to refract the light around it somehow to hide the person who's wearing it. This is the best camouflage I've ever seen. It's going to be tough to figure out where he is. But that doesn't mean he doesn't have a weak point. Apparently, wearing stealth camo really drains your stamina. When he's out of stamina, the camo will stop working. Don't miss your opportunity. Just because he's wearing stealth camo doesn't mean he's not there. You can still figure out his location by using your sensors. Make use of your motion detector and active sonar. The thermal goggles should help you out too. The Fear uses two kinds of crossbows, the Little Joe and the William Tell. The Little Joe is designed for proximity combat. It's not that powerful, but the reload time is short. The William Tell, on the other hand, is used for long-range combat. It takes a while to reload, but it's got loads of stopping power. Be careful. In addition to regular crossbow bolts, the Fear uses a variety of special bolts, like poison bolts and giant bolts. I've even heard he uses bolts with grenades attached to them. If you get hit by any of these, you're going to take some serious damage. Watch out! Your fight with the end will likely be a long and grueling one. You should stock up on battle necessities, like ammunition and provisions now, while you still can. Snake, that forest is immense. It's too dangerous to proceed without adequate information. Give Eva a call. Eva said there was a provisions storehouse in the east of that forest. Why don't you go and pay it a visit? Snake, the end is a veteran sniper. He's hiding somewhere in those woods waiting for you to appear. If he sees you, he'll shoot without hesitation. Make your way through the forest, hiding along the way, and watch out for signs of the end. Anticipate his movements and come up on his side or get behind him for a chance to attack. Be careful. The end uses a special kind of tranquilizer round. If he shoots you with one of those tranquilizer rounds, you'll start to lose stamina fast. When your stamina gauge reaches zero, you'll pass out. If you're hit by a tranquilizer round, go into the survival viewer right away and treat the wound. Use your knife to dig out the needle. If you run out of stamina, it's all over. Make sure you keep your stamina up by hunting for food on a regular basis. This battle will be a long, grueling sniper duel. But don't let your guard down, not even for a single moment. The End is a renowned sniper, but he's also an expert in camouflage. He's lying low somewhere in those woods and waiting for his chance. You'll only get yourself shot if you run around like a fool. Use your camouflage to blend in, take cover behind rocks and trees, and find where he's hiding. Make use of your binoculars. Keep a close eye out for the flash from his scope. You can also try using the thermal goggles. The binoculars and first-person view will prove useful in detecting the enemy's presence. You should also be making use of your motion detector, active sonar, and anti-personnel sensor. You might also try using the directional microphone. The thermal goggles should also be effective. You've been shot by the end? Yeah. Snake, the end is using a special type of tranquilizer round. If you're hit by one of the end's tranquilizer rounds, the tranquilizer needle will stay stuck in your body. Until you remove the needle, you'll keep losing stamina rapidly. When your stamina reaches zero, you'll lose consciousness. You've got to dig that needle out. To get the needle out, go to Cure in the Survival Viewer and use your knife. You'd better take care of it before you pass out. Now get to it! If you reach the spot where you think the end is hiding and he's not there anymore, don't give up. Take a close look at the ground. He may have left footprints behind. You can use those to determine which way he went. Anticipate his movements and get behind him. The best locations for sniping are determined naturally by the terrain. The end may use the same location multiple times. Memorize the spots he chooses for sniping and sneak up behind him. 
You can tell which locations the end is used for sniping by looking at the map in the survival viewer. Anticipate where he'll be sniping from and approach him from the side or rear. Snake, that's the entrance to the shaft, but those vines appear to have sealed it off. You won't be able to enter the shaft until you defeat the end. Finish him off first. If you run out of stamina, you won't be able to resist the effects of the end's tranquilizer rounds and you'll end up falling asleep. Hunt for food on a regular basis to keep your stamina level up. If you start to run out of food or ammunition, you should think about leaving the woods and coming back later. In any case, always keep an eye on your stamina gauge. You'll thank me later. Socro Vienno Forest is a big place. It's times like this that the map function and the survival viewer can be your best friend. Not only does it show you the terrain and the places you've been, but you can also use it to figure out which locations the end has chosen for his sniping positions. Learn the terrain and try to catch the end off guard from behind. Hey, you've got thermal goggles, don't you? Use those and it should make it easier to find the end, even when he's camouflaged. A word of warning, though, I've heard that when he's meshing with the forest, his body temperature drops so that it's just barely above the outside air temperature. He's probably going to be harder to find than your average grunt. I know it's hard to believe, but the end is apparently capable of photosynthesis. He's probably got an edge over you in terms of stamina. You should start hunting for plants and animals and prepare for a battle of attrition. There's an armory in the southern area of Socrovieno. You can use it to replenish your supply of ammo if you start to run out. But stay alert. The end might be lying in wait for you there. You're going to have a real tough time beating the end without a sniper rifle. There's an SVD in the armory in the southern part of Socrovieno. Go get it. The end should still be waiting for you in that forest, Socrovieno. Until you defeat him, you won't be able to proceed with your mission. Go back to Socrovieno. Defeat the end. The ocelots are supposed to be lying in wait for you. They may even have snipers in position. I know, but there's no other way. Proceed with caution. Roger that. Snake, be careful. Aren't the ocelots supposed to be setting an ambush for you in those woods? Yeah, and I hear they've got snipers too. The ocelots are an elite unit handpicked from the ranks of Gru. You won't find them so easy to deal with. Use your camouflage to avoid being seen. Proceed with caution. Your primary objective is to climb the mountains and rendezvous with Eva. There's no need to face the ocelots in battle. The shaft leading to the mountains is located in the northeast part of the northern area of the woods. Keep an eye out for ambushes and head northeast. Snake, be on the lookout for ambushes by the ocelots. They may be hiding in the bushes and similar places. Make sure you're fully camouflaged and proceed with caution. Snake, those snipers will be aiming right for your vital spots. They're precise, and you're likely to be seriously wounded if you get hit. Use your camouflage to sneak past them without being seen. Snake, watch out for ambushes by the ocelots. Use your motion detector and active sonar to help you get ahead. The entrance to the shaft leading to the mountains is in the northeast part of the northern area. Take out those ocelots and head for the shaft. The ocelots are an elite unit hand-picked from the ranks of Spetsnaz, Gru's special forces. So naturally, their fighting skills are second to none. They're crack shots, and if they hit you, you'll likely be seriously wounded. Avoid taking them head-on. If they manage to surround you in large numbers, you're finished. Use your camouflage to conceal yourself from them and keep moving. The Fury is equipped with a powerful flamethrower. Whatever you do, don't attack him from the front. Get behind him and attack him from there. You'll never get anywhere fumbling around in the dark. You need to be able to see first. Use the night vision goggles. You could also try using a torch or a cigar. The Fury's flamethrower is immensely powerful. Do not under any circumstances try to approach him from the front. Watch out for the Fury's flying attacks. Even if he's far away from you, he can close in on you in an instant but he should be vulnerable for an instant when he takes off and when he lands. That's your chance. Snake, watch out for the Fury's flame attacks. Those flames are incredibly intense. If you get blasted at close range, it's likely to result in a severe burn. If you get burned, go into the survival viewer right away and use Cure to treat it. The tunnel looks like it's getting pretty hot. That's what happens when you use such a powerful flamethrower in an enclosed space. In that kind of heat, you'll lose stamina more quickly than normal. Be sure to eat something to replenish your stamina before you get too exhausted to fight. Look closely at the ceiling on the west side. 
See the sprinklers? If you shoot them, they'll start spraying water. You can use the water to put the flames out if you catch on fire. It should also lower the temperature of the room, so you'll lose less stamina as well. Try it out. If your body catches on fire, you can put it out by rolling around repeatedly. You can also go into the survival viewer and change out of the burning clothes. As long as you put out the flames right away, you shouldn't get burned. So if you catch on fire, take care of it immediately. Snake, you've been burned. The way to treat a burn is with ointment and bandages. Put both of those on and the burn should heal right up. Treat it quickly. Snake, you've got a bad burn. Burns happen when you're engulfed in flames or get caught in an explosion. When you've got a burn, your maximum life will go down depending on its severity. Burns heal naturally over time without you doing anything, but if you go into cure in the survival viewer and treat the burn, you can heal it instantaneously. To treat the burn, lightly spread the ointment over the wound and wrap it in bandages. If you do both of these things, you can heal the burn altogether. That's not an ordinary flamethrower the Fury's using. Normally, flamethrowers use a mixture of napalm and gasoline for fuel. But from what I hear, that guy is using liquid rocket fuel. I'm guessing it's probably a mixture of UDHM, unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine, and NTO, nitrogen tetroxide. I'm sure you've seen how potent that stuff is. The Fury's flamethrower is one hell of a weapon. Any frontal attack you make is just going to get swatted down by the flames. You've got to circle around him and attack from behind or from the side. The Fury is wearing a special flame-proof outfit made from a spacesuit. If it's tough enough to stand up to those flames he's belching out, grenades and white phosphorus grenades aren't even going to make a dent. Of course, if you manage to tear through that suit, then it's a different story. If you use a knife and engage him at close range, you should be able to rip right through that flame-proof suit of his. To get close enough to use your knife, try stalking up from behind him. But you've got more to worry about than not making noise. Any light you're carrying, like a cigar or a torch, will give you away. So when you're creeping up on him, unequip your cigar or torch. You broke through the Fury's flame-proof suit? Now grenades and white phosphorus should work on him. You can also try blowing up a drum when he's standing next to it. You can't fight if you can't see in front of your face. You need to be able to rely on your vision. You can try the night vision goggles, but keep an eye on the batteries. Don't look straight at the Fury's flames when you're wearing the night vision goggles, though, or you'll be blinded by the afterimage for a while. If he fires the flamethrower, either look away or take off the goggles. If the batteries in the night vision goggles are used up, you can use a cigar or a torch for light. But if you try and get close to him with the light on, he'll know you're there. Keep that in mind. Major, Eva's escape route is... I heard. For now, you've got no choice but to do as Eva says and head north. Enemy search parties are already headed your way. Don't just stand there, run! Snake, the enemy has sent attack dogs after you. Without weapons, you won't be able to put up a fight. Don't even think about fighting, just run. Go north. Major, I found a door. That's the escape route Eva was talking about. Can you get it open? No. Then it's been sealed off after all. I'll try. Major, it looks like the door won't open. I see. Snake, forget about getting through the door. Do as Eva says and head north. Snake, Eva said the sewers have been sealed off. If you go up the ladder, I'm afraid all you'd find is the enemy waiting for you. Do as Eva says and run to the north. The enemy is bound to have sent a search party after you. Hurry. The enemy appears to have released attack dogs into the sewers. Without any decent weapons, it's too dangerous to take those dogs on. Stay away from the dogs and keep heading north. That's an order. Snake, without any decent weapons, you'll just get yourself injured in a fight. You don't have enough medical items either. Forget about fighting and just run, okay? The enemy has sent out attack dogs after you. You won't stand a chance against them in your present state. Just keep running north. You might be able to distract the attack dogs by throwing food at them. Give it a shot. Snake, forgive me. The escape route I set up has been cut off. They've already sent units out to hunt you down, and they've got attack dogs with them. There's a way out of the sewers to the north. Head north as fast as you can. There's no way to get past the iron grates blocking the passageways. But there are a lot of side ducts connecting the passageways together. Crawl through those ducts to get around the grates. Snake, watch out! The search party has released attack dogs into the sewers. Without any decent weapons, it's too dangerous to take those dogs on in a fight. Don't even think about fighting the attack dogs. Your only concern right now is to get away. Head north. Snake, respond! Snake! Snake! Snake, what happened? 
Snake! Snake! What's going on? Snake! 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 Are you alright? Snake! 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 What's your status? Snake! 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 Snake, what happened? Talk to me! Snake! Snake! Snake, answer me! Snake! Snake! Snake, are you okay? Snake! Snake! Snake, you have to get up! Snake! Snake! Snake? Oh my god! Snake! 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 What's going on? Snake! 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 Come on, say something! Snake! Snake! Quit fooling around, Snake. Snake? Snake! Snake, don't quit on me now! Snake! Snake! Snake, what the hell happened? Snake! Snake! Snake, what happened to you? Snake? Snake! Snake, answer me. Snake! Snake! Snake, what's wrong? Snake! Snake! Snake, don't do this to me. Snake! Snake! No, this isn't happening. Snake! Snake! Snake, wake up. Open your eyes. Snake, wake up. The revival pill. Use the revival pill on the game over screen. Snake, are you being pursued by the enemy? Yeah, it's the Ocelot unit. Even taking into account the time you were unconscious, it's still too early for them to have caught up to you. It's almost as if they know exactly where you are. In any case, you can't launch a counterattack until you meet Eva and get your gear back. Just shake them off and head behind the waterfall. Snake, are you being pursued by the enemy? Yeah, it's the Ocelots again. They shouldn't have been able to catch up with you this fast. It's almost as if they know your exact position. Anyway, hurry to the waterfall. Once we meet up, we can do something about those enemies on your tail. Keep heading up the river. Snake, watch out for Volgin's electric shock attacks. If you're shocked while equipping a gun, the bullets inside the magazine will ignite and the gun will explode. But he should be vulnerable just after launching a series of shock attacks. Avoid the attacks and either shoot him from his blind side or engage him directly with punches or CQC. And don't forget that the timer is still ticking on the C3 detonators. When it reaches zero, it's all over. You've got to finish him off before then. Snake, don't forget that the timer is still ticking on the C3 detonators. You must defeat Volgan and escape from the hangar before that count reaches zero. Get to it. Snake, don't concern yourself with Ocelot up there. Concentrate on defeating Volgan. Major, they found the C3. I heard. But I don't think they've found all of them yet. And even if they have found them, they may not be able to disarm them. Don't worry about the C3. Concentrate on defeating Volgan. Snake, look at the countdown timer. The bombs are about to explode. Hurry and finish him off. When Volgan is discharging electricity from his body, you'll get electrocuted just by touching him. So you can't grab him with CQC. When Volgan isn't discharging electricity, however, that's your chance to use CQC. Attack Volgan whenever you see an opening. Volgan's electric attacks are intense. If he attacks you at point-blank range, you could get burned. If you get burned, go into the survival viewer and treat it using Cure. Look, there are sprinklers on the ceiling. As long as they're activated, Volgan will think twice before using his shock attack. Snake, Volgan said he hates rain, right? If you show him something that reminds him of rain, it might shake him up a little. How about a tree frog? Snake, what if you put on that mask? You might just be able to shake Volgan up. Shake him up? Why? Never mind. Just do it. Snake, you're running out of time. The C3 is about to explode. Hurry up and defeat Volgan. Watch out for Volgan's electric shock attacks. If he shocks you when you've got a gun equipped, the ammo in the magazine's gonna ignite and the gun will explode. Either fight without a gun equipped, or quickly press the weapon window button to unequip your weapon when you're about to get zapped. After Volgan unleashes his electric shock attack, you'll have a split-second opening. Use it to attack him. Volgan uses a technique where he holds a rifle bullet between his fingers and punches his opponent while simultaneously causing the bullet to explode with an electric shock. It's a punch, an electric shock, and a rifle shot all rolled up into one. You've seen the damage it can do. It'll tear you apart if it connects. Dodge and weave, Snake. 
Volgan can use an electric shock to detonate the gunpowder inside an ammunition cartridge. In other words, he can fire a bullet with his bare hands. If he starts to ignite bullets in your direction, take cover. You'll get nailed if you just stand there. Volgan seems to be deflecting bullets away by wrapping a powerful electromagnetic field around his body. You won't hit him if you fire at him from the front. If you're going to attack him with a gun, do it from the side or the back. Snake, try using a chaff grenade. The metal foil it scatters into the air should dissipate electric shocks and make them less painful. Snake, time is running out. Hurry up and take him down. Major. Snake, are you all right? Yeah. The explosion went off successfully. Yeah, but the hangar is still standing. Snake, the C-3 exploded without a hitch. Yeah, but the hangar is still intact. The explosion was smaller than what we had hoped for because the fuel tanks didn't catch on fire. But the fuel tanks were definitely... Remember how the enemy spotted the C-3 while you were busy with Volgan? They must have called in the EOD to remove the fuel from the tanks then. But still, the C-3 alone should have been enough to take out the manufacturing line. That'll probably be the last one they'll ever make. You succeeded in preventing its mass production. Now you just have to do something about the one that Volgan is riding in. It's all yours. Snake, if you can take out the Shagahod that Volgin's in, the world will be safe from that monstrosity of a weapon. But you won't be able to take it down with the weapons you have on you. You have to come up with something else. It's time to rethink your plan of attack. First, get out of there. You need to shake your pursuers. Snake, leave the driving to Eva. You concentrate on fending off your pursuers and clearing the way for her. Don't worry about running out of ammunition. The sidecar seems to be loaded with plenty of it. Use first-person view to eliminate your attackers. Snake, your ultimate objective is to escape. There's no need to defeat every last enemy. Rather than attacking the enemies you've put behind you, focus on dispatching the ones that are blocking the way in front of you. The enemy will be coming at you from all sides, front and back, left and right. Use first-person view to take them out. Listen closely to what Eva tells you. Watch out for those guard towers. You don't want them sniping at you from above. If you see an enemy in one of the guard towers, Take him out first. Snake, you must destroy all the objects that block the sidecar's path. Do as Eva tells you. Snake, keep an eye on Eva's life as well. If she's killed, you're finished. Make sure you don't shoot Eva by mistake. Snake, if you can take out the Shagohod that Volgin is in at the bridge, the world will be safe from that monstrosity of a weapon. Now hurry up and get to the bridge. Snake, why are you attacking Eva? What were you thinking? I thought you were better than that. I can't believe you, man. You got a lot of nerve pulling something like that. Pull yourself together and focus on the enemy. That's an order. You can blow up the drums placed throughout the fortress by shooting them. That should trip the enemy up a bit. Aim for the drums. Major, the Shagohod. Yes, I know. Pummel the Shagohod with the RPG-7. Even if you can't destroy it, you should at least be able to slow it down. Whatever you do, don't let it catch up to you. It looks like the Shagohod's fallen quite far behind. You're in the barracks area now. In just a few moments, you'll come upon Groznygrad's northern runway. Keep going. You're almost there. Major, we're about to head for the rail bridge. So I heard. You're going to take out the bridge and the Shagohob with it, eh? Nice plan. Let Eva do the driving. Concentrate on fending off your pursuers. You've got to make it to that bridge somehow. Good. You've reached the runway. The rail bridge is just up ahead. You've got to hold on until you reach the bridge. Snake, the Shagohod is coming up behind you. It'll overtake you unless you do something. Attack it with the RPG-7. You might not be able to destroy it, but you can certainly slow it down. Snake, the enemy is hot in pursuit. If they catch up to you, you're dead. You've got to get away from them. While you're riding in the sidecar, lying down won't cause your life to recover gradually like usual. If you need to restore life, use the life medicine. Snake, leave the driving to Eva and focus on attacking. Use first-person view to pick off the enemies around you. If you've got a sidecar on your tail, you should take out the enemy in the side seat first. That'll take a big chunk out of its firepower. The Shagohod's machine gun has some wicked firepower, but you should be able to mess with its targeting system by shooting at the gun itself. If the machine gun starts strafing you, return fire. The Shagohod's missiles are radio-guided. You can disable the guidance system with a chaff grenade. Try it out. If it's too late to use chaff, shoot it down with your gun. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but if anyone can do it, you can. If you create an electronic disturbance with a chaff grenade, the Shagohod won't even be able to launch its missiles. So use your chaff grenades. If the Shagohod tries to bump into you, hammer on it with the RPG-7 or a grenade. 
Even if you can't destroy it, you should at least be able to trip it up a little. Snake, when the Shagahood approaches the bridge, that's your cue to start sniping the C3 bombs planted on the struts. Use the SVD. The C3 bombs are planted on the support beams of the front center side of the bridge. There appears to be a total of two bombs. Eva appears to have planted three bombs. Eva has planted a total of four bombs. Three more to go. Two more to go. One more left. Concentrate on your target. You must destroy the bridge before the Shagahod makes it across. You'll be crushed if the Shagahod makes it across the bridge. On the other hand, if you blow it up too early, the plan will be a failure. Wait until the Shagahod is on top of the rail bridge to shoot the C3 bombs and destroy it. Hurry, Snake. The Shagahod is about to reach the other side. Shoot the C3 bombs quickly. Snake, you have to shoot all those C3 charges before the Shagohod gets across the bridge. Aim carefully. You can take Pentazamine to keep your hands from shaking. Snake, the Shagohod! There's no time left! Blow up the bridge, quick! Snake, snipe the C3 bombs planted on the rail bridge to blow it up. Normally, C3 is a chemically stable material. It's only when it receives a shock from the outside that it turns into an explosive. Eva's probably set those bombs up with detonators so they go off when they're disturbed by something. She must have done it to prevent them from being disarmed. <laughs> Man, she thought of everything. Shooting those C3 bombs should set off the detonators and take the bridge down. Either the SVD or the RPG-7 would be good for this job. If you're really a hotshot, you can use an assault rifle or a handgun, too. Just don't let me catch you using a tranquilizer gun. Clear your mind and focus on making the shot. Snake, the Shagohot is about to cross the bridge. There's no time to lose. Hurry up and snipe those bombs! Snake, the rear frame of the Shagahod was destroyed when the bridge collapsed. The backside of the front frame is now exposed. Even the Shagahod is bound to have less armor plating on its backside. I'm sure you can penetrate it with the RPG-7. Attack the Shagahod from behind with the RPG-7. The area around the Shagahod's underbody seems to have sustained heavy damage as well. By hitting its base with the RPG-7 or a grenade, you can force it to change direction. That will surely make it easier to get behind it. Aim for the base. Snake, it looks like Volgin is using his own electricity to power the Shagahod now. Attacking the Shagahod itself at this point will have little effect. You need to aim for Volgin himself. If you attack Volgin from the front, he'll simply deflect the bullet with his electromagnetic field. Target him from the back and sides. You should be able to slow the Shagahod's movement by attacking its base. Aim for the base and immobilize it. There's a gun emplacement and an anti-aircraft cannon over there. They should deal a fair bit of damage to him as well, but stay there too long and you make yourself an easy target. If the Shagohod draws too close, get away from the emplacement immediately. Snake, pay attention to Eva's life as well. If she dies, you won't be able to complete your mission. Don't let Eva get caught in the crossfire by mistake or there'll be hell to pay. The Shagohod's weapons are deadly. You're likely to get seriously hurt if you get caught in its sights. If you get injured, go into the survival viewer and take care of it immediately. Snake, pay attention to Eva's life gauge. Make sure you don't attack her by mistake. The machine gun on that thing is deadly, but you can force him to break off his attack by firing the RPG-7 at the body of the Shagohod. If he starts strafing you with the machine gun, pump a rocket into the Shagohod before you get turned into Swiss cheese. The armor on that thing is rock solid but you can compromise it if you hit it with a rocket to the inside. Every time he uses the heavy machine gun, the armor cover opens up. Aim for that opening. The Shagohod's guided missiles seem to be using an infrared detection system. If you throw a white phosphorus grenade and create a heat concentration, the missile should be fooled into going that way. When he rams into you with that drill, he's got a lot of weight behind him. It does serious damage. If the Shagohod tries to ram you, shoot it with the RPG-7 to trip it up. Don't try to shoot at Volgan from the front. He'll just deflect it with that electromagnetic field of his. Get around behind or to the side of the Shagohod and shoot at Volgan from there. Snake, you've got to make it to the lake. Leave the driving to Eva like before and stay vigilant. The enemy is still in pursuit. Snake, you've got to make it to the lake somehow. She's waiting for you. I know. Snake, you must shoot the fallen logs and branches that block your path. Follow Eva's instructions. Watch out for the flying platforms, too. You can't afford to have them shooting at you from the air. Don't let them get too close, or else. Snake, the engine seems to have caught on fire. We're almost out of fuel, too. But it only needs to get us to the lake, just a little further. Hang in there. 
Snake, you're almost to the lake. Hold on just a little longer. Snake, don't let the enemy catch up to you. Use first person view to pick them off. Snake, stay on your toes. The enemy hasn't given up coming after you yet. They should be there any minute now. If you go southeast from there, you'll come to a road leading to the lake. Take Eva with you and head southeast. Snake, what do you think you're doing? The enemy search party will be there any minute. Head to the southeast quickly. Snake, where's Eva? You're too far away from her. Go back and get her immediately. She should be to your east. She should be to your west. She should be to your south. She should be to your north. Snake, if the enemy catches up to you, stop where you are and fight them off. However, there's no need to defeat them all. As soon as you've beaten them back, continue on toward the lake. If you find a hollow tree or clump of bushes, you can hide there until the enemy passes you by. The enemy may try to get ahead and ambush you. Keep a constant watch on your surroundings. Use your sensors to stay aware of their locale. That looks like a hollow tree. If you hide in there, the enemy might just pass you by without noticing. When Eva is hiding in the hollow tree, you can get her to come out by pressing yourself against the tree and pushing the CQC button to knock. Snake, look at that wall. It's got a hole in it. If you climb in, you may be able to escape the enemy's search. If you get cornered, try hiding in there. Snake, the lake is just over that cliff. Eva should be able to climb it if you help her. Keep her close to you. Snake, you're never going to make it up that cliff with the enemy attacking you. Take care of the enemy first, then climb. Snake, the lake is in the northeast of that area. You're almost there. Head to the northeast and don't forget Eva. Snake, you can't return to the west from there. Head to the northeast. Snake, what are you doing? Eva is in danger. Hurry and save her. Snake, what the hell are you doing to Eva? What the hell, man? I can't believe you. Of all the... Well, I can see now I chose the wrong man for this mission. Snake, the boss is waiting for you at the lake. I know. That's all I can tell you. Finish the mission, Snake. Hmm. Yeah. You can treat Eva's wounds by selecting Eva from the cure screen in the survival viewer. If she gets injured, see to her right away. Got it? It looks like it's raining out there. Be aware that you burn up a lot more stamina than usual in the rain. If you want to conserve stamina, then you should find some shelter. Is there any place that'll keep the rain off your head? It started to rain, huh? You burn a lot more stamina than normal when it's raining. Be sure to eat on a regular basis to keep up your stamina. You and Eva are both exhausted. You need to take it easy. If you find a good place to hide, like tree hollows or bushes, lie low and let your life recover. Got it? Snake, don't forget about Eva's stamina. She'll collapse from exhaustion if she runs out. If Eva's stamina starts to run low, go into the survival viewer and give her something to eat. To give her some food to eat, select a food item from food and press the enter button. Then select Eva. But don't give her anything rotten or poisonous. I see it started to rain. You burn through stamina a lot faster when it's raining. It'll also reduce your visual range and make it more difficult to sense where the enemy is. Be careful. Snake, your escape is going to be a test of endurance. If you find edible plants or animals, be sure to catch enough for Eva to eat too. Snake, Eva's all out of stamina. Quick, give her something to eat. Snake, Eva's badly injured. Hurry and treat her injuries. Snake, the lake is just up ahead. You can make it. You've given her treatment, but Eva is still badly injured. Don't stray too far from her side. If you get too far apart, she might just sit down and refuse to move. Make sure Eva stays with you on your way to the lake. Snake, you're almost to the lake. You can make it, man. Snake, you and Eva are both in real bad shape. I wouldn't be thinking about taking the enemy on in an all-out fight if I were you. It's time to start laying some traps. Set up a trap the right way and you can stop the enemy in his tracks. And that'll buy you some time. Use TNT and claymores to give them a hard time. You don't have to beat all the guys that are after you. The only thing you need to worry about is getting away in one piece. Smoke grenades and stun grenades might not cause any damage, but they're pretty good at slowing people down. Snake, it's time to complete your final mission. This is where you fulfill your loyalty to your country, and perhaps to her as well. You must defeat the boss. The firepower of that Patriot pistol the boss is using is beyond compare. In a straight shootout, you'd lose every time. Your first concern should be to hide yourself while using camouflage. Maneuver towards the boss's blind side, wait for an opening, and attack her with a gun or CQC.
Watch out for the boss's Patriot pistol. Any attack you make is going to be futile in the face of such overwhelming firepower. Attacker from the back or side. Use your camouflage to sneak into her blind spot. You can also crawl through the flowers in intrusion view. Use this technique to maneuver discreetly into the boss's blind spot. In first person view, you can press the left and right step buttons simultaneously to prop yourself up. That way, you can keep track of the boss's position as you move. The motion detector and active sonar will also prove useful. Sneak behind the boss so that she remains unaware of your position. In a proximity encounter, the boss will obviously try to use CQC on you. By pressing the CQC button at the very moment the boss launches a CQC strike, you can parry the attack. If you're successful, you can maneuver around to her side. That's your chance to use CQC on her. But if you fail, not only will she throw you, but she'll disassemble your weapon as well. Watch the boss's movements carefully. Timing is everything. The boss has ordered MiGs to launch an airstrike. If you don't finish the battle within 10 minutes, you'll both be blown to bits. You must defeat the boss before the MiGs get there. Hurry, Snake. You're running out of time. I won't allow you to die with her. Finish her off now, Snake. The boss is human just like you and me. If she gets distracted, she's sure to leave herself open to attack. Try throwing a magazine or a captured animal and see what happens. Snake, it's all over if you lose sight of the boss. Don't let those falling flower petals confuse you. So the boss called in the MiGs. The MiGs the boss called in are probably MiG-21s, a Soviet frontline fighter. They can be equipped with rocket pods and bombs for air-to-ground attacks. If the MiGs dump napalm on you, you can kiss your ass goodbye. You gotta beat the boss before that happens. That gun the boss is using is a one-of-a-kind sidearm she had made especially for her. They call it the Patriot. Basically, they took the Army's experimental XM-16E1, cut the barrel short, and took off the stock. It handles like a handgun, but it's got the stopping power of a rifle. Because the barrel is cut so short, it's got some nasty recoil, though. I can't believe she's using it with one hand. Now I see why she's the leader of the Cobras and a legendary hero. As long as the boss is firing that Patriot at you, frontal attacks are going to be useless. Get around to her back or side and attack her from there. Move! If the boss gets you with a CQC attack, there's a chance she'll disassemble whatever weapon you've got equipped at the time. The disassembled weapon will turn into item boxes and scatter around the area. Try and recover them right away. One tactic you might want to try is blinding her with a stun grenade or a smoke grenade. While she's lost sight of you, move around to her side or back and attack her. Snake, you're running out of time. Hurry and finish her off. Snake, move through the flower field so the boss can't see you and try to get behind her. Use the active sonar or the motion detector to figure out her position. But keep an eye on the batteries. Snake, pick up one of the item boxes on the floor. One of them contains a loaded revolver. My bet's on you, Snake. Pick up the gun. Snake, pick up the gun already. Trust your instincts. It's too late to back out now, Snake. Pick up the gun. Snake, first you need to find that backpack you lost on the way down. Your backpack got caught on a tree to the north. Try heading in that direction. Snake, where do you think you're going? You can't expect to proceed with the mission without any weapons or equipment. First you'll need to recover your backpack. It's caught on a tree to the south. Press the action button to climb the tree and retrieve your backpack. Is that clear? Snake, you said your backpack got caught on a tree branch, right? Yeah. Was there ivy growing on the tree? There was, but... Perfect. Perfect? Indeed. You can climb any ivy-covered tree by standing in front of the ivy and pressing the action button. Climb the tree and retrieve your backpack. Snake, your backpack is stuck on a tree branch, right? Climb the tree and get it back. Snake, did you climb that tree? Yes. Good. So the backpack? Not yet. Not yet? <sighs> Don't tell me you went up the tree just to take in the view. <sighs> well, I must admit that's not a bad idea. Climbing a tree does give you a wider range of view. You can use it for scouting. But what you need to do now is retrieve your backpack. Understood? Yeah. The backpack is on the branch pointing east on that tree, right? Walk along the branch and get it. Be careful not to fall. You should be able to grab your backpack if you hang from the branch by pressing the action button. Sokolov should be at the abandoned factory to the north, so head in that direction. Snake, intelligence indicates that that area is outside the enemy's cordon. 
so you shouldn't have any unexpected encounters with enemy patrols. I think it will be a good idea to take this time to get accustomed to using your camouflage, hunting for food, and navigating the survival viewer. If you have any questions about camouflage or CQC, ask the boss. The boss's frequency is 141.80. Paramedic is the medical correspondent for this mission. Ask her about hunting for food and medical treatment. Also, she has documents detailing flora and fauna in the operation locale. Contact her if you need detailed information on any of the plants and animals in your area. Paramedic's frequency is 145.73. Snake, once you head further north, you'll be entering enemy territory. You'd best get used to using camouflage and hunting for food while you have the convenience. Snake, I'm sure you realize that a fall into that canyon would be instant death. Of course, the same goes for enemies. You've killed all the enemies. Now you can cross the suspension bridge without worrying about being spotted. Sokolov is in the abandoned factory to the north. Find him right away. Snake, Sokolov is imprisoned in the northeast area of the factory. Got it to the northeast. Yes, and don't engage the enemy. The object of this mission is to bring Sokolov back safely and nothing more. Contact Sokolov without being spotted by the enemy and bring him out discreetly. If you must dispose of an enemy, do it with the tranquilizer gun. Snake, as I said before, this mission is only to bring Sokolov back safely. You must not put Sokolov in danger. You're not allowed to contact him during the alert phase, period. Snake, where are you going? Oh, Major, I was actually trying to head this way, but... You've got quite the frontier spirit, huh? You don't need to go that way. Sokolov is in the northeast area of the factory. Hurry back and make contact with Sokolov. Major, I'm in front of Sokolov's cell, but the door won't open. Hold on, Snake. What's the current condition? Condition? Yeah. What phase is it now? Alert. Evasion. Exactly. I already said you can't contact Sokolov during battle. Don't you listen to people when they're talking? Well, anyway, the reason that door won't open is probably because Sokolov is blocking it himself. He's scared, and no wonder. In order to break Sokolov out of there, you'll need his cooperation as well, so stop scaring him. Contact Sokolov later after you've disengaged the enemy. Once things have stabilized, try it again. Got it? Snake, be careful of that swamp. What's dangerous about it? It's a bottomless swamp. A bottomless swamp? Yes. The mud in that swamp is highly viscous. It will stick to your body like tar. It will be impossible for you to swim. If you get swallowed by the bottomless swamp, you won't be able to escape on your own. Once you sink down to about head level, you'll be trapped for good. Make sure you get out before that happens. So, I have to make sure I don't sink too far. Got it. Snake, wait. There's more? Yes. What? Crocodiles. Crocodiles? Yes. Crocodiles. Like the reptile. That's correct. More accurately, they're Indian gavials. What are crocs doing deep in this forest? You'll have to ask Paramedic about that one. Paramedic? Yes. Snake, crocodiles inhabit that area. One bite could take you right out of action. Avoid approaching them head on. Snake, are there oil drums there? You might be able to use them to distract enemies. Try pressing the action button near the oil drum. Try applying some force to the oil drum. You may be able to roll it. Snake, see that fallen tree? Yeah. Check it out. Why? Just do it. It's empty. You can hide by lying down and crawling inside of hollow fallen trees. If you want to leave, just crawl out. There's a crevice under this fallen tree. If you lie down and crawl, you can wedge yourself into the crevice. To lie down and crawl from a standing position, press and hold the crawl button. When you want to stand back up, press and hold the crawl button again. Got it? Yeah, but... But what? Was that the only reason? What do you mean? You had me check it just so you could tell me that? That's right. <sighs> Pretty useful, huh? Right. Shall we carry on? By all means. When you're out in nature, you'll find lots of places that you can crawl inside. You can use those places to hide from enemies. You'd be a fool not to take advantage of those hiding places, so always look around with first-person view and survey your surroundings. When you're inside a fallen tree, the view automatically switches to the intrusion view. Control is the same as normal intrusion. It's perfect for hiding from enemies. But if your enemies notice you going inside, you'll become target practice. So, be careful. Snake, do you see any tufts of grass? Yeah. What kind of grass? Just 
Ordinary grass. Nothing special. You should check it anyhow. It's pretty thick grass, about waist high. If you crawl into the grass, you can advance under cover. When you do, the camera automatically switches to intrusion view. If you want to stand up again, press and hold the crawl button once more. If you press the crawl button briefly, you'll crouch in that spot. This allows you to observe things without blowing your cover. Also, when you're hidden in grass, your camouflage effect goes up. As long as you stay in the grass, you'll remain hidden, even from nearby enemies. Even when hidden in grass, if you make a noise, your enemies will locate you. When enemies are nearby, move with slight movements of the left analog stick. That way you can proceed with minimal disturbance. You can get inside trees that are hollowed out from decay. Entering a hollow is an effective method for gaining temporary cover from enemies. However, if you're caught entering the tree, you'll take concentrated fire. If they throw a grenade in on you, you'll be torn to shreds. Be careful. Snake, if you fall from that cliff, you're dead meat. Climb up before you lose your grip strength. Whatever happens, don't let go. Snake, do you read? Snake! Major. Snake, are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. You're far from okay. Look at your life gauge. You're on your last leg. No, I can still... <clears throat> See? Snake, this is a solo sneaking mission. Do you know what that means? Yeah. No, you don't. Huh? It means there's no backup. No cavalry. If you're taken out, nobody is there to take your place. <sighs> Pull out for now and recuperate. Find a hiding place and get some rest. Your life gauge will gradually recover with time. But the speed of your life gauge recovery depends on the level of your stamina gauge. So get plenty to eat, then get some rest. You hear me? <sighs> Do you hear me? I hear you. Snake, did you find food? Yeah. You sound happy. I am. Do you know how to eat it? Uh... Then let me explain. To eat food, press the Start button to enter the Survival Viewer, then select Food. Select the food you want to eat and press the Enter button. Select Eat and you will eat the selected food. When you eat, you will recover your stamina, but the extent of recovery depends on what you eat. When your stamina is down only slightly, you should save your tastier morsels for later. But don't leave food for too long or it'll rot. This is where a little planning ahead goes a long way. Besides eating food, you can throw it at enemies to confuse them. So remember, food is not just for eating. Be creative. When you're in the jungle, determining the position of your enemies is important. That's why you've been supplied with sensors. Use them well. The motion detector senses activity in your immediate vicinity. However, in the jungle, a lot of things other than your enemies are moving. Animals moving around will show up on the sensor just like anything else. Also, the motion detector is only so sensitive. Don't forget that certain enemies and animals that make only slight movements will not be detected. Press the left analog stick to initiate the active sonar and emit a special sonic wave. The reflected sound from the sonic wave reveals the positions of targeted objects. In contrast to the motion detector, the active sonar reveals still objects as well. However, there's a risk that the sound of the sonic wave will reveal your position to enemies and animals, so be careful when using the active sonar. The anti-personnel sensor vibrates when it detects human life forms. Unlike other sensors, the anti-personnel sensor has been adjusted to react to humans only, eliminating noise from animal detection. It can detect hidden, unmoving enemies, and the use of it doesn't betray your own position. But on the other hand, its accuracy lacks a bit as it has trouble revealing the exact position of detected bodies. Keep that in mind. When you use it during first-person view, it'll work only in the direction you're facing. Your sensors and other electronic devices cannot be used indefinitely. Once they're activated, they consume battery power. Remember, all items draw power from a single battery. Once your battery runs out, all electronic gear becomes inoperable. You can check your remaining battery power with the icon of any item that uses electricity. Take care not to waste power. You can climb up onto waste high objects by pressing the action button. Climbing can get you to locations that can't be accessed by walking, and it may help you reach items that can't be found normally. Don't forget to try climbing things. Snake, be careful. The way to change between standing, crouching and crawling has changed slightly from the methods learned in training. 
When standing, press the crawl button briefly to crouch and press and hold to take a crawling position. Since by crouching you take a lower position, it has a higher camo index than standing and the added stability of crouching lessens the effect of gun recoil. If you try shooting while crouching, you'll notice your shots will bunch together more consistently than when standing. Press the crawl button while crouching to stand up and move the left analog stick to crawl in a direction. When crawling, your camo index becomes extremely high and your firing of guns becomes even more stable than while crouching. You can move the left analog stick while on your stomach to crawl in a particular direction. When you're crawling, use small movements of the left analog stick to crawl silently at the expense of speed. However, be warned that crawling consumes more stamina than simply walking. Press and hold the crawl button while in crawl position to stand up. Press the crawl button briefly to switch to crouch position. Don't forget, if you want to stand up quickly from a crawling position, press and hold the crawl button. Snake, I recommend against leaving the bodies of your victims lying around. If the enemy spots a fallen comrade, they'll realize that they've been infiltrated and strengthen their guard. When you kill an enemy, hide the body in the grass or at some other location where it won't be spotted. Stand near a fallen enemy and press the weapon button with no weapon equipped to grab the body. Hold the weapon button and move to drag the body. Release the weapon button to put the body down. Snake, I don't recommend running around wildly. You need to determine when it's best to run and when it's best just to walk. Move the left analog stick slightly to walk. You won't move very fast, but it consumes little stamina and enemies are less likely to detect you. When you're near enemies or when you need to conserve stamina, those are good times to walk. Snake, press the left analog stick down on the radio screen to open the memory window. In the memory window, select a person to contact and press the enter button. This saves you the time of adjusting the frequency. The battlefield airwaves are littered with various transmissions. You can find a real catch if you fiddle around enough. Press the CQC button when you're up against a wall to knock on the wall and make a sound. Creating sounds can attract the attention of enemies. There are many ways to use sound to your advantage. Use it to lure an enemy in the wrong direction. Then use that opportunity to slip by. Or lure an enemy near you, then ambush the enemy from behind. Use it to your utmost advantage. Snake, if you find an item box, use first-person view to take a good look and find out what's inside. Sometimes it's dangerous to blindly go after an item. That's why you should check first to make sure the item in the item box is worth the trouble. If you can't get a good look, you can use your binoculars. Snake, the damage that an enemy takes from your gun depends on where you hit him. If you hit an arm or leg, one shot won't be enough to finish him. If you want to take an enemy out in one shot, you'll have to use a first-person view attack and get a solid shot to the head. Snake, when you stand up against a tree or put your back against the wall near a corner, the camera lowers and gives you a view of behind. This is the corner view. This allows you to keep track of what's occurring behind you when hiding in protected areas. Also, there are a variety of actions possible while hiding, including using the left and right step buttons to peek and the weapon button to take jump out shots. Learning how to take advantage of the corner view is the first step towards mission success. Use it to your utmost advantage. In the corner view, press the left step button or the right step button to stick yourself out from a protected area and look over your shoulder. We'll call this action peeking. Peeking is effective for observation since it gives you a wider range of vision than the normal corner view. However, since it involves revealing part of your body, you put yourself at risk of being spotted by the enemy. Move the right analog stick with the corner view on to shift the camera in that direction. This won't give you the same wide angle as peeking with the left and right step buttons, but it is safer since it will keep you from exposing your body too much. You'll do well to get accustomed to it. If you have a gun equipped during the corner view, press the weapon button to jump out and take a jump out shot. With the jump out shot technique, you can stay protected from enemy fire behind an obstruction and launch a burst attack when the time is right. This is a crucial technique for firefights. Use it well. When you press the weapon button with the handgun, you aim, and when you release it, you fire. If after aiming you wish to withdraw your aim without firing, release the weapon button slowly. You'll just have to practice until you get the hang of it.
I've heard of a lot of cases where fresh recruits accidentally fired on enemies during a holdup. If you train yourself now, you won't be liable to misfire when the pressure's on. If you're unsure of yourself, you should practice. The assault rifle works a little differently from the handgun. Press the weapon button lightly to aim and press the weapon button fully to fire. If you want to lower the weapon without firing, such as during a holdup, just release the weapon button without fully pressing it. Be careful not to fire the weapon the moment you aim. The distance that you throw grenades and other throwable weapons is determined by how hard you press the weapon button. A light press of the weapon button will toss the weapon nearby, while a hard press of the button will hurl it farther. Adjust the strength of the button press as appropriate. You can also throw in first-person view. With this view, you can throw more accurately at specific targets. Use it as necessary. Thermal goggles create a thermal image based on the heat emitted by objects in view. With the thermal goggles equipped, you'll be able to quickly spot enemies hidden deep within the jungle. Also, you can locate plants, animals and traps. Use it to your advantage. However, once you activate the thermal goggles, you begin draining battery energy. And remember, once you're out of battery juice, you won't be able to use your other electronic devices. Press the action button when you're on top of a branch or in front of a railing to hang down from that spot. This action is called hanging. Sometimes it's advantageous to move while hanging rather than walking on the surface. Also, by hanging, you can hide by staying out of the sight of your enemies. While hanging, use the left analog stick, left step button and right step button to move left and right. When you want to climb back up from your hanging position, press the action button once more. If you want to drop down, press the crawl button. You can't keep hanging forever. Once you run out of grip strength, you'll fall. Check your grip strength with the grip gauge. When you hang, a blue gauge appears above the stamina gauge. This is the grip gauge. It indicates the status of your grip. When hanging, the grip gauge drops. When the grip gauge expires, you will fall. So you must climb back up before that happens. The length of the grip gauge depends upon your stamina. If you need to hang for a long period, you'll have to revive your stamina first. If there's something to grab onto during a fall, press the action button when you pass in front of it. If you get the timing right, you'll be able to grab and hang onto that area. With this technique, you can reach locations that are inaccessible by other means. You may even find some rare items this way. Observe your geographic surroundings and try to find spots that you could grab during a fall. Press the crawl button while hanging to drop straight down. You can knock an enemy instantly unconscious with this technique if you land on top of him. When you're in a tree, try aiming for an enemy passing beneath. If you approach an enemy undetected, you can render him defenseless by jutting a gun into his body from behind. This is called a holdup. However, even after rendering an enemy defenseless, if he notices you put your weapon away or start to walk away, he will attack. So. Be careful. When you hold an enemy up, sometimes he will give you an item. Conducting a holdup presents risks, but it is a useful technique when you're running low on ammunition or medical items. After you've received an item from a holdup, you might try holding the enemy up again. He might give up a more precious, hidden item. With an equipped weapon in overhead view, press and hold the aim button to lock your line of fire while moving in any given direction. Use this for charges or retreats or any other time that you want to concentrate fire in one direction while moving. In first person view, use the right step button to take one step right and the left step button to take a step left. Use it to attack while hiding behind barriers and to step out of hidden spots to scout. During first person view, press the left and right step buttons at the same time to stretch up slightly from that position. It's useful when you're hiding behind barriers and scouting or in a shootout. When you creep inside a small space, the overhead view switches to the intrusion view. Movement during the intrusion view is a bit different from movement during the overhead view. Use up on the left analog stick to advance, down to go backwards, and left and right to rotate. Use directional button left and right to shift left and right. With large movements of the left analog stick, you move faster but create sound. Nearby enemies might notice you. With slight movements of the left analog stick, you can move without making a sound, but at the expense of speed. Use both types of movement in appropriate situations. Snake, 
If you slip off there, you won't be able to climb back up. If you want to go up, find a different route. After you've grabbed an enemy from behind with CQC, you can interrogate him by pressing the left analog stick. This is an opportunity to gain intelligence. Some of your enemies have valuable information, so give the technique a try and see what you can learn. The degree to which you move the left analog stick not only changes your walking speed, but changes your speed when crawling and for intrusion movement. With large movements of the left analog stick, you can move faster, but you'll make noise and give yourself away to nearby enemies. With slight movements of the left analog stick, you can move in silence. It sacrifices speed, but it's the best choice for the times when creating noise presents significant risk. Snake, the Mark 22 is a tranquilizer gun. Use it to put enemies to sleep without harming them. The speed with which the tranquilizer takes effect depends on the point of impact on the enemy. If a target is hit on the arm or leg, the tranquilizer won't take effect immediately, but a target hit on the head will drop like a fly. If you want to take an enemy out in a flash, aim for the head. Equip food as a weapon and press the weapon button to throw the food. If you throw a live animal near an enemy, you may be able to distract him. If an enemy is really hungry, he may pounce at the prospect of food. You have minimal gear on this mission, and you have to make the most use out of anything you can procure on the ground. Move the right analog stick in a direction during the overhead view to look in that direction. Move the right analog stick left to see what's nearby on screen left. Move right for screen right, up to see what's further ahead, and down to see what's nearby. If you press the right analog stick while it's pointed in a direction, you can lock the camera on that position. For example, if you're heading north, move the right analog stick up and press it to lock the camera, allowing you to observe things in the direction of movement. Then, if you later spot an enemy patrol to the east, lock the camera to the right so you can hide while observing the threat. Use of this technique can be greatly advantageous to your mission. Make sure to get the most out of it. Press the crawl button during a run to commence a roll. For a brief interval, you'll perform a jump which can be used to knock down enemies. In contrast to the training you've done so far, you can use rolling to jump waist-high objects. However, remember that rolling consumes more stamina than standard running. Snake, in order to maintain your stamina, you'll have to feed yourself. The idea behind this mission is procure on site. This goes for food as well. Procure on site? That's right. But don't you think I should have at least brought a few rations? Americans have a terrible habit of taking everything with them. Nowadays, nobody can get anything done without a lot of fancy equipment. It wasn't like that in SAS, I'll tell you that. And with Fox, we're running things my way. Roger that, sir. You're not convinced, are you? Well, think of it this way. The stuff you'll find out there tastes a lot better than army rations, anyway. I hope you're right. You'll be procuring food by capturing local plants and animals. Paramedic has information on the flora and fauna available in the mission area. Ask her if you have any questions about the plants and animals you find. Snake, when your stamina gets low, it negatively affects your physical abilities. You've got to replenish your stamina before it runs out. The gauge below your life gauge is your stamina gauge. It shows, as the name suggests, your remaining stamina. As you consume stamina, your natural life regeneration is slowed and your hands shake more. Your O2 gauge and grip gauge also become shorter. Excessively low stamina can often impede your mission objectives. Make sure you replenish stamina before that occurs. Eat food to recover stamina. Capture plants and animals to get food. I have information on the local plants and animals, so don't hesitate to ask. My frequency is 145.73. Your actions can lower your stamina. The more demanding the activity, the more stamina consumed. Exactly. Walking slowly will conserve stamina, while actions like rolling, crawling, and stalking consume large amounts of it. Try your best to avoid unnecessary actions in order to conserve stamina. Snake, use the survival viewer to pick your camouflage, treat wounds, and eat food. Ask the boss or paramedic about the details. Snake, remember that the suppressor is a limited commodity. I know. No suppressor lasts forever. Exactly. When the suppressor's durability wears away, it breaks beyond repair. See the weapon icon to check the suppressor's present level of durability. Remove the suppressor from your gun if you want to make it last. 
Select the weapon that the suppressor is on with the weapon window button and press the enter button to attach or detach the suppressor. Regulate usage of the suppressor based on the situation. Snake. Certain enemy soldiers are equipped with radios. These signalers can use their radios to transmit information to and from the command headquarters. If a signaler realizes your presence, you can bet he'll be on the horn calling backup from headquarters. After headquarters receives the call for backup, they contact a nearby unit and order them to head over to give support. Once backup arrives, your enemies will outnumber you beyond hope for victory. It'll be too much for even you to handle. If you notice a signaler making a call for backup with his radio, take him out before he has the chance. If the call gets through, retreat before the backup unit arrives. If you hang around too long, you'll find yourself immensely outmatched. Got it? It's possible to destroy the radio that enemy correspondents use. If you must get involved in a fight, destroying the radio first will allow you to concentrate on the battle without worrying about reinforcements. Snake, this operation is a sneaking mission. You'll be doing your job right under the enemy's nose. In the event that you're spotted by an enemy, disable him before he can alert nearby soldiers. If you can take him out before he alerts other enemies of your presence, then the alert phase will quickly be restored to normal phase. But don't forget, even this should only happen in emergencies. Your top priority is to avoid being spotted by the enemy in the first place. Be effective. Snake, did you notice that when you knock an enemy unconscious, stars appear over his head? If you take a close look at the stars above the enemy's head, you'll notice that they gradually disappear, one at a time. Once the stars are all gone, the enemy becomes conscious again and returns to battle. So, when you knock out an enemy, be sure to plan for his recovery. Snake, that region is inside the enemy's area of control. I know. Time for the real deal. The enemy is running regular patrols. You don't know when or where you might run into them. Use camouflage prudently and proceed with caution. To use camouflage, first press the Start button to go to the Survival Viewer. Then select Camouflage and press the Enter button. Select Uniform to select Battle Fatigues and Face to select Face Paint. Choose Battle Fatigues that match the surrounding environment. The most effective camouflage is attained by selecting fatigues that blend in with the environment. Camouflage patterns that stand out in your surroundings will attract attention. Snake, camouflage uniforms alone are not enough. You'll need to put on face paint as well. Face paint is camouflage applied to the face. Bare skin sticks out like a sore thumb in the jungle. So always protect yourself with face paint. Choose a color that matches the features of your surroundings and use your finger to apply the face paint. Start by applying a light color, then gradually move up in darkness. That way, even if you make a mistake, you can cover it up with a later, darker color. In order to flatten the appearance of your face, use light colors on areas of the face that recede and dark colors on areas that protrude. Open the Survival Viewer, go to Camouflage, then select Face, and you'll find the selection of face paints. Be sure to select a face paint that makes you blend right into your surroundings, okay? Normally, you would ask a fellow soldier how well your camouflage is working. But this is a solo sneaking mission, so nobody out there is on your side. You have to determine how well your camouflage is working by yourself. Yeah, I know. Don't worry, that's what the camo index is for. The camo index tells you how well you've imitated the surroundings. The higher the index, the more well disguised you are. With a high enough camo index, you can even fool enemies inches away. If you are in an area where encounters are a high concern, keep your camo index high. Got it? Snake, camouflage and face paint alone won't make you blend in completely. In addition to the camouflage itself, your physical position is a crucial dynamic you should keep in mind. Camouflage is about blending in with nature. To ensure effective camouflage, you have to stay low and keep still. As long as you have camouflage fatigues, face paint that matches the environment, and lay on your stomach, you don't need to be concerned with being spotted by distant enemies. On the other hand, no amount of camouflage will keep you hidden from the enemy if you're running around. So when you need to hide from the enemy, lie as low as possible and stay still. You can check the camo index to see how your movement and position affects the quality of your disguise. A suspension bridge, is it? 
If you cross that, you'll be revealed to enemies in every direction. To cross the bridge, you'll have to do something about the enemies in the area first. You could put them to sleep with a long-range tranquilizer shot, or you could get in close, lure them to you, and take them out. Use a first-person view attack to hit enemies from afar, but be warned. If you don't take them out in one hit, your cover will be blown. When attacking from afar, it's crucial that you hit a vital spot dead on. To lure an enemy to you, deliberately make a noise or throw food at him to get his attention. You said it's a suspension bridge, right? Yeah. Supported by rope? That's right. If you cut the rope, the suspension bridge should sway quite a bit. You may be able to shake the enemies off the bridge. Your weapons aren't the only way to take out enemies. Use your head. Snake, in order to carry out the mission without being spotted, you must learn to detect an approaching enemy well ahead of time. Press the first person view button and use the first person view to constantly check your surroundings as you proceed. Press the first person view button to switch to the first person view. In first person view, you can look at your surroundings through your own eyes. The overhead view's range is limited. If you plow ahead using only the overhead view, you put yourself in danger of running into an enemy without even realizing he was there. Make regular stops and check your surroundings with first-person view. Okay, Snake? Select Map in the Survival Viewer to view a map of the area you're currently in. It shows your present location and the places you've been to. In addition, if you acquire information from enemies, the map may also display enemy unit positions and the location of items. To get information from an enemy, grab him from behind using CQC and press the left analog stick. To succeed in any mission, knowing how to put information about the zone of operation to effective use will be essential. Map will serve you well. You can use an equipped weapon during first-person view. This is called a first-person view attack. When using first-person view attack, you can direct your line of fire up, down, left or right. The first-person view attack is a fundamental part of gunfighting. It allows you to aim in directions impossible to hit with the overhead view, like shooting enemies that are above or below you. It also makes it possible to aim for your enemy's weak points. When you need to take an enemy out in one shot, use a first-person view attack and aim for the head. Each time you use up the ammunition in a magazine, you'll need to load the next one. You'll be vulnerable while changing magazines, so always be aware of your remaining bullets. Remaining bullets are displayed in an icon. You may want to carry out a tactical reload before the magazine is fully used. A tactical reload is a change of magazines carried out before the bullets in the magazine are completely used up. It keeps you from running out of bullets near your enemies so that you can keep up your level of firepower and you will always have a bullet in your chamber. The trick is, don't lower your gun or your line of sight when reloading. Keep your line of sight up and concentrate on your surroundings while changing magazines. And don't forget to retrieve magazines that still have bullets remaining in them. The actual procedure involves unequipping your gun and then equipping it once again. That will load the gun with a new magazine. I recommend pressing the Weapon Window button quickly to carry out a quick reload. Press the Action button from on top a branch to hang down from the tree. But you can only remain hanging as long as your grip strength lasts. Keep an eye on your grip gauge when dangling from a tree. Be careful. With low stamina, your grip won't last long. Even while hanging, you can fire your handgun with one arm. And if you're attacked during a hanging maneuver, don't panic and claim the advantage. Snake, what do you do when you get a new weapon or item? I put it in my backpack first. But you know that you can't equip items that are still in your backpack, right? Yeah. The only things that can be equipped with the weapon and item window buttons are items on my person. Correct. If you want to equip an item, first you have to remove it from your backpack. To place a weapon on your person, go to the Survival Viewer, then Backpack, then select Weapon. A list of weapons will be shown in a window in the upper left. Select the weapon you wish to put on your person with the left analog stick and press the Enter button to remove the weapon from your backpack and equip it to your person. However, you can only carry so many weapons at once on your person. Put unnecessary weapons back into your backpack.
On the same screen, move the left analog stick while pressing the Weapon Window button to move the icon for weapons that are already on your person. Line up the weapon icon with the lower right and press the Enter button to put that weapon into your backpack. Select a weapon on your person from the weapon list and press the Enter button to put that weapon into your backpack. Your situation determines what weapons are most useful. Consider this when choosing which weapons to put on your person. Okay, Snake? Snake, aiming your gun during first-person view is a bit different from what you're used to in training. For the assault rifle and certain other weapons, pressing the weapon button will first ready the gun for shooting from the hip. If you're in a close quarters fight or other situation that requires immediate action, fire from that position. Observe where your shots are hitting and correct your aim accordingly. I understand, but that doesn't sound too accurate. Of course not. So when you require pinpoint targeting, like when firing from afar or sniping, hold the aim button to aim. Carefully align your front and rear sights to concentrate fire and gain a sharper view on your target. If you rapid-fire the assault rifle, the recoil of the gun will cause your shots to stray from their intended targets. Firing from a crouched position or while lying on your stomach will stabilize the recoil and keep your hits more consistent. Snake, the Soviet troops are not your only enemies. How do you mean? Nature. Boss. Poisonous snakes, scorpions, crocodiles, hornets. There are dozens of dangerous life forms living in Salino Yarsk. There are even poisonous mushrooms and frogs, and other plants and animals that you must not eat. In order to survive in nature, you have to know nature. Paramedic has information on the flora and fauna in each area. Ask her for the details. In most areas outdoors, your footsteps will create some noise, even if you walk slowly by using small movements of the left analog stick. This could alert nearby enemies to your presence. If you need to sneak up behind an enemy, use a directional button to utilize stalking. Stalking is a movement technique that eliminates even the sound of your footsteps. Stalking involves putting your weight on your rear foot, then stepping forward slowly with your front foot. Before putting down the front foot, use the tip of your foot to check for dangerous objects or branches that might create a noise when stepped upon. Once you've determined the spot is safe to step on, slowly lower your foot to the ground, placing it down from the outside edge first and then slowly lowering your weight onto the foot. Throughout the entire process, you have to strain your calves to retain balance. <sighs> But all you need to do is press the directional button in the direction you wish to move. When stalking, you can move without creating sound with your footsteps. And since your posture is low while stalking, you are that much less likely to be spotted by the enemy. Since you move cautiously while stalking, you will be able to detect a trap on the ground before it is set off. However, the slow, concentrated movement while stalking consumes high amounts of stamina. Switch between walking and running with the left analog stick and stalking with the directional buttons depending on the situation. Camouflage is an indispensable tool when you're sneaking through the jungle. It takes more than just clothes to make a good disguise. To camouflage yourself effectively, you'll need to wear face paint. Visibility is poor in the jungle, so you'll be finding yourself in a lot of unexpected encounters. Naturally, this means that close quarters combat will be more important than ever. So I'll have plenty of chances to use CQC then. That's right. In proximity encounters, firing a gun isn't necessarily the best response to every situation. It's only one option among many. Rather than taking the time to draw, aim, and fire a gun, engaging your opponent in hand-to-hand -hand combat can sometimes be a faster and more reliable way of subduing him. Besides, in a sneaking mission like this one, it's too dangerous to go around firing your gun. You'll end up revealing yourself to the enemy. Yeah, I know. You created CQC to deal with exactly this type of situation. With your help, of course. In a battle situation, you'll only have a split second to decide how to attack. Use the weapon button to attack using a weapon, and the CQC button to attack using CQC. Press the CQC button once to throw a punch. Pressing it multiple times in succession will allow you to deliver a combo attack. But striking your opponent is just one aspect of CQC. 
It doesn't really start to shine until you've got your enemy in a hold. Press and hold down the CQC button to grab your opponent with your right hand. From there, you can use the left analog stick to knock your opponent off balance and throw him to the ground. This can be used to knock an opponent out in a single blow. If you don't press the left analog stick, grapple with your enemy until you're behind them and can get your knife to their throat. Grabbing an enemy from behind and holding your knife against his throat will render him virtually powerless. From this point, there are several things you can do. Press the CQC button hard to slit the enemy's throat with your knife. Move the left analog stick and press the CQC button to throw the enemy to the ground. Lightly tap the CQC button rapidly to choke the enemy. You can use this to knock him out or even kill him if you do it long enough. By continuing to hold down the CQC button, you can move around while keeping your grip on the enemy. By pressing the weapon button, you can aim your currently equipped weapon at another enemy. With their comrade acting as a human shield, the enemy will be reluctant to attack you. Move the left analog stick around to press your knife against the enemy and demand information. You'll be surprised at how much you can learn this way. But don't get too complacent. While your enemy may be powerless in your grip, he'll use any opportunity he can to counterattack. You can only use CQC to grab enemies when your right hand is free to grab and pull them toward you. In other words, when you're barehanded or equipped with a one-handed weapon like a survival knife or a handgun. You won't be able to grab hold of enemies when equipped with two-handed weapons, such as the assault rifle or weapons such as hand grenades that don't leave your right hand free to control the enemy. So in other words, I can't throw enemies with CQC when I'm holding an assault rifle or a hand grenade. Exactly. Don't forget it. The sooner you find the enemy, the better you'll be able to deal with the situation. So be sure to make use of sensors like the motion detector and active sonar. It's going to be tough to cross over that suspension bridge without being seen by the enemy. You'll have to figure out some way to get rid of the sentries first. Treetops, bushes, hollow logs. There are plenty of places in nature you can use to hide yourself. Search each area carefully in first-person view. Use nature to its fullest extent. You'll thank me later. Equipment captured in the field often needs to be fixed or have its parts replaced before it can be used. But you won't need to worry about that in this mission. Why is that? Because your adversaries are highly trained professionals. They'll no doubt have made sure their reserve gear is in working condition. So in other words, I can use the stuff I pick up right away? Right. One more thing. When you pick up a new item, don't forget to read its description in the window. This is a solo sneaking mission. There's no one out there to support you. You'll need to be more than just a soldier. You'll have to be a medic, a pilot, and even a cook. You don't need to remind me. I'm glad to hear that. Glad to hear what? That you haven't changed a bit. Hmm? The truth is, you're nervous, aren't you? I'm not nervous. There's no need to be embarrassed. No one's ever attempted a mission like this before. In fact, you might say that getting nervous is the natural way to react. <sighs> Relax. That's why you have the survival viewer. The survival viewer contains everything you'll need to stay alive in the field. Use camouflage to change your camouflage, backpack to select a weapon, food to eat, and cure to heal yourself. The map option lets you view the map, and the options function lets you change the settings to suit your individual style. The survival viewer is going to be your best friend in this mission, so learn to make the most of it. Paramedic's frequency is 145.73. When you see an enemy, the first thing to do is conceal yourself and watch what he's doing. If you make any sudden moves, your camo index will decrease, and there's a good chance the enemy will catch sight of you. And don't start to panic just because an enemy is acting like he knows you're there. It doesn't necessarily mean he's figured out exactly where you are. As long as you hide someplace like the bushes and stay perfectly still, you'll usually come out all right. Stay calm, keep a grip on the situation, and use clear judgment. Got it? Your ultimate objective in this mission is to find Sokolov and get him to safety, not to slaughter the enemy. So basically, I should avoid getting into battles, right? You don't have to tell me. 
To avoid battles, it will be essential to scout out the enemy's numbers and positions. That's what your binoculars are for. If confronted with multiple enemies during a standard operating procedure, you'd retreat and call for backup, but that's not an option in this mission. If you encounter multiple enemies, either find a way to go around them, or if it looks like you'll have to eliminate them, lure them over one at a time and take them out that way. Your objective in this mission isn't to get into fights, but if you're faced with a situation where you have no choice but to get rid of an enemy, attack him from behind. If you use stalking to sneak up behind an enemy and take him out in one strike, the other enemies probably won't even notice. If it doesn't look like you'll be able to sneak up from behind, wait for him to come toward you. Either figure out the enemy's patrol route and get there before he does, or make a sound or throw something to get his attention. And if he does spot you, don't hesitate. Take him out before he has a chance to alert his comrades to your presence. Got it? Enemies pose a greater threat when they patrol in squads. The members of a squad are constantly watching out for each other, making it difficult to take them out without being noticed. If you absolutely have to attack a squad, use CQC or a gun equipped with a suppressor and start with the last one in line, then work your way up. You said the enemy is equipped with AK-47s, didn't you? The AK-47 is the official assault rifle of the Soviet Army. It's employed not only by the Soviets, but throughout the entire Eastern Bloc. It uses 7.62 millimeter by 39 ammunitions, with a magazine capacity of 30 rounds. The AK is reliable, precise, powerful, and easy to handle. In short, one of the best assault rifles there is. Don't even think about getting into a one-man firefight against an enemy unit equipped with AKs. Avoid battle as much as possible. Are we clear? You mentioned the enemy was also carrying grenades, correct? Those grenades are RGD-5s, the standard blast fragmentation grenade of the Soviet Army. You can protect yourself from a large part of the blast and shrapnel from a grenade by lying flat on the ground. If someone throws a grenade at you and you sense that you can't get away in time, get into a crawl position. It should reduce the damage to a minimum. Keep in mind that your weapons and equipment each have their own weight. Storing a heavy item on your person will cause your stamina to drain more quickly. If you're getting tired or want to conserve your stamina, it's a good idea to put any items you're not going to use back into your backpack. When you get hurt, your body will heal itself naturally over time. However, the speed at which your life recovers depends on how much stamina you have at the time. The more stamina you have, the faster you'll recover. So if you want your wounds to heal quickly, you should eat something and replenish your stamina first. Snake, remember that this operation is a solo sneaking mission. We'll be providing you with support over the radio, but out in the field, you're on your own. There's no backup. And there's no way you'll survive a battle with a large enemy contingent. Avoid engagement whenever possible. Your highest priority in this mission is staying out of sight. Snake, let me explain the enemy's various states of alert. First of all, there's the state in which the enemy in that area doesn't know that you're there. This is called normal phase. In normal phase, the enemy will follow normal procedures for patrols and other activities. They won't present much of a danger to you. But if they spot an intruder, that means you, they'll attack in an attempt to neutralize you. This is called alert phase. Alert phase will last until the enemy loses sight of you. Even after they lose sight of you, the enemy will continue to search the area for a while. This is called evasion phase. Evasion phase will last until the enemy exhausts their search effort. Once evasion phase is over, the enemy should return to base. After the search is aborted, the enemy will enter caution phase. In caution phase, enemy soldiers will be more cautious in their patrols, and they'll likely be more difficult to detect. In addition to the regular patrols, there's also a chance that they'll send out additional search units. Keep on your toes. What's wrong? You were expecting something different? Now, go and find Sokolov and get him out of there. By equipping grenades and pressing the weapon button in corner view mode, you can throw a grenade while hiding behind a barrier. This technique should come in handy during a firefight. Use it well. Snake, are you all right? You seem awfully tired. No, not at all. You don't have to act tough. I'm not acting. Really? You lose your grip strength after only a few seconds when hanging. 
I'll bet you can't even hold your gun straight. <sighs> your body is exhausted. Look at your stamina gauge. It's almost empty, isn't it? You can't continue your mission in this state. You need to eat something and recover your stamina. You've got some food, don't you? Yeah. To eat food, press the Start button to enter the Survival Viewer, then select Food. Use the left analog stick to choose the food you want to consume, and press the Enter button to eat it. You'll have to put the mission on hold for a little while. First, you've got to capture some food. What? Did you hear me? Go hunting! <laughs> Eating is a necessary part of your mission. When your stamina gets low, make sure you eat something. Got it? Snake, there are other ways to recover your stamina besides eating. Such as? Such as taking a rest. A rest? To take a rest, all you have to do is save and exit the game. The next time you load your save data and continue the game, your stamina and life will have recovered. How much they recover depends on how long of a rest you take. So the longer I rest, the more I'll recover. That's right. If you're so exhausted that you don't even have the strength to find food, save the game and take a rest and you'll be back on your feet. I hope that never happens. So do I. But you never know. Just don't forget, okay? I won't. Snake, if you step in any water or mud, your feet will get wet. If you walk like that, you'll leave footprints behind and the enemy may follow them straight to you. Try to avoid walking through any water or mud as much as possible. However, if your feet do get wet, just crawl to avoid leaving any footprints behind. When you don't want anybody following your trail, make sure to crawl. When you hide in the bushes, your camo index will go up. As long as you stay still, you should be able to avoid being seen by the enemy, even at fairly close range. Use the bushes to your advantage and stay hidden. Snake, making it harder for the enemy to spot you isn't the only advantage to maintaining a high camo index. The harder you are to distinguish from your surroundings, the harder you are to hit. In other words, the enemy's shots will miss more often. Do everything you can to keep your camo index high at all times. Snake, when you knock down a hornet's nest, a large swarm of hornets will come flying out. If used wisely, this can sow panic among the enemy. But if you're not careful, the hornets may end up attacking you. If you're attacked by hornets, wiggle the left analog stick around or wave your survival knife to shoot them away. Waving a torch around with the CQC button should do the trick too. Smoke is another useful tool in keeping hornets away. If you're attacked by hornets, I'd advise you to try using a smoke grenade. And if you use the insecticidal bug juice, the hornet should stay away as long as the effect lasts. Hornets are prone to becoming agitated and aggressive when they see the color black. Their attacks will be more vicious if you're wearing black clothes. If you're attacked by hornets, you should change into white clothes. Snake, those drums are filled with fuel. That'll prove to be useful. What do you mean? Think about it. Shoot a bullet at a drum full of flammable fuel and, uh... Gotcha. If you blow up those drums full of fuel, the explosion should take care of any enemies in a fairly wide radius. Just make sure you don't get caught up in the blast yourself. Snake, those drums don't appear to contain fuel. I don't think they'll explode if they're shot. Drums lying on their side can be sent rolling. Time it right and you might be able to use it to bowl over multiple enemies at once. Give it a try. Stand near a drum and press the action button. Snake, if you fall down from there, not even you will escape unharmed. You'd probably break your legs, and if you really screw up, you could get hurt even worse. You don't want to have to deal with an injury, so keep an eye on your grip gauge. Make sure you don't slip up and accidentally press the crawl button and let yourself go. Snake, when you meet Sokolov, don't go in wearing that mask. Why? He won't like it. Won't like it? No. Why not? Just trust me, he won't. Yeah. You'll need Sokolov's full cooperation to complete this mission successfully. Don't do anything to make him lose confidence in you. When you go in to meet Sokolov, make sure you remove your disguise. Got it? Snake, what are you doing? Hurry up and treat those wounds. Snake, you're not done treating yourself. Go back into the survival viewer and treat the rest of your wounds. Snake, hurry and get those injuries treated. Snake, you're not done treating your injuries. Go into the survival viewer and treat the rest of your injuries. Snake, your first task is to meet up with Adam, the contact provided by the KGB. The rendezvous point is the abandoned factory to the north of your current position. Head north. The abandoned factory. That's where I met Sokolov during the Virtuous mission. Correct, but we can't afford to have the same thing happen this time. I know. 
Like the Virtuous mission, Operation Snake Eater is a solo sneaking mission. There are no units in the field to back you up. Avoid engaging the enemy whenever possible. Your first priority is to remain unseen. Use the Camouflage option in the Survival Viewer and choose your camouflage wisely. Proceed with caution. Unlike the Virtuous mission, this is a night operation. You'll get lost more easily in the dark, but it'll also make your camouflage more effective and make it harder for the enemy to see you. On the other hand, it will also be more difficult for you to see them. You'll also find that different animals are active. Some of these nocturnal animals are poisonous, so stay alert. Paramedic is with us again to provide information on the local plants and animals. Give her a call if there's anything you need to know. Operation Snake Eater is different from the Virtuous mission in that you won't be able to complete it in just a few hours. The time limit set by Khrushchev is one week. Within that time, you'll have to rescue Sokolov, defeat Volgin, destroy the Shagohod, and... I know. Good. In any event, you'll not be allowed to return until you've accomplished your objectives. Survival in the field will be critical in this mission, and the most important survival technique of all is, of course, finding food. You can get food in the same way you did during the Virtuous mission, by capturing it. The enemy presence in that area is still light. You should try and get as much food as possible while you can. Snake, this is a solo sneaking operation. There are no medics there to assist you. You'll have to treat your own injuries, are we clear? I had a little bit of training, but I'm no doctor. That's where I come in. To treat an injury, first press the Start button to open the Survival Viewer, then select Cure to start the treatment. Healing is divided into treatment using medicine with the item window button and surgical treatment using the weapon window button. Treatment with medicine involves administering oral remedies and serum injections. You'll use this treatment method when you have food poisoning or when you've been bitten by a venomous animal. Surgical treatment involves applying surgical techniques to injured areas. You'll use this method to take care of burns and gunshot wounds. As long as you do everything you're supposed to, your injury should heal completely. Be sure to follow the proper procedures. Snake, the food you catch will gradually spoil over time. Any food you catch will gradually spoil over time, even if you store it in your backpack. Some types of food spoil faster than others. Animal and fish meat goes bad relatively fast, but plants and mushrooms generally last a little longer. Animals won't go bad if you capture them alive, though. You can tell whether food has gone bad or not by looking closely at the icon on the food screen in the survival viewer. So be sure to check the icon before you eat the food. If you eat spoiled food, you'll get sick and end up with a stomach ache. It'll get better eventually if you leave it alone, but that means you'll throw up and lose a lot of stamina. If you get a stomach ache, go to Cure in the survival viewer and take some digestive medicine. Snake, do you have a stomach ache? You'll get a stomach ache if you eat something rotten. To cure a stomach ache, go into Cure in the Survival Viewer and take some digestive medicine. It sounds like you've got food poisoning. Food poisoning is caused by eating poisonous food. When you have food poisoning, your life will continuously decrease. If left untreated, you'll eventually throw up whatever it was you ate. That'll get rid of the food poisoning, but you'll also use up a lot of stamina. So it's a good idea to treat it yourself before you vomit. To cure food poisoning, go into Cure in the Survival Viewer and take some antidote. Digestive medicine and antidotes aren't the only ways to cure stomach aches and food poisoning. You can also induce vomiting. Go into the survival viewer and press the viewer button to enter viewer mode. Then rotate the right analog stick to spin your body around and eventually you'll start feeling queasy. When you get dizzy enough, exit the survival viewer and you'll throw up. That should get rid of any stomach ache and food poisoning you have. Give it a try. You just heard a horse? Yeah. You sure it wasn't something else? I know a horse when I hear one. Paramedic, are there any wild horses in Selinoyask? Do you really expect me to say yes? No. So what should I do? There's only one way through that area. All you can do is move forward. Head towards the sound of that horse. It came from the north. Be careful. Major. Snake, the boss is your enemy. You've got to accept that reality. <sighs> Adam is waiting for you at the abandoned factory to the north of your current position. Head north. Remember that you've lost your gun. You don't stand a chance in a fight against an enemy unit. Use your camouflage and don't let the enemy see you. The enemy must have seen the drone explode. They've probably already sent out patrol units. You never know when you'll encounter the enemy, 
Use your camouflage wisely and proceed with caution. Hurry to your rendezvous with Adam. Head for the abandoned factory to the north. Watch out for enemy patrols. Stay alert at all times, okay? Snake, you don't have a tranquilizer gun right now. That means you'll just have to capture animals with your bare hands or with your survival knife. You should be able to harvest mushrooms and other low-lying plants with no problem by punching them or using your knife. It'll be tougher to catch small animals, but you might have a chance if you use stalking from behind. A rope bridge, huh? You'll stick out like a sore thumb if you walk on top of it. To cross it without being seen, you'll have to do something about the enemies. Seems that way. You told me this before. Did I? Yeah. In the Virtuous mission, you had your tranquilizer gun to use. But this time around, you're unarmed. You won't be able to take out the enemies safely from a distance. You'll have to find some way of reeling them in close. Try distracting the enemy by making a noise or throwing something. You might also try cutting one of the ropes with your survival knife to make the bridge shake. You've arrived at the factory, I see. Yeah. Now to meet up with this Adam guy. Good. Go to it. So where is he? We weren't given an exact location. How about a time? Nothing was specified. A physical description? I'm not sure. How am I supposed to find him then? You won't need to. Huh? He'll find you. Uh. Why don't you try the room to the northeast where you met Sokolov? Adam might be in there. Why don't you give the room to the northeast where you met Sokolov another try? Adam might be there this time. Snake, do you see the door there? Yeah, it's a swinging door. Opening a swinging door is a bit different from opening the doors that you got used to during training. To open doors, generally you can just move the left analog stick and move towards the door. This way, you use your body to push the door open. To open a door without creating any noise, move the left analog stick slightly. So, when you're concerned about alerting enemies on the inside of a room of your presence, open the door slowly and slip right in. If you use large motions of the left analog stick and run towards a door, you'll burst through it. The sound of the door opening will surely be heard by your enemies, but it allows for a fast entrance. When you want to jump right in and take care of business, running is the way to do it. Stand in front of a door in first-person view and use the left and right step buttons against the door. This will gradually open the door and allow you to glimpse inside. Use this technique when you want to check what's happening on the other side. Adam is a spy sent by the KGB to infiltrate Volgin's ranks. You'll need to be extremely careful in how you approach him. Obviously. He can't let Volgin know he's meeting me. That's right. Adam won't show up if you're being pursued by the enemy. Before you go to rendezvous with Adam, make sure you haven't been seen by the enemy. Meet up with him in normal phase. Got it? Snake, let's go over the controls for CQC one more time. Press the CQC button once to throw a punch. Press it repeatedly to launch a combo attack. CQC doesn't really start to shine, however, until you grab an enemy. Press and hold the CQC button to extend your right hand and grab the enemy. Move the left analog stick at the same time and you can knock the enemy to the ground. If you don't move the left analog stick, you can get behind the enemy and hold him prisoner. When you're holding an enemy from behind, he'll be almost completely helpless. From there, there are a number of things you can do. By pressing the CQC button again firmly, you can slit his throat using your knife. By moving the left analog stick along with the CQC button, you can knock him to the ground. You can also choke the enemy by tapping the CQC button rapidly. You can either render him unconscious or kill him outright. It's up to you. If you keep the CQC button pressed, you can use the left analog stick to move around with the enemy in your grip. You can also press the weapon button to use the weapon you have equipped. The enemy will be hesitant to attack as long as you're using one of their comrades as a human shield. Use that moment of hesitation to attack in first-person view. By pressing in and holding the left analog stick, you can interrogate the enemy. You might be surprised at the things you can learn. But stay alert. While the enemy is nearly helpless in your grasp, if you give him a chance, he'll turn the tables on you. You can only grab an enemy using CQC when you're using a weapon that will allow you to reach out with your right hand, such as the survival knife, a handgun, or your bare hands. You can't grab the enemy when using weapons that take both hands to use, such as assault rifles, 
or that prevent you from controlling the enemy with your right hand, like hand grenades. In short, you can't use CQC when equipped with assault rifles or hand grenades. You can tell whether a weapon is compatible with CQC or not by looking at its icon. Snake, unlike the virtuous mission, this is a night operation. You'll be encountering nocturnal animals that you didn't encounter your last mission. Some of them are venomous, like the King Cobra, so be careful. If you get bitten by a venomous animal, the poison will spread through your body and rapidly drain your life gauge. If that's the case, go into the cure screen in Survival Viewer immediately and inject yourself with serum. Got it? Snake, have you been bitten by a venomous animal? Yeah. It looks like the poison is already starting to affect you. Unless you cure it, your life will just keep decreasing. You've got to treat it now. To cure poison, go into Cure in the Survival Viewer and administer a serum injection. But I don't have any serum. Then you had better go find some quick. The enemies in that area might have some. Hurry! The animals in that area might have the ingredients to make serum. Go catch some. Snake, you're poisoned. When you're bitten by a venomous animal such as a snake or a spider or hit by a poisoned arrow, the poison will start to affect your body. Your life will decrease with each passing minute, so cure the poison as soon as possible. To cure poison, go into Cure in the Survival Viewer and inject yourself with a dose of serum. You can get serum from enemies. Either hold them up or shake their bodies down after you defeat them. I'm pretty sure you can also get serum by capturing the rabbits that live in that area. You can capture animals alive by using the tranquilizer gun or a mouse trap. When you capture a live animal, you can carry it on you as a weapon by going to Backpack in the Survival Viewer. Once an animal is on your person, equip it and press the weapon button to throw it. Throwing a venomous animal at an enemy might be enough to knock him out. Even non-venomous animals like frogs can be used to distract the enemy's attention. And since I know you're going to ask me, yes, keeping animals alive prevents them from rotting and makes them taste better when you eat them. Remember, though, you've only got three cages for capturing live animals. Treating serious wounds will require you to use additional medical items besides your knife and cigar. That's why it's always a good idea to carry as many medical items with you as possible. If you start to run out of medical items, find some more as soon as you can. The enemy should be carrying medical supplies as well. You can get them by holding up enemy soldiers and shaking down their bodies. Snake, be careful when you approach the enemy. The closer you are to them, the more accurate their shots will be and the more damage their weapons will do. That means you've got a greater chance of getting seriously wounded. Daring frontal assaults are not a good idea. But if you do get seriously injured, go into the survival viewer and treat it immediately. Snake, you've got a gunshot wound. The way to treat a gunshot wound is to dig out the bullet using your knife, disinfect the wound, apply a styptic, and bandage it up. Follow all those steps and the wound should heal nicely. Take care of it quickly. Snake, you've got a gunshot wound. When you get shot, you'll sometimes suffer a gunshot wound. The chance of suffering a serious injury is especially high at close range. When you have a gunshot wound, your maximum life will decrease depending on its severity. Gunshot wounds will heal naturally over time, but if you want it to heal faster, go into Cure in the Survival Viewer and treat it. To treat a gunshot wound, you need to dig out the bullet with your knife, disinfect the wound, and apply styptic, then wrap it in a bandage. When all that's finished, the gunshot wound will be fully healed. Snake, you've got a nasty cut. To treat a cut, you need disinfectant, styptic, sutures, and a bandage. As long as you use all those items, the cut should heal up completely. Hurry and get it fixed up. That's a nasty cut you've got there. Cuts happen when you get slashed with a knife or other sharp object. When you have a cut, your maximum life goes down depending on its severity. Cuts heal naturally over time, but if you go into Cure in the Survival Viewer and treat it, it'll heal instantaneously. To treat a cut, you need disinfectant, styptic, sutures, and a bandage. As long as you have all those things, the cut should heal up nicely. Snake, you've got a broken bone. Broken bones can be fully healed by fixing the affected area in place with a fastener and wrapping it in bandages. Do it quickly. I see you've got a bone fracture. You'll suffer broken bones if you jump from too high a place or get hit with a severe blow. When you have a fracture, your maximum life goes down. Fractures will heal little by little over time, but you can heal them right away by going into Cure in the Survival Viewer and following the necessary procedure. To treat a bone fracture, first secure the affected area with a fastener and then wrap it in bandages. 
That should do it. Pattern clothing, face paint, tactical movements. These are the elements of camouflage that will allow you to deceive your enemy. To camouflage yourself, first press the Start button to check out the Survival Viewer. Then select Camouflage and you'll see two more options, Face and Uniform. Choose Face to apply face paint and Uniform to change your field uniform. Simple, really. Make sure and choose something that'll match your surroundings. Your field uniform is not just a set of threads to wear. To get the max effect out of your camouflage, you gotta correspond with your environment. So no matter where you are, make sure to choose a camo pattern that lets you blend in. Covering your body is a good start, but a bare face will kill even the best camouflage. If the situation calls for a high camo index, you better break out the face paint. To apply face paint, select face from the camouflage menu in the survival viewer. Then choose a face paint that blends in with your surroundings. The camo index, located in the top right corner of the screen, tells you if your outfit is getting the job done. The higher the value of this index, the harder it is for the enemy to spot you. Try your best to keep the camo index as high as possible. So you've got your uniform and your face paint, but that alone isn't enough to make for good camouflage. Camouflage means blending in with nature. To make your disguise complete, you've got to keep a low profile and avoid overt movements. As long as you've got the uniform and face paint working for you, and you're lying flat keeping still, you won't have to worry about being spotted from a distance. On the flip side, dancing around your enemy in perfect camo is still a dead giveaway. So if the enemy's looking for you and he's getting too close for comfort, just lay low for the time being. Whenever you find a new weapon or piece of equipment, the first thing you do is drop it in your backpack, right? But you can't use your new goodies if they're just sitting in your backpack. To use a weapon or piece of equipment, first you have to take it out of your backpack and place it on your person. To take an item out of your backpack, use the backpack option in the survival viewer. To place a weapon on your person, select weapon under the backpack section of the survival viewer. See that window on the left? That shows a list of all the weapons you've got. Choose the weapon you want to carry from the list and press the enter button to take it out of your backpack. Just remember that there's a limit to the number of weapons you can carry at the same time so put back any stuff you don't need. To put a weapon on your person back into your backpack, choose a weapon that's already on you from the weapon list and press the Enter button. Or you can just line up the icon for the weapon you want to put away with the lower right and press the Enter button. Do whatever works best. Keep in mind that every weapon and piece of equipment weighs something. The heavier the equipment you're lugging around, the faster you'll burn up stamina. You can see how much your equipment weighs by going into the backpack screen in the survival viewer. If you're trying to conserve your stamina, make some cuts and toss the equipment you don't need in your backpack. When you're using the assault rifle, pressing the weapon button will hold it at waist level. That's nice if you need to drop nearby enemies with some speed, but it's difficult to aim straight. If you need to take more accurate shots, like tagging enemies in vital spots from a distance, use the aim button instead. Equip the weapon in first-person view and press the aim button to aim the gun from the shoulder. You can take precise aim with the front and rear sights. When you're focusing on your mark, it will be as accurate as if you were zooming in. When you fire continuously with a gun like the assault rifle, the recoil will cause your shots to veer off target. But if you crouch or lie down, you can suppress the recoil and keep a tight fire pattern. So when you gotta hit that bullseye, take a low position. You're on a solo sneaking mission. Your success is based on your ability to survive. That's where the survival viewer comes in. The survival viewer contains everything you need to survive out in the field. Use camouflage to change your camouflage and backpack to select your gear. Use food to eat, cure to treat wounds, and map to view a detail of the area. You've also got options. That lets you change the settings to suit your mission preferences. Got it? It looks like you've got rid of all the ocelots. Yeah. Now proceed with the rescue of Sokolov. According to Eva, you should start by going to the crevice to the north and... Can we trust her? What's that? Eva is with the KGB, isn't she? Can I really believe what she says? How do I know she won't double-cross me? There are no guarantees in espionage, Snake. Only calculated guesses. At this point in time, the KGB stands nothing to gain by stabbing us in the back. So you're saying I can trust her? I'm saying the chance that she'll betray you is low. Ah... Uh. Of course, we checked the route she gave you against our own data. It looks like a pretty solid infiltration route. It makes good use of weak spots in the enemy's defences. You shouldn't have any problems. Follow the route Eva showed you and proceed with the mission. Roger. 
First enter the cave through the crevice. Eva said it was to the north, so head that way. Snake, your number one priority in this mission is rescuing Sokolov. Eva said he is in the lab, so head over there. Right. Do you remember how to get to the lab? You mean what Eva told me? Yes. Of course I do. All right, repeat it for me. Major, do you think I'd forget something like that? Let's hear it then. First I head north. Mm hmm? And then I'll come to a crevice. First, I head toward the back of this cave. Mm hmm? And then I'll come to an aqueduct. First, I follow this aqueduct north. Mm hmm? Then I'll come to a warehouse. And then? And then? Uh... All right, let's go over this one more time. First, head north through the jungle. Enter the cave through the crevice to the north. Follow the cave to the end and you'll come out in an aqueduct surrounded by a mangrove. Follow the aqueduct to the north and you should arrive at a warehouse. Climb out of the water and enter the warehouse. After you've infiltrated the warehouse, pass through it to the north. Then you'll emerge in the woods again. The lab will be directly to the north. Are we clear now? Yeah. Snake. I got it, I got it. Basically, I just head north, right? Ugh. That swamp seems pretty deep. It's probably deep enough to dive underwater and swim around. I see you're in the water, Snake. Snake, I see you're in the water. Unlike what you've experienced in training, you'll be able to fire handguns and assault rifles underwater. Keep that in mind. While underwater, pay attention to your O2 gauge. The O2 gauge is displayed whenever you hold your breath. It indicates how long you can continue to hold your breath. The O2 gauge will decrease over time while you're holding your breath. When the O2 gauge is depleted, your life will begin to decrease. To replenish your O2 gauge, you need fresh air. Make sure to take a breath before you asphyxiate. The length of your O2 gauge is affected by how much stamina you have at the time. If you anticipate operating for a long time underwater, you'll have to eat something beforehand to replenish your stamina. Press the crawl button when you're swimming on the surface to dive underwater. The controls when you're underwater are quite different from when you're on land. The left analog stick controls the direction you're facing. Press up, down, left or right to turn in that direction. Press the CQC button or the crawl button to move forward. Each button press will move you one stroke forward. Press the button repeatedly to swim faster. You can also press the action button to surface in an emergency. While you're swimming, you can use the right analog stick to look in a different direction without changing the direction you're going. Snake, you'll be helpless if a crocodile attacks you in the water. You can't see behind you when you're swimming. So if you're in a crocodile-infested swamp, keep an eye on your six. Also, by using your sensors, you should be able to detect crocodiles before they get too close. Oh, you've got a terrible cold. You'll catch a cold if you hang around too long without any clothes on or spend too much time in the water or the swamp. When you catch a cold, your stamina goes down more rapidly. You'll also sneeze from time to time, and the noise can alert enemies to your presence. Plus, your body will shake, so you might not be able to distinguish vibrations very well. To cure a cold, go into Cure in the Survival Viewer and take some cold medicine. The crocodiles in that swamp are extremely vicious. Apparently, they've already chewed up a bunch of soldiers out on patrol. Now, no one even dares to go near the swamp. They said that most of the soldiers who were killed were attacked from behind while they were in the water. You be careful out there. Snake, be careful. That barbed wire is electrified and you'll get a shock if you touch it. It looks like there's no way to get over it. Didn't Eva say that the barbed wire doesn't receive proper maintenance? Look carefully at the bottom of the barbed wire. There might be a gap somewhere. If you find an opening, crawl through it flat on the ground. Snake, that area appears to be rigged with quite a few traps. Yeah, tell me about it. The best way to avoid danger is to get some inside information. Inside information? Eva is a KGB spy placed in the ranks of Gru. She probably knows a lot about what's going on. You might try asking her. Eva's frequency is 142.52. Another good way to get inside info is to capture and interrogate one of their sentries. That area is reportedly planted with claymore mines. Claymores pack quite a punch. Don't risk heavy injury. Be careful. Claymores are not completely buried in the ground. If you look closely enough, you can tell where they've been hidden. You can also pick up claymore mines by crawling over them. It'll be useful if you recover a few of the enemy's traps. Snake, look at that tree. 
See how the branches extend out to the other side of the barbed wire? I'll bet you could climb the tree, move from branch to branch, and drop down on the other side. Snake, it looks like they've got attack dogs in that area. Attack dogs generally receive extensive military training in tracking and combat techniques. They're formidable close-range fighters and difficult to elude. Their barking can alert enemy patrols to your presence as well. Take care not to let attack dogs catch sight of you. Attack dogs may be dangerous, but they can't climb trees. If you've been cornered by attack dogs, try climbing a tree. Smoke grenades should prove useful as well. Those dogs may be highly trained, but you might still be able to distract them by throwing them something tasty to eat. Give it a try. Snake, it looks like there are claymore mines planted all over that area. Claymores are a new type of anti-personnel mine produced in America. The ones you see there must have either been stolen or recovered from a battlefield in Southeast Asia. And what's more, our Russian friends seem to have modified these claymores with a special type of sensor. If you get anywhere near them, bang, you're toast. Watch your step. Claymores can be picked up by crawling over them. If you come across a minefield, try crawling through it. The Soviet-made smoke grenades you might find around there also seem to act as a mild tear gas. It might not have that much of an effect on human targets wearing balaclavas, but it ought to wreak havoc to a dog's nose. If you're being chased by attack dogs, give them a taste of a smoke grenade. Snake, be careful. I might not have told you this yet, but that swamp is rigged with traps. Tell me about it. <laughs> so you know already? Yeah. Well, then you're all set. The traps in that area are set to go off when a rope stretched along the ground is disturbed. Keep a close eye on the ground and make sure you don't trip over a rope. I mean, far be it from me to call you an idiot who can't avoid even the simplest of traps, but you know... <laughs> what's the matter? Nothing. Never mind. <laughs> the crevice that leads to the cave is to the north of your current location. Keep heading north. Snake. The barbed wire in that area has a high-voltage electric current running through it. A high-voltage electric current? Right. Uh, though I might have forgotten to tell you. Huh. You'll get electrocuted if you touch that barbed wire, so don't. Electrify barbed wire, huh? Looks like I'll have to find another way around. That won't be necessary. It won't? Nope. Electrified barbed wire is a formidable barrier, but it's a pain in the neck to maintain. Apparently, it's always breaking down because wild animals keep running into it. But the word is, they don't have enough personnel to fix it. If you look closely at the bottom of the barbed wire, you should be able to spot a hole somewhere. Try crawling your way through there. Snake, that area is rigged with clappers. Clappers? That's right. Didn't I tell you already? No. Oh, it must have slipped my mind. <sighs> Clappers are a type of alarm system. It's set up so that when a rope stretched along the ground is disturbed, it makes a noise. When a clapper goes off, the enemy will go into alert phase and any nearby patrols will come and start sweeping the area. Keep a close eye on the ground and try not to trip any ropes. Snake, sorry if I forgot to tell you, but they've got attack dogs prowling that area. If they find you, you'll be in for a rough time. Attack dogs are trained for fighting, and you won't be able to shake them off so easily. If they bark at you, it'll alert nearby patrols to your presence. Be careful not to get spotted by those dogs. The lab where Sokolov is being held is located in a mountain range known as Granini Gorky. First, head for the crevice, Bolshaya Pust. Go north and you'll come to a relay station. Pass north through the relay station and you'll reach the crevice. Go down through the crevice and you'll find yourself in a cave known as Chornaya Peshara. Once you pass through the cave, you'll come out in Pony Zovye, an aqueduct that's overgrown with mangrove. Follow the aqueduct to the north and you should arrive at a warehouse. Pass north through the warehouse and you'll emerge in the southern part of Granini Gorky, just south of the lab. Start out by heading north. The crevice that leads to the cave is still a ways to the north. Keep heading that way. Good, you've reached the relay station, but stay alert. That station is an enemy strongpoint. The security is bound to be tight. But there's no other way to get to the crevice if I don't make it through. Exactly. The crevice leading to the cave is in the north of that area. Find a way to slip past the enemy and head north. Snake, that building next to you is an enemy armory. Eva mentioned there was an armory in that area, didn't she? As you might have guessed, those armories you sometimes run into are where they keep their ammo and other stuff. 
If you take out an armory, the enemy units in the area will have their ammo supply cut off. And if they know they're on their last leg, they'll use ammo a little more sparingly in a gunfight. Bottom line, if you blow up an armory, the enemy's firepower decreases. If you find an armory, you should try blowing it up with TNT or something. You'll be glad you did later on. By destroying an armory, you can cut off the enemy's supply of ammunition. That should make your job a lot easier. Snake, that building next to you is a provisions storehouse. Snake, according to Eva, there should be a provisions storehouse in that area. A provision storehouse is where the enemy keeps their food. Enemy units in that area use it to stock up on rations. So if you happen to blow up a provision storehouse, the enemies in that area won't be able to get any more rations. Spetsnaz are people too. They gotta eat or their stamina starts to go down. They might pass out more easily or lose their concentration and start to shoot less accurately. Who knows? They'll probably be a little more desperate for food just lying around. Basically, if you get rid of a provision storehouse, the enemies in that area will get physically weaker. To destroy a provisions warehouse, you'll want to use TNT or something like that. By destroying a provisions warehouse, you can cut off the food supply to enemies in the surrounding area. It may be worthwhile if you have time and materials to spare. There's a gun emplacement installed over there. A gun emplacement is a grave threat in the enemy's hands, but a valuable weapon if you can occupy it. Stand next to a gun emplacement and press the action button to operate it. Press the weapon button to fire. You can use the aim button to zoom in on a target. Be aware, though, that the gun's ammo supply is limited. To move away from a gun emplacement, press the action button once again. Eva. Hmm? There's an attack helicopter docked at the heliport. Oh. It's an attack chopper currently being developed at Groznygrad. They're using it as a patrol craft while they conduct tests. Didn't I tell you? Uh, no. The helicopter docked there is probably in for maintenance right now, so you won't have to worry about it taking off. If you're thinking of destroying it, now's your chance. Sounds like a plan, but how? Huh? There's no way I'm going to punch through that armor with an assault rifle. Isn't there a weapon somewhere that can do some real damage? You'll just have to figure that out yourself. The crevice leading to the cave is to the north of that base. Keep heading north. Snake. There's a provision storehouse in the center of that area and an armory to the northeast. By destroying them, you should be able to cut off supplies to the enemy in that area. I heard they've got AK stored in the armory. You might want to check it out. Snake, are you okay? Snake! Major. Snake. Are you all right? You're not hurt? No. That was a hell of a drop, but I'm fine. Looks like there's no way back up, though. I see. Well, anyway, it's good to hear you're not injured. Slipping and falling may not have been part of the plan, but getting into that cave was. Proceed further into the cave. The cave seems to be structured like a maze, but there's an exit somewhere. Find a way out of the cave and head for the aqueduct. All right, but it might take me a while to get through this cave. Are you hurt? No. Is it the enemy? Did they set a trap for you? Not that either. Then what is it? It's dark in here. Dark? Yeah, there's no light anywhere. I should have brought a flashlight with me. So what you're saying is that it's going to take you a while because you don't have a flashlight? Right. Snake, if you don't have a flashlight, you should be looking for a substitute. I tell you, American soldiers these days rely too much on ready-made equipment. Here we go again. What was that? Nothing. American soldiers rely too much on ready-made equipment. Well, not only that, they can't seem to grasp that one piece of equipment can have multiple functions. Back when I was in the SAS, we never had that problem. We were trained to use every piece of equipment in as many ways as possible. If you don't have a flashlight, look for something else. You need to develop flexible, innovative thinking if you want to... Hey, are you listening to me? Uh, yeah, of course I am. First, take a look at what you're carrying with you now. Don't you have anything that can provide you with some light? I know you have your cigars. You should at least be able to see the ground in front of you if you use a cigar. Try lighting one up. Snake, those hornets that attacked you while you were fighting Ocelot... I know. They look familiar, like the ones I saw during the Virtuous mission. So it was one of the Cobras? That's what Ocelot was saying, too. Keep your guard up. I will. Snake, are you all right? Yeah, just barely. What the hell were all those hornets? Most likely that was the pain, one of the cobras. I figured as much. Are they tracking me? I don't know. The cobras only take orders from the boss. 
Not even Volgan knows what they're really up to, so I don't know anything about them either. No kidding. I'll try and dig up as much as I can about them. You just focus on moving ahead. Go to the end of the cave and you'll come out in an aqueduct overgrown with mangroves. This leads to the Ponizovie Swamp. And Snake, be careful. That cave... Is pitch dark inside. Good. I did remember to tell you then. <sighs> if it's completely dark and you need a light, try using a torch. I heard there's some emergency torches stored somewhere in that cave. Torches. Got it. So where are they? Huh? Where are the torches? How should I know? Go find them yourself. That reminds me. I've heard they keep a shotgun stored in that part of the cave. Why don't you go look for it? The exit from the cave should be toward the back. Proceed through the cave and find the exit to the swamp aqueduct. Go north and you'll emerge from the cave into the aqueduct. I see you found your way to the aqueduct. If you follow it to the north, you'll come to a warehouse used for transporting supplies. Pass through the warehouse and you'll come out into a forest. The lab where Sokolov is being held is directly to the north of that forest, so head north. Major, Eva isn't responding to the radio. Right. Right. Snake, she's been talking to you from inside an enemy facility. She's not always going to be able to answer the radio. Don't assume something's wrong just because you're not getting a response. Don't worry about Eva. Stay focused on your mission. Got it. Snake, the enemies in that area will use flares against you. When you're near the light from a flare, your camo index will go down. If the enemy fires a flare at you, you'd best dive underwater and hide. If you're spotted by the enemy in that area, they'll call in for mortar support from afar. Mortar fire is nothing to trifle with. If the enemy calls in for mortar support, get out of the area immediately. Is that clear? Snake, Eva mentioned something about a sniper rifle in the western part of Pony Zovier. A sniper rifle would certainly be a valuable asset to your mission. Swing by the western area and acquire that sniper rifle. Snake, the water in that aqueduct comes up to your waist. Naturally, you won't be able to walk as fast as usual. But you can jump into the water with a roll or press the crawl button to go underwater and swim your way through. Eva mentioned that that area was guarded by flying platforms. That area seems to be guarded by flying platforms. Be careful, they can see a great distance from up there. If a flying platform starts to draw near, you would do well to dive underwater and hide until it passes. Snake, the water in that aqueduct comes up to your waist. Naturally, you won't be able to walk as fast as usual. But you can jump into the water with a roll or press the crawl button to go underwater and swim your way through. If you get spotted by an enemy riding a flying platform, they'll go into alert phase. The flying platforms themselves don't seem to be armed, but the pilots are carrying Scorpion submachine guns and grenades. The recoil on the Scorpion is low enough so that they should be able to fire one-handed in full auto mode. That gives them some serious firepower. The armor plating on the body of a flying platform is bound to be pretty thick. I don't think you're going to be able to penetrate it with a handgun or an assault rifle. When you're up against a flying platform, try and aim for either the pilot or the engine on the underbelly. The flying platforms have a searchlight attached to the front. If you knock it out, that should handicap its scouting ability. And in some cases, it might even have to go back to base for repairs. Pass through that area to the north and you'll reach the aqueduct. But be careful. The aqueduct is patrolled by flying platforms. Flying platforms? Soldiers hovering in the air. I've heard stories, but... They've already been implemented over here. It goes to show that America isn't number one in everything. I heard a report that they've transported a sniper rifle to the western part of Pony Zovier, the aqueduct at the other end of the cave. When you get to the aqueduct, you might want to head over that way and check it out. Major, Sokolov's been hauled off. Yes, they probably caught him trying to escape from the lab. Didn't Volgin say that they still needed to perform the final test? Yeah. Then Sokolov must have been taken back to the lab. Get to the lab and get Sokolov the hell out of there. Pass through that warehouse and you'll come out south of the lab. Make your way inside the warehouse. Watch out for enemy sentries. The assault rifle can punch through materials like wooden boards. That means you can fire on enemies standing on top of the pier from underneath. Keep that in mind. Snake, get out of the water and infiltrate the warehouse. To get out of the water, move next to the place from which you want to emerge. Then, while you're treading water, press the action button. That device is a water gate. Normally, it'd be open to allow supply shipments to pass through, 
but it looks like it's closed right now. I don't think there's any way for you to open it. Snake, that gate appears to be locked from the inside. There's no way for you to open it. The passage on the east side of the warehouse should take you inside. Try sneaking in from the east. Good. You've infiltrated the warehouse. Pass through it and you'll come out south of the lab where Sokolov is being held. The exit should be on the north side of the top floor. Climb up the stairs and pass through the warehouse to the north. Be careful of enemy soldiers carrying shields. It'll be difficult to destroy those shields with just a handgun or an assault rifle. Either aim for their feet or use a grenade. Taking control of a gun emplacement might be a good idea too. Major, this door... It won't open? No. It's probably locked. That's what I thought, but there's no keyhole. I bet it's locked by a punch card security system. Punch card? Yep. Instead of a regular key, it uses a card with holes punched in it. You're gonna have to get yourself a card key if you want to get it open. Snake, you need a special kind of key to open that door. Right now, your top mission priority is to rescue Sokolov. Head for the lab to the north. It'll be difficult to keep a low profile inside a building, even if you're wearing camouflage. Keep a constant watch on your surroundings. Stay alert and don't enter the enemy's line of sight. You may be able to fool the enemy by disguising yourself as an object commonly found inside buildings. Snake, be careful around those lamps. The light from the lamps will cause your camo index to drop way off. In other words, you'll be much easier for the enemy to see if you stand next to a lamp. Snake, listen up. When there are enemies nearby, try to steer clear of the lamps as much as possible. Snake, the lab where Sokolov is being held is to the north of that forest. Keep on heading north. Snake, watch out. It seems that forest is rigged with a number of traps. Yeah, I noticed. Most of the traps seem to be triggered by tripping a rope stretched across the ground. Don't just run around like a fool. Keep an eye on the ground and watch where you step. Some ropes may be placed so they're hidden in the vegetation. Be extra careful when you're cutting through the underbrush. If you use the directional buttons to move around stalking, you should be able to spot the traps before you step on them. Use stalking to move safely through suspicious-looking areas. Snake, look at your feet. There's a rope stretched along the ground. That was a close call. Yeah, thanks. The traps are set up to go off whenever a rope is disturbed. You might want to try cutting the ropes beforehand by shooting them from a distance. Major, I found a... I know. It's probably a scientist who fled from the lab. I'd wager that the traps in those woods are set up more to deal with would-be escapees and to keep intruders out. It looks like there's a wire strung across those trees. I suspect it means that there's some kind of trap nearby. You can also grab onto the wire by hanging. Try climbing the tree and use hanging to cross the wire. Snake, have you been caught in a snare trap? Yeah. If you don't get down from there soon, the enemy might spot you. I know that. Then why don't you get yourself down? How am I supposed to do that? It should be obvious. If you get caught in a snare trap, press the action button. That will allow you to cut the rope. Hurry and free yourself before the enemy comes around. Snake, you've got an arrow stuck in you. When you get shot with an arrow, your maximum life will go down depending on how bad it is, so watch out. You can let the wound heal naturally, or you can treat it using Cure in the Survival Viewer to make it heal right away. To treat an arrow wound, first use your knife to dig the arrow out. Then disinfect the wound and apply styptic to stop the flow of blood. Once that's all done, the arrow wound should heal right up. Clappers, arrows, pendulums, all of these traps are set off by applying force to a rope. Don't touch the ropes and you'll be fine. Use rolling to get over them or just crawl under them. Either way ought to work. If you do set off a trap and an arrow or a spiked pendulum comes flying your way, you can still dodge it by immediately diving out of the way. Pit traps and snares are camouflaged into the ground to make them harder to detect. But if you look carefully enough, you can see them through the disguise. Try stalking to proceed with extra caution. In any case, if you think there might be traps lying around, keep a close eye on the ground and stay alert. It doesn't look like there's any way to open that door. Look for another way in. So there's a high wall around the perimeter of the lab. Climbing over it probably isn't an option. But there must be an entrance somewhere. Keep your eyes open. The best source of information about a facility is the people going in and out of it. Try interrogating one of the enemies about the entrance. To interrogate an enemy, Grab him from behind using CQC and press the left analog stick to put your knife to his throat. Snake, take a closer look at those bushes. There's a hole in the wall. I'll bet you could crawl through it to get to the other side. Snake, the enemy appears to be using that door to enter and exit the lab. Think you can sneak in? 
I can't open the door. I'll give it a shot. Major, I tried to open the door, but no dice. What if you knocked on the door and got a soldier with the key to come out and open it for you? Snake, what's wrong? Did something happen? Yeah, it looks like they mistook me for a scientist trying to escape. And so they took you back into the lab? Yeah. Well, anyway, you've succeeded in infiltrating the lab. In that disguise, you should be able to move around the lab without arousing suspicion. Sokolov is somewhere inside that lab. Disguise yourself as a scientist and go find him. I see you've made it inside the outer wall. Sokolov is inside the lab. Look for a way in and use it to infiltrate the lab. Good, you've infiltrated the lab. The security on the inside is very tight. You'll find it difficult to look for Sokolov unless you're disguised as a scientist. Use the clothes that Eva gave you to disguise yourself as a scientist. To disguise yourself as a scientist, go into the survival viewer and select scientist from the uniform option on the camouflage screen. Just remember to remove your face paint. To remove your face paint, choose no paint from the face option of the camouflage screen. Be careful though, if you get blood on your clothes, the enemy will see through your disguise. If you do get blood on your clothes, go into the survival viewer and change into a different outfit. After a while, the blood should come out on its own. I see you're disguised as a scientist. It suits you rather nicely. As long as you don't do anything suspicious, like roll or crawl, the enemy should have no reason to suspect you. Sokolov is somewhere inside that lab. Find out where he is and make contact with him. If you want to know where Sokolov is, why don't you ask one of the people around there? Snake, your disguise seems to be working. But don't forget that you're trying to pass as a scientist. Don't do anything that a scientist wouldn't do, like roll or crawl, and certainly don't go around punching people. If an enemy starts to suspect something, don't run away. Stay where you are and remain still. That should get you out of most situations. As long as you're disguised as a scientist, you won't be able to equip guns and knives. On the other hand, you might be able to equip items that don't look like weapons at first glance. Snake, be careful of those scientists as well. If they get a good look at your face, they'll know that you're not one of the scientists assigned to the lab. Take care to keep your face hidden from the scientists. Even if they figure out who you are, the scientists won't attack you, but you'll be in for it if they cry out or press one of the alarm switches on the walls. If a scientist starts to suspect something, turn your face away until the suspicion passes. If you get a chance, try interrogating a scientist. He might have some valuable information for you. Remove your disguise temporarily, and use CQC to grab a scientist. Then press the left analog stick. Snake, enemy soldiers who operate indoors aren't equipped with radios. To communicate with command, they'll have to use the radio-equipped alarm systems located on the walls. If you're spotted by an enemy, you can avoid going into alert phase by taking him out before he can use the alarm system. Ah, you found some lockers. Lockers are a highly prized commodity among intelligence agents, Spies throughout the ages have used lockers to help them accomplish their missions. Are you sure about that? Of course I am. You can use lockers for any number of purposes. Hiding yourself, hiding the bodies of enemy soldiers, using the door as a shield. Use them wisely and they'll prove valuable during the mission. To hide inside a locker, first open the locker by standing in front of it and pressing the action button. Once the door's open, you can enter the locker to hide inside it. To come out of the locker, just press the action button again. To hide an enemy's body in a locker, simply drag the body in front of an open locker. You can also break the doors of lockers. If the door of a locker won't open and you're determined to get inside, try breaking into it. Snake, it looks like the door of that locker won't open. Maybe it's locked. Looks like that locker is missing its door. You won't be able to hide inside or use it to hide enemy bodies. You can't use that locker. If you need to use a locker, look for another one. Major, Sokolov's already been moved to the fortress. But that's only what Granin told you, right? He may have been giving you false info. No, he wasn't lying. How can you be so sure? Gut feeling. Good enough for me. According to Granin, you should be able to get to the mountains through a passage located deep in the jungle beyond the warehouse. Right. Then if I climb the mountains, there'll be an underground tunnel leading to Groznygrad near the summit. Start out by going back to the warehouse. Use the key you got from Granin to open the door and proceed into the jungle. You remember where the door is, don't you? It's directly north of the door you went in when you came from the aqueduct. Snake, have you been contacted by Eva? Yeah, 
She said we'd meet up in the ruins at the top of the mountains. She also said she'd picked up the key to get into the tunnel that leads to Groznygrad. Good. Hurry to the rendezvous with Eva. Head for the mountains. Major, Eva said they finished testing the Shagalhod. So I heard. And Sokolov is in Groznygrad now, putting on the finishing touches. Yeah. They'll need to keep him alive until he's done. But once those preparations are completed... Snake, get yourself over to Groznygrad. I'm on my way. Proceed north through the woods. There's an entrance to a mine shaft at the far northeast corner. Climb up the shaft and you'll come out in the mountains. Head north. I'm on it. But stay on your toes. Isn't the Cobra unit sniper lying in wait for you? Yeah, the end. But there's no other way. Watch yourself. Your opponent is a legendary sniper. Head north and you'll come to Sokorovieno. The tunnel that leads to the mountains is in the northern area of Sokorovieno. I'll meet you in the ruins at the top of the mountains. I'll give you the key to the tunnel leading to Groznygrad when you get there. Remember, go north. But Sokorovieno is also where... I know. The end, right? Yeah. Just be careful. One of the cobras, the end, is waiting for you in Sokorovieno. He's a legendary sniper. Until you defeat him in battle... I won't be able to move on. Right. Then I'll just have to beat him. I guess you will. The Ocelot's right. Yeah. The Ocelot unit is waiting for you in Sokrovieno. I hear they've even got snipers in position. Watch your back. Until you defeat the end, I don't think you'll be able to pass through the forest. You'll have to beat him. Be careful. I've heard the Ocelots are lying in wait for you in the forest. The entrance to the tunnel is in the northeastern part of the northern area. Try to make it there in one piece. The tunnel to the mountains is to the northeast. Head that way. Until you defeat the end, those vines probably aren't going to go away. To get into the tunnel, you'll have to fight and beat him. Snake, what happened to your battle with the end? I, uh... Well, maybe it is a good idea to replenish your ammo and supplies. One or two days is like the blink of an eye to the end. Even now, he's probably still waiting for you back there in the woods of Sokrovieno. Until you end the end, by defeating him in battle, you won't be able to move on. When you're done resupplying, go back to Sokorvieno. Snake, you defeated another one of the Cobras, huh? Yeah, just one more left. Yeah, just two more left. But there's still someone else you have to fight, Snake. I know. Good. But right now, your job is to sneak into Groznygrad and rescue Sokolov. Rendezvous with Eva at the top of the mountains. According to her, the shaft leading to the mountains should be located in the far northeastern corner of the forest. Enter the shaft and head into the mountains. Proceed to the northeast. Snake, the ladder at the end of that shaft should take you up into the mountains. Proceed to the back and climb the ladder. Now all you have to do is follow the tunnel north to the mountains of Krasnogorye. But you might want to swing around east first. There's a provision storehouse there. Good. You're in the tunnel. The ladder at the end of the tunnel will take you up into the mountains. Head down the tunnel and climb up the ladder. You found your way to the mountains, I see. There's an underground tunnel near the top. You can use it to sneak into Groznygrad. But Eva said the door to the tunnel is sealed off. Yeah, she's supposed to bring me the key. First, rendezvous with Eva and get the key from her. The rendezvous point is in the ruins at the summit. The summit is still further up the mountain. Keep heading up towards the summit. The summit is just up ahead. Proceed to the ruins at the top of the mountain. Eva should be waiting for you there. That's the entrance to the underground tunnel Eva was talking about. Can you open it? It's no good. I'll give it a try. Major, Eva was right. I can't get the door open. I see. It looks like Eva was right. The door to the underground tunnel won't open without a key. Rendezvous with Eva and get the key from her. Head for the ruins at the summit. Snake, Eva is a KGB spy placed in Gru. She can't be seen by the enemy making direct contact with you. If you're being pursued by the enemy, don't expect Eva to come out to meet you. Make sure it's normal, phase before you attempt to make contact with Eva. Right now, you've got to lose the enemy. After you've returned to normal, phase, you can go back to the ruins and try to open the door. Is that clear? If the enemies in that area catch sight of you, they'll call in for support from the hind. The Hind's armor is impenetrable to normal fire, such as rifle bullets. But if you take over one of the anti-aircraft guns placed throughout the mountains, you should be able to take it on. You can also try using the RPG-7. What else could you use against a Hind? 
Well, I suppose a rocket launcher might do the trick. Snake, watch out for enemy soldiers carrying RPG-7s. A full-on rocket blast is not something you can just walk away from. However, it takes some time to reload a rocket launcher. Use that opening to your advantage. It looks like there's an anti-aircraft gun emplacement there. You can operate an anti-aircraft gun emplacement by standing next to it and pressing the action button. Use the weapon button to control the trigger. You can also zoom in on a target by pressing the aim button. The anti-aircraft cannon should be more than a match even for that attack chopper. But remember, its ammo supply is limited. Obviously you can't move around as long as you're sitting in the seat. If the enemy gets too close for comfort, press the action button and get out of the seat immediately. Is that clear? Snake, paramedic has something to tell you. Snake, the altitude in those mountains is pretty high. That means the oxygen concentration in the air is lower than normal. When there's less oxygen in the air, naturally you'll be breathing less oxygen as well, and the oxygen content of your blood will go down. In other words, you run the risk of becoming hypoxic. Hypoxia is a very serious condition. In the worst cases, it can lead to pulmonary and cerebral edema. I don't think you need to worry right now, but all the same, be careful. So, what do I need to be careful about? In high altitude areas, you will tire quicker than normal. Ah, uh, okay. Snake, climbing uphill takes a lot of stamina as it is, but on top of that, the air up there is thinner than normal. You're burning through stamina a lot faster now than ever before. Keep an eye on your stamina gauge. Be sure to eat something to restore your stamina before you run out. Snake, watch out for enemy troops carrying flamethrowers. Under no circumstances should you get close to the flame troops. Either sneak by without being seen or take them out from a distance. If you get blasted by a flamethrower, your body will catch on fire. If your body catches on fire, either roll around repeatedly to put it out or go into the survival viewer and change out of the burning clothes. When you catch fire, you'll get burned unless you put the flames out quickly. So be sure to extinguish the flames right away. Okay? Snake, you see that anti-aircraft gun? That's a ZU-23, a light, towable anti-aircraft gun that the Soviets started producing in 1957. It was designed for deployment in airborne units and motorized rifle divisions without their own self-propelled anti-air guns. It's got two 23mm air-cooled automatic cannons with a firing rate of 800 rounds per minute. They usually take a six-man crew to operate, but you ought to be able to handle one by yourself. In addition to shooting at low-flying aircraft, you can also use them as machine guns to target light-armored land vehicles. I imagine they'd be more than a match for that new attack chopper of theirs, too. You can take over an anti-aircraft gun the same way you take over a gun emplacement. Stand next to it and press the action button. Use the weapon button to fire. Press the aim button to focus in on a target. Just remember that they've got limited ammo. Also, don't forget, you can't move around while you're using an emplacement. If the enemy's getting too close for comfort, press the action button to ditch it. Pronto. Sigint, the chopper we were talking about is flying around. The one at the heliport? Yeah. The Hind is armed with a 12.7mm machine gun on the nose and rocket pods and anti-tank missiles on the stub wing hardpoints. Normally you'd be crazy to try and fight it on foot. If it starts attacking with the machine gun or the rockets, take cover behind something as fast as you can. As for the missiles, you should be able to knock out their guidance system by using a chaff grenade to block the radio signal. Your assault rifle won't penetrate the Hind's armor. Try the RPG-7. If you don't use a rocket launcher or something with similar firepower, you won't be able to take it down. Eva said there was an RPG-7 in those mountains, right? With an RPG-7, you might stand a chance against the Hind. Go find it. If you can take over one of the anti-aircraft guns in the mountains, you'll be more than a match for that Hind. The Hind is a transport attack chopper that can carry personnel. It might drop some troops on you. Don't get caught off guard. The Hind is protected by heavy armor, but a rifle bullet might be able to penetrate through the cockpit canopy. Try using the SVD. You made it to the mountains. I'll meet you in the ruins at the top of the mountains. The summit is still a ways up. Keep going forward. The summit is still a ways up. Keep climbing. See those ruins at the summit? I'll be waiting for you there. Stay alert. Volgan has sent out attack choppers to stop you. You saw them at the heliport, didn't you? They're probably already patrolling the area. If you get spotted by the enemy, you'll be dealing with that thing. Just my luck. I don't have any weapons that'll work against them. 
There should be an RPG-7 in the armory near the summit. There should be an RPG-7 in a bunker in the hillside. A portable rocket launcher, huh? That should be enough to swat bothersome flies. Don't worry, I found an RPG-7. That should be enough to swat down a few flies. But if you had an RPG-7, you could shoot them down. You could also try using an anti-aircraft gun. You can take over an anti-aircraft gun by pressing the action button when you're near it. You must be worn out from all that mountain climbing. There's a provision storehouse at the back of the hillside area. Why don't you go stock up on rations? Eva, this door won't open. Of course it won't. Why not? Why? Because it's the door to that underground tunnel I was telling you about, silly. Don't you listen to people when they're talking? <sighs> you won't be able to open that door without the key. I've got that key. I'll give it to you when we meet up. The rendezvous point is the ruins at the top of the mountains. Hurry! I don't see it. Really? No. You must have missed it. Look again. No, it's not here. Maybe it's because you destroyed that one at the heliport. But I'm sure it'll be there, in the next area. Uh-huh. Honest. Snake, as I was saying before, there's an attack chopper in that area. So it would seem. You've got the key from Eva. Now use it to enter the underground tunnel. The great fortress of Groznygrad is at the end of that tunnel. The door to the underground tunnel is near the center of that area, a little to the east. Get over there fast. The door to the underground tunnel is in the summit area. Hurry. It looks like you can get a nice panoramic view of Groznygrad from there. Perhaps you should scout it out now while you can. Just don't do anything too conspicuous. Remember that the attack chopper is still on patrol. Snake, where are you going? You won't get to Groznygrad by heading that way. You have to sneak into Groznygrad by going underground. There should be a door opening to the underground entrance near the middle of the summit. If you have the key Eva gave you, you should be able to open it. Go back to the summit and head underground. Snake, hold on. What? Do you know where you're supposed to be going? Of course I do. Tell me then. The tunnel to Groznygrad. And do you know where the entrance to that tunnel is? Yeah. Where is it? It's over there. Over where? No, I mean it's over here. Huh. Or was it over that way? <sighs> the entrance to the underground tunnel leading to Groznygrad is near the center of the summit area. Sokolov is in grave danger. Get a move on. So it was over there. Follow that tunnel to the north and you'll come out inside Groznygrad. Keep going north. You defeated the Fury, huh? Yeah. That only leaves... I haven't forgotten. Good. But your first priority is to get Sokolov out of the fortress. Right. The ladder at the end of that underground tunnel should take you up into Groznygrad. Once the Shagohod is completed, there's no telling how long they'll let Sokolov live. You've got to hurry. The other side of that door is blocked by rubble as a result of the Fury's explosion. You won't be able to open it. Forget about it and continue your mission. Good. You've finally made it inside Groznygrad. Finally. Stay alert. This is the enemy's main base. The security here is on a scale you haven't encountered yet. No kidding. Your objective is the weapons lab. It's the giant building in the center of the fortress. Sokolov is in the west wing of that building. To get into the area where Sokolov is imprisoned, you'll need to find Major Rykov. Steal his clothes and disguise yourself as him. Rykov is supposed to be in the east wing of the weapons lab. Start out by sneaking into the east wing of the weapons lab, then neutralize Rykov and take his clothes. The weapons lab is to the north of the area you're in now. Head north. The weapons lab is located in the center of the area you're in now. Head for the east wing of the weapons lab. The weapons lab is to the east of the area you're in now. Head east. The weapons lab is to the northeast of the area you're in now. Head northeast. Good. You've infiltrated the east wing. Rykov should be somewhere in that building. Take him down and steal his clothes. But you can't simply wander around the enemy's home base looking like that. For now, disguise yourself as a scientist while you look for Rykov. Rykov is somewhere within the East Wing. Find him and dispatch him. We know that Major Rykov is a glutton. Maybe you could use that to your advantage. Why not give him something rotten to eat and then lay an ambush for him in the toilets? That door sounds like it's got a pretty fancy electronic lock on it. Yeah, it doesn't have a keyhole or a slit to insert a card. How's it supposed to work? Couldn't tell you. All I know is that you can't open it by any normal means. Why don't you ask Eva and see if she knows? Sigint, 
this door is. I heard. The door seems to be set up to open in response to a radio signal on a specific frequency. Hey, you've got a device that transmits radio signals on different frequencies. Maybe you could use that to open it. But the key frequency is probably going to be different for each door. If you need to know which one, why don't you try capturing a scientist or a grunt around there and asking them? The security in the West Wing where Sokolov is being held is extremely tight. The only ones who are cleared to enter the West Wing are those with Colonel Class authorization. One of those people is Major Rykov. To get into the West Wing, you could disguise yourself as Rykov. First, you'll have to take Rykov out and steal his uniform. He's in the East Wing of the Weapons Lab in the center of Groznygrad. The East Wing is north of your current location. Head north. The East Wing is northeast of your current location. Head northeast. The East Wing is east of your current location. Head east. You're in the vicinity of the East Wing. Proceed to infiltrate. All right, but why? Huh? Why do I have to steal Rykov's clothes from him? What about that scientist outfit? That's not going to work this time around. Rykov's uniform is a special type that only he wears. You'll have to get it directly from him. Normally, I'm pretty good at getting men to take off their clothes, but it won't work on him. Huh? You, on the other hand, might have a better chance with him. What's that supposed to mean? What indeed? Anyway, the only way to get Rykov's uniform is to take him out and steal it yourself. He's somewhere in the East Wing. The security in Groznygrad is tight. Watch out for the searchlights in particular. If you get caught square in one of the lights, no matter how good your camouflage is, they'll spot you. Make sure you stay out of those circles of light. Those trucks you see there are used to transport materials in and out of Groznygrad. I've seen them loading the trucks full of cardboard boxes and shipping them off all over the place. Groznygrad is a gigantic fortress, so they've got to be pretty busy. Some of the men have even complained to me that they've got too much work to do to check the contents of every single box that comes through. You made it into the East Wing. Good. Rykov is somewhere in that building. You know what he looks like, don't you? When you find him, steal his uniform. But if you go in dressed like that, the enemy will spot you long before you find Rykov. Disguise yourself as a scientist. There are scientists in the East Wing. Almost all of them were taken here against their will, like Sokolov. If they see you, they probably won't attack you. But they can still get you in trouble by yelling for help or pressing the alarm switches on the walls. So you should be watching out for scientists as well as enemy grunts. Even if you disguise yourself as a scientist, the real scientists will know you're not one of their own if they get a good look at your face. So make sure the real scientists can't see your face while you're in your scientist disguise. And don't do anything funny like crawling or rolling around. If a scientist gets suspicious about your disguise, just turn your face away and pretend nothing's wrong. That should work most of the time. There are enemy soldiers patrolling the East Wing as well. Even if you disguise yourself as a scientist, they'll know something's up if you crawl, roll, punch, or stay pressed up against the wall for a long time. If an enemy gets suspicious and starts coming your way, just stay still and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> that ought to fool him. Rykov is making the rounds inside the East Wing. If you see him, take him out before he has a chance to get away. Try using the cigarette-shaped sleep gas gun. The knockout handkerchief might also come in handy. Rykov always carries a Makarov with him. Make sure you don't get shot. If enemy soldiers or scientists see you take down Rykov, you'll be in for it. Make sure to get Rykov someplace out of sight. Someplace like the locker room on the southwest side of the second floor, maybe? Rykov is famous for being a glutton. I've heard he'll even stop and pick up food that's lying on the floor. <laughs> but for such a pig, he's got a weak stomach and is always running for the toilet after eating that stuff. Why don't you try giving Rykov something rotten to eat, and then waiting for him in the bathroom? Snake, that door can't be opened by normal means. Apparently, it operates by responding to a specific radio frequency. If you want to know the key frequency, why don't you try asking someone nearby? Good. You've taken care of Rykov. Now to take those clothes he's wearing. But don't take his clothes off there, out in the open. It's far too conspicuous. Also, once you've disguised yourself as Rykov, you'll need to find some place to hide the real Rykov's body. 
There must be a place where you can take Rykov's clothes and hide his body. Drag Rykov's body over there. Eva might know a suitable location. Try asking her. Snake, where are you going? Are you planning to just leave Rykov's corpse there? If anyone discovers his body, you won't be able to disguise yourself as him anymore. You won't be able to get into the West Wing either, and your mission will fail. Hurry up and get back to Rykov's body. Drag Rykov's body into the locker room. The locker room is on the southwest side of the second floor. Be careful not to wake Rykov up while you're dragging him, and make sure you're not seen by enemy soldiers or scientists. If Rykov's corpse is found, you'll no longer be able to disguise yourself as him. Whatever you do, don't let them find the body. Is that clear? I see you've got Rykov's clothes from him. Disguise yourself as Rykov and infiltrate the West Wing, where Sokolov is being held. Select Officer from Uniform on the camouflage screen to change into Rykov's uniform. However, that won't be enough to pass as Rykov. To really become Rykov, you'll need to make your face look like his as well as your clothes. As for how you do that, well, I'll let you think about it. You can use the mask to make your face look like Rykov's. To wear the mask, select Mask from Face on the camouflage screen. Major, I disguise myself as Rykov. Hmm. What? No good? No. Snake, you can't pass yourself off as Rykov simply by wearing his clothes. You need to make your face look like his as well. There must be a way to make your face look like Rykov's. Think, Snake. Ah, your Rykov disguise has turned out nicely. Yeah, not even his own mother could tell the difference. Indeed, you're starting to irritate me already. Why? This look should make me more popular. I wouldn't bet on it, but whatever. Now that you're indistinguishable from the real Rykov, you'll be able to get into the West Wing, to which only Volgin and Rykov have access. Head for the West Wing of the Weapons Lab. That's where Sokolov is being held. Enter the main wing from the second floor of the East Wing. Pass west through the main wing, and you'll come to a connecting passageway. The West Wing is at the other end of that passageway. Infiltrate the West Wing and rescue Sokolov. While you're disguised as Rykov, you can press the action button to perform a salute. If you want, why don't you try saluting some of the soldiers and scientists? Now that you're the spitting image of Rykov, no one will have cause to suspect you. But if someone finds Rykov hidden in the locker, your disguise will become useless. If that happens, your mission will end in failure. Whatever you do, don't open the locker. Is that clear? As long as you're disguised as Rykov, you'll be able to go anywhere in the fortress, and no one will suspect a thing. Now may be a good time to do a little exploring around the place. Snake, that passageway leads to the West Wing, where Sokolov is being held captive. But the only ones who can open the door to the West Wing are those sentries there. The only way to get into the West Wing is to disguise yourself as Rykov and get the sentries to open the door for you. Quickly, change into your Rykov disguise. You should be able to fool them with that disguise. Pretend you're Rykov and get them to open the door. You'll need to get Rykov's clothes from him first. Go back to the East Wing and take him down. Snake, those sentries are the only ones who can open the door. You won't be able to get into the West Wing if you knock them all out. You'll just have to go someplace else and wait for new sentries to be posted. Snake, wait! Are you just going to leave Rykov's body lying outside of the locker? If someone finds the real Rykov, you won't be able to get away with disguising yourself as him, and you won't be able to get into the West Wing either. In other words, mission failed. Go back and put him in the locker. Hurry! Okay, you're disguised as Rykov. You ought to be able to pass for the real deal in that outfit. You can go anywhere you want and nobody's going to ask questions. But don't forget that you can't equip most of your weapons when you're in disguise. Okay, you're wearing Rykov's uniform, but there's still something missing. I don't think the disguise is going to work unless you make yourself look more like him. You took care of Rykov? Good. Now drag him to the locker room. There shouldn't be anyone in there. You won't need to worry about anyone seeing you take his clothes, and you can hide his body, too. The locker room is on the southwest side of the second floor. Hurry and take him there. If someone discovers Rykov's dead body, you won't be able to disguise yourself as him anymore. That means you won't be able to sneak into the West Wing, either. And if that happens, you failed your mission. Take Rykov's body somewhere where you're sure it won't be found, okay? Snake! What are you doing? You got Rykov's clothes, didn't you? Hurry up and change into them. If you fail your mission, you'll be taking me down with you. Get it together. Eva, I disguised myself as Rykov. 
Hmm. What's wrong? Something's not quite right. Not right? Hmm. What? What is it? Hmm. I got it. Your face is all wrong. Let's say what now? I mean, your face isn't his. Well, I would hope not. Well, you need to do something about that. Do what? Well, you're a smart guy. You figure it out. In order to sneak into the West Wing, you need to become Rykov. That means more than just wearing his clothes. Your face has to match his, too. There must be a way to do that. While you're disguised as Rykov, you can go anywhere you want and no one will stop you. So now might be a good time to go and collect some items. For instance, I heard there's a rare goodie on the east side of the second floor of the East Wing. Once you're disguised as Rykov, you can get into the West Wing where Sokolov is being held. To get to the entrance to the West Wing, pass west through the main wing of the weapons lab and go through the connecting passageway. Head straight down that connecting passageway. The door to the connecting passageway is to the west. Head that way. You can get into the main wing of the weapons lab from the southwest side of the second floor. Head for the main wing. Once you're ready, go back to the east wing. Enter the main wing from the second floor of the east wing and pass through it to get to the west wing. Don't worry about Rykov. No one will find him in the locker for a while. But when they do find him, your disguise will be useless. You won't be able to get into the west wing and your mission will be a failure. So whatever you do, don't open the locker with Rykov in it, all right? Snake, that door leads to the hangar. It's where they're making adjustments to the Shagohod. But you can't open it unless you have the key. I'll get the key for you soon enough. But in the meantime, you should rescue Sokolov first. Head for the West Wing. You're in the connecting passageway of the weapons lab. That passageway leads to the West Wing where Sokolov is being held. As you can see, they've got guards posted there full time. Those guards are the only ones who can open the door to the West Wing. The only way to get in is to pretend you're Rykov and get them to open the door for you. Just keep going and have them open the door for you. Okay, hurry and change into your Rykov disguise. Go back to the East Wing and find Rykov. The only way to sneak into the West Wing is by wearing his clothes. Steal Rykov's clothes from him. To get them to open the door, just give them a signal. You can press the action button to perform a salute. That's the signal. The sentries are the only ones that can open the door to the West Wing. If you take them all out, you won't be getting inside. Leave the area and come back again. Snake? Major. You're all right. Uh, I wouldn't say all right, but at least I'm alive. That's good enough. But they took all my weapons and equipment from me. Well, you've still got your radio and medical items with you. Yeah. I wonder why that is. Perhaps Folgin's not finished with you just yet. Yeah, well, I'm not finished with him yet either. In any event, it's a good thing for you that they didn't take your medical items. Snake, you've got to escape from that cell somehow. There must be a way. Use your head. The door of the cell seems to open in response to a specific radio frequency. Perhaps you've seen or heard it somewhere already. I don't think so. That's a shame. <sighs> Come on, I know you've seen it. I remember it. What was it then? Um... You can't remember either, can you? No, no, I, I remember it. It just slipped my mind temporarily. Huh. Snake, I remember it now. The frequency was 144.75. I'm sure of it. Stand in front of the door and use your radio to send a signal on 144.75. Major. Yes? I tried punching the wall here. And? The sound is different. The sound? Yeah. Perhaps there's a hollow space beyond that wall. Try hitting it again. You may be able to break through. Snake, did it work? Did you make a hole in the wall? <clears throat> no. I see. Perhaps it's impossible to break through the wall with your bare knuckles after all. Snake, I see you've managed to punch through the wall. That hole should be big enough to pass through. There's no time to lose. Get out of there quick. Major, I dug out the bullet the boss shot into me. Yes? There was a fake death pill inside. A fake death pill? Yeah. What does it mean? I haven't a clue. But if it's the work of the boss, then it probably means something. I wonder if it's meant to help you escape from the cell. 
You're saying the boss was trying to help me? But why? If you don't know, how am I supposed to know? <sighs> Snake, the guard has opened the door. Knock him out and get out of there. Snake, the door to the cell is open. There's no time to lose. Get out of there quickly. Snake, you say you've discovered a transmitter? Yeah, it was buried in a wound. I think Ocelot did it. He must be expecting me to get out of here. Then you mustn't disappoint him. All right. He must have been expecting me to escape from that cell. And you didn't disappoint him? Of course not. Major, I'm sorry. Sokolov, I couldn't... Don't say it. <sighs> you weren't able to rescue him, but that doesn't mean your mission has failed yet. Eva said they've completed phase two. There is no time left. You must destroy the Shagohod at all costs. That will be our final tribute to him. Right. The boss gave you a gun? Yeah, a single-action army. For what? I'm not sure. Hmm. Anyway, why don't you use that gun to shoot- I can't. Why not? No bullets. I see. Well, you'll be able to get some once you're outside. First, you've got to escape from that cell. There must be a way. Don't give up. Snake, you can't possibly escape in the condition you're in. You'll need to take care of those wounds first. Treat your injuries by going to cure in the survival viewer. You need to build up your stamina before trying to escape. Without your stamina, you won't have the strength to punch and kick. Be sure to eat whatever food the guard brings you. Take a look around the cell. You might be able to find some edible plants or animals. In any case, you've got to eat something to restore your stamina. That's an order. Sleep is another good way to replenish your life and stamina. Save the game and take a break. When you load the game from your save data the next time, you'll recover strength based on how long you've rested. Paramedic. Hmm? How do I make myself throw up? Huh? I need to throw up. What? what do you need to throw up? Anything's fine, I just need to vomit. What in the... Eva said I might be able to get the guard to open the door if I pretend to be sick. Oh. What did you think it was? Uh, nothing. Uh, hey, hey. Huh? I think letting the guard see you throw up is a good idea. You can eat something poisonous to give yourself food poisoning. That'll make you throw up after a while. Or you can use a survival viewer to make yourself dizzy. In the survival viewer, press the viewer button to enter viewer mode. Then use the right analog stick to spin your body around. Do that long enough and you'll start to get dizzy. When you're dizzy enough, you'll throw up the moment you exit the survival viewer. Try it out. Snake, now's your chance. Take out the guard and get out of there. Snake, the door of the cell is set up to open when it receives a radio signal on a certain frequency. If you only knew the frequency, you could use your radio to open the door. If you want to get out of a cell like that, the textbook method is to dig a hole. Do you see any place you could dig a hole? I'm trying to dig up as much as I can on that cell. Just sit tight. Snake, I've got some good news. What is it? Volgan isn't planning to kill you. At least not for the time being. Why? I think he wants to make you suffer some more. Oh, that's a relief. Yeah. This means you'll have more of an opportunity to escape. I was being sarcastic. Anyway, Volgan has given orders that you're to be kept alive. So the guard will bring me food and medical supplies, huh? Exactly. If anything happens to you, he'll be executed by Volgan. Hmm. Well, this could be useful. That guard is under orders from Volgan to keep you alive. If anything happens to you, Volgan will have him executed. So he'll be keeping a close eye on your condition. If you pretend to be sick or something, I'll bet he'd come rushing over to your side. Pretending to be sick? Yeah, there's lots of ways. Think about it. For instance, if the guard sees you throwing up, I bet he'll open the door and come to see what's wrong. Snake. I found some info on the guard. That guard is notorious for being hungry all the time. He's even been caught and flogged for sneaking into the mess hall at night and eating scraps. Maybe you could win him over by sharing your food. Oh, and I heard that he's particularly sympathetic to American prisoners for some reason. Why? Not really sure. Can't blame the guy. Hmm? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Snake, there's got to be a way out of there. Don't give up. Snake, the door to that cell is the kind that opens in response to a specific radio frequency. A specific radio frequency? Right. 
You should be able to open it by using your radio to send a signal on the key frequency. Sounds good. Do you know the frequency? I'll try and find out. Give me a minute. Eva, did you find out the frequency I need to open the door? Sorry, Snake. I tried everything I could, but the security is just too tight. Great. Snake, I found out the frequency that opens the door. It's 144.75. Stand in front of the door and send a message on frequency 144.75. Snake, the door is open. Take out the guard and get out of there. Snake, the door is open. Hurry and get out of there. You made a hole in the wall? That's great. Now use it to escape before the guard sees it. The manhole is in the northwest section of the fortress. Head northwest. The manhole is in the northwest section of the fortress. Head north. Snake, have you found any weapons? No. That's too bad. I've only got a few single-action army rounds. Those aren't going to do you much good. I've got a fork. You call that a weapon? Without a decent weapon, attacking the enemy head-on is suicide. Until you get your gear back, your main focus should be staying out of sight. If by chance the enemy does see you, don't try to fight. Just run away. Got it? Snake, you're really going to feel the cold with no clothes on. The Major's right. You'll burn stamina a lot faster when you're naked. Be sure to eat regularly. Snake, now that you've lost even your CQC knife, you won't be able to use CQC. You won't be able to grab or throw enemies either. You can still throw punches by pressing the CQC button and launch combos by pressing it several times in a row. That'll have to do for now. Snake, now that all your clothing has been taken from you, you won't be able to camouflage yourself. Remember the basics of a sneaking mission. Stay out of the enemy's line of sight and proceed from one hiding spot to the next. Use caution. Snake, do you have any clothes? Not yet. So you're still naked? Yeah. When you don't have any clothes on, your body loses heat quickly. That makes you burn stamina a lot faster. Make sure you keep eating. It doesn't need to be clothes. Anything you have that can cover you up should help you conserve stamina. Without weapons or equipment, you're not going to be able to continue your mission. I've got all your belongings with me. Let's meet up outside the fortress. There's an open manhole in the northwestern section of the fortress. You can use it to get down into the sewers and make your way out of Groznygrad. To get to the manhole, go under the passageway leading to the west wing and head north. It won't be long before Volgan and his men notice you're gone. Get to the manhole before they find you. The waterfall where Eva said she'd meet you is up ahead to the north. Head that direction. Snake, I see you've recovered your weapons and equipment. Now I can finally go on the offensive. Time to pay Volgin back for what he did to you. Yeah, and then some. But first you've got to destroy the Shagohod. The Shagohod is in the hangar in the main wing of the weapons lab. Go back to Groznygrad, make your way into the hangar and destroy the Shagohod. You can get back into Groznygrad by going to the end of the cave behind the waterfall. Head back to Groznygrad. If you go upstream, you'll come to a waterfall. I'll meet you in the cave behind that waterfall. Make your way up the river. There's a ladder at the back of the cave behind the waterfall that will take you up into the fortress. Head to the back of the cave. That ladder will take you up into the southwestern part of Groznygrad. Climb the ladder. Eva, about the contents of the backpack you got for me. Snake, you've got to destroy the Shagohod. It's located in the hangar in the main wing of the weapons lab. To get into the hangar, use the door just inside the main wing as you enter it from the second floor of the east wing. You can enter the main wing from the west side of the second floor. Head for the main wing. Start out by heading for the east wing of the weapons lab. The east wing is to the northeast of your location. Head northeast. The east wing is to the north of your location. Head north. There's a truck parked over the manhole, huh? I guess you won't be able to use that anymore. But there's no need for you to go back to the cave anyway. Your goal is to destroy the Shagohod. Head for the hangar in the main wing of the weapons lab. Snake, take a look at the guard towers. They've got sentries posted up there. The sentries in the guard towers will be using binoculars to watch over the place. They can see you even from a distance. Use extreme caution. Snake, your job is to plant the C3 charges on the liquid fuel tanks. There are four liquid fuel tanks. You need to place a C3 charge on each of them. The tanks should all be located close to the Shagohod. If the enemy disarms any of the charges, your mission will end in failure. Plant the C3 in as inconspicuous a place as possible. If it looks like an enemy is about to discover one of the charges, neutralize him immediately. 
Also, you mustn't let the enemy see you planting the C3. Consequently, you'll not be allowed to plant the C3 in alert phase. Is that clear? You've got three more tanks to plant C3 on. You've still got two more tanks to plant C3 on. Hurry! One more tank remains. You're almost there. Snake, be careful when you approach the liquid fuel tanks. Apparently, even the smallest disturbance will cause them to explode. Don't use firearms near the tanks. Snake, you gotta plant that C3 you got from Evo on the liquid fuel tanks. But you've got just barely enough for the job. Make sure you don't plant it anywhere but on the tanks. And even if you plant it in the right place, it'll all be for nothing if the enemy finds it. Try to plant the C3 as far away from prying eyes as possible. Once you've planted all the C3 charges, flip the switch on the detonation timer. The countdown will start right away. When it hits zero, the whole hangar goes sky high. You better be out of there before that happens. Snake, like I told you before, you gotta be careful when you get close to those liquid fuel tanks. The tanks are full of UDMH, unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine. It's used in rocket and missile propulsion systems. Mess with a tank and boom, you're confetti. So do me a favor and don't shoot or throw grenades at any of the liquid fuel tanks. The Shagohod is in the hangar of the main wing of the weapons lab. You can get into the hangar through the door located at the entrance to the main wing on the second floor of the east wing. Hurry! Snake, they know you disguised yourself as Rykov to get in last time. And besides, you lost the hat, so I don't think the disguise is going to work anymore. Eva, what's your status? I'm on my way to the rail bridge. Okay, when you're done planting the C3 on the bridge. I know the plan. We'll meet up at the lake. You stay focused, too. The only way for you to sneak into the east wing of the weapons lab is through the entrance. Speaking of which, I sometimes see trucks going in and out through there. If you can sneak onto one of those trucks somehow... It looks like you made it inside the hangar, huh? Plant the C3 charges on the liquid fuel tanks. There are four tanks in all. If one of the C3 charges you planted is dismantled by the enemy, your mission is over. Try to plant the C3 someplace out of the way where it won't be seen. If it looks like an enemy is about to find a charge, take him down immediately. And if the enemy sees you planting the C3, <laughs> show's over, folks. So don't plant the charges in alert phase. Got it? Once you've finished planting C3 on all four tanks, turn the timer on. When the count reaches zero, all of the C3 charges will explode at once. Once the timer has started, there's no way to stop it. Make sure you're out of there by the time it reaches zero. Got it? The maintenance crew in charge of getting the Shagohod ready is in the hangar. You don't want them to see you any more than you want the guards to, so keep an eye out for them. On the other hand, if you were part of the maintenance crew, you could get close to the fuel tanks without arousing suspicion. Aha! You disguised yourself as one of the maintenance crew. <laughs> Dressed like that, you should be able to go anywhere you want in the hangar. Don't go doing anything suspicious like rolling around or crawling. And if the maintenance crew gets a good look at your face, they'll know you're not one of them. If the maintenance crew gets suspicious, turn around so they can't see your face and act casual. If the guards get suspicious, just stand still and you should be fine. You've planted one C3 charge. That leaves three more. How are things on your end? I'm planting the C3 on the rail bridge now. Don't screw up, okay? Hey, not a problem. That forest is known as Dremuchi. It means the untouched forest in Russian. The name says it all. Dremuchi is a pristine jungle at the far edge of Selinoyarsk, untouched by human hands. The forest is so dense that large units can't penetrate it, making it a natural defense. That's why Sokolov's research facility and Groznygrad were built here. But more to the point, what are you doing all the way out there? You're not thinking of abandoning the mission, are you? Get back to the north. That area is called Dolino Vodno. The name means Forest of the Canyon. It probably got that name from the chasm that divides the jungle in two. The rope bridge at the center was hastily constructed to enable them to patrol Dromuchi. Speaking of which, what are you doing all the way back there? Get back to the north now. That area is known as Rasviet. It means dawn in Russian. The area got that name when the factory was first constructed. But the factory ended up being closed down, and Selino Yarsk was reborn as a secret research center and military fortress.
That area is known as Chorny Prud. The name means something like the Black Shore in Russian. It got its name from the deep swamp that covers the area. Good, you made it to Bolshaya Pust. The name Bolshaya Pust means something close to the Great Cavity. It probably got that name from the crevice to the north. There's a fortified area in the southern part of Bolshaya Pust that's strung with barbed wire. To the north of that is a relay station that serves as both a depot for material shipments and a communication facility. The crevice leading to the cave is located to the north of the relay station. Head north. That cave is known as Chornaya Peshara. In Russian, Chornaya Peshara means the black cave from which cold wind blows. It's a magma cavern formed millions of years ago, back when Salino Yarsk was the site of volcanic activity. The structure of the cave is pretty complex, but you should be able to find the aqueduct if you keep moving inward. Head toward the interior of the cave. That aqueduct is known as Ponizovie. It means the land down the river. As you can see, it's overgrown with mangrove. Usually, they'd have boats going up and down transporting materials. But right now, the place is on high alert, so the boats have stopped running. But enough about that. What are you doing there? We're supposed to meet up in the mountains. Hurry up and get there. You can start by going back to the warehouse. The area you're in now is known as Granini Gorky. It means Granin's Mountain. Apparently, it got that name when the Granin Lab was first built. But more to the point, what are you doing there? I, I told you we were supposed to meet up in the mountains, didn't I? <laughs> Go back through the warehouse to Sviato Gorni. The name of that forest is Sviato Gorni. In Russian, it means something like the sacred mountain path. The name comes from an old folk tale about mountain spirits who passed through there on their way to Sokrovieno, the forest to the north. The forest you're in now is known as Sokrovieno. The name means the most holy woods. It's been venerated since ancient times as the sacred home of the spirits of the forest. It's the largest and deepest forest in the region and is divided into three areas, south, west, and north. Try not to get lost, okay? There's an armory in the southern area. If you need some extra ammo, you might want to pay it a visit. Those mountains are known as Krasnogorye. The name means the Red Mountain Ridge in Russian. The entire range has been fortified to act as a defense for the great fortress of Groznygrad. The area near the top has been dug with bunkers and trenches, and there are anti-aircraft gun emplacements everywhere. It's literally an impenetrable wall. Proceed with caution. Oh, there's a provision storehouse in the hillside area, and there's an armory at the summit. The name Groznygrad means the terrible fortress. And that's exactly what it is. An impregnable monster of a fortress built using Colonel Volgan's enormous fortune. In the center of the fortress is a weapons lab that acts as the nerve center of the place. In the southeast, there's a prison. In the northwest, there's an armory. And in the northeast, there's a provision storehouse. The weapons lab in the center is where Granin, Sokolov, and their fellow scientists carry out their high-tech weapons research. The flying platform and attack chopper you saw are two of their accomplishments. And now they're about to finish the work on the Shagohad. They call it the Terrible Fortress for a reason. That area is known as Tiko Gorni. It means the Tranquil Mountain Ridge in Russian. Like the name says, it's the most beautiful riverbank in the region of Groznygrad. Eva. What's up? About our escape plan. Uh-huh. How exactly are you planning to get to the lake? What? Don't you trust me? That's not what I meant. Okay, then. I'll explain it to you. To the north of Groznygrad, there's a forest called Lazorevo. The name Lazorevo means the lush green earth. On the other side of Lazorevo is a large forest called Zauzyorye. Zauzyorye means near the lake in Russian. The lake is just beyond Zauzyorye. And the name of that lake is Rokovoy Biereg, the lake of destiny. That's where you hid the wig. Yeah, we'll use it to make our getaway. Once we've completed our missions, that is. Snake, <clears throat> where are you going? Oh, I, uh... Are you abandoning your mission? Absolutely not. I didn't think so. I didn't think you thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Sokolov is back there in the factory. Head back north. Roger. 
the battery recharges automatically when not in use. When you want to recharge the battery, unequip all electronic devices and give it some time. The higher your stamina gauge, the faster your battery recharges. If you want it to recharge faster, eat food and recover your stamina. Also, if you run, roll or do other dramatic actions, the battery will recharge faster. Wait a second. What is it? The higher my stamina, the faster my battery recharges? That's what I said. But what does my stamina have to do with the battery? Oh, yes, I see what you're getting at. Let's have Paramedic explain that. Paramedic? Yes, sir. It's because Snake's battery uses bioelectricity. Bioelectricity? Bioelectricity is electricity emitted from cells. When the cells of living things are stimulated, sodium and potassium ions move rapidly through the cell membrane's ion channel, creating a difference in electric potential. The battery uses that energy to recharge. So unless your cells have plenty of nutrients, the recharge won't work well. Amazing the kind of machines that are available now. But this machine has not been made public. It was designed by a scientist at the CIA's Directorate of Science and Technology. What kind of person was he? The person who designed it? Yeah. I heard he was pretty strange. Stranger than the Major? There's nothing strange about the Major. My tea's gone. Who drank it? How am I supposed to have tea time without tea? Well, not too strange, at least. Mm -hmm. Hey, my scone's gone, too. You ate some food? Yes. You aren't expecting food to recover life, are you? Of course not. Food alone doesn't heal wounds. Food only recovers stamina. Good. Why do you ask? I once had a guy who thought that eating canned food would recover his life. Well, was he some kind of idiot? Of sorts, yes. But in the 21st century, they'll probably come up with something that does just that. Listen up, Snake. Keep in mind that this operation is strictly covert. Engagements should be avoided. If you must dispose of an enemy, do it with the tranquilizer gun. Yup. Sweet dreams, Boy Scout. That's right. And by the time he wakes up, you and Sokolov will be safely out of the country. Sipping hot coffee on a plane back home. What did you say? Hmm? What did you say? Sipping hot coffee on a... You're gonna drink that foul mud? On the victory flight home? Okay then. What would you drink? Tea, of course. In the two years since Sokolov's asylum operation, I've spent all my time making preparations. And now is the time to show some results. Fox is a next-generation espionage organization designed to update us for 21st century operations that I propose to the CIA. Fox sends individuals who excel in espionage and special tactics on solo sneaking missions like this one. A next generation unit that combines the skills of special forces units like the SAS and Green Berets with the know-how of an infiltration and espionage unit. Military politics never was my strong suit. What I'm trying to say is stealth. This is a stealth mission crucial to the coming Cold War. The CIA director has always frowned upon Fox, but if this mission succeeds, Fox will be added to the CIA as an official unit. I intend to make Fox the leader in special operations. And to that end, this mission must succeed. Right. I'm counting on you, Snake. Part of your mission is to demonstrate to the brass the core concepts behind Fox. Leave no evidence. That's the essence of Fox and avoid engagement with the enemy. Understood. Not only that, I mean leave nothing behind, including weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat, even bodily waste. Yeah, when I do my business, I bury it good. What? What's wrong? That's the American way. American way for what? To handle defecation. You're gonna bury it? Yeah. Bring it home with you. What? That's what we did in SAS. The U.S. Army is sloppy. They do things well, but not perfectly. Here in Fox, we're doing things my way. Got it? Yes, sir. Major. What is it? It's about your code name. Major Tom? Yeah. Where'd you get that name? From a tunnel. A tunnel? That's right. Snake, have you seen the movie The Great Escape? No. It's a movie about a determined group of allied POWs trapped in a German POW camp who plan an escape. The POWs dig three tunnels for their escape. They named them Dick, Harry, and Tom. I see. So Tom was an escape tunnel. Did they make it? Out of the camp? Of course. One of the tunnels was even discovered before it was finished, but eventually they do make it out. I get it now. 
So Tom was the tunnel they used to escape. Uh, yes, that's right. What is it? Um, well, actually, I, I'm not sure if I remember correctly. Major. Oh, it's all right. It's uh, Tom, Snake. Tom is the escape tunnel. Yes, no question about it. Hmm. Major, what about my code name? You mean Naked Snake? Yeah, what does it mean? It's because snakes slither through the grass unnoticed to those around them. No, I mean the naked part. It means without embellishment, devoid of a specified quality. In other words, basic. Why is that my code name? I explained that the virtuous mission is designed to test the effectiveness of Fox, right? Right. And the procedure used for this mission will represent the modus operandi of Fox for future missions. In other words... The essence of Fox. Naked and pure. Exactly. And there's the fact that you went in practically naked. No weapons, no equipment. I see. Means more than I realized. Yes, clever, isn't it? But don't leave yourself naked to the enemy. Roger that. Snake, what's the situation? No problem so far. Except... something seems odd. What seems odd? These men are on routine guard, but they seem strangely alert. It's a drill for a top-secret new weapon. Of course, security is going to be tight. Yes, but a drill is just a drill. But these guys... it almost seems like it's not. Not a drill? Exactly. And this is Soviet territory. But these guys are acting as tensed up as the guys on the front lines. Like they expect the enemy to attack them any moment. You think they know about our operation? No, but something is strange. Be on guard. I will. Major. What is it? About this gunship you sent to Tselinoyarsk. Yes? How in the world did you manage that? Manage what? That's a special operations craft that hasn't been tested in actual combat, right? That's exactly right. The plane, originally a special operations cargo aircraft, based on the Air Force's C-130 transport, has been customized just for this mission. It can fly solo into Soviet territory to insert or retrieve special forces, and it has all the needed specs for this mission. It has a maximum speed of 380 miles per hour, cruising speed of 335 miles per hour, and a maximum altitude of 33,000 feet. For electronic equipment, it boasts terrain following and terrain avoidance radars, an inertial navigation system, radar alarm system, and a forward-looking infrared device. It even has chaff and flare dispensers. It's also equipped with enough firepower to dispense of forces that may attack you during your exit maneuver on this mission. Two 40mm machine guns and two 20mm Gatling guns. Even the upper armor of the Soviet's main battle tank, the M62, is 30 to 36 millimeters on the turret, 30 millimeters on the body, so the gunship has plenty of power to take them out. And, as you said before, even if you were attacked by a tank unit, you'd be safe and sound. Very impressive, but... Isn't it, though? Yeah, but how did you get it here? Must you ask me that question? Yeah. You sure? Now? Is there some reason I shouldn't? Yes, I'd say so. Understood. Forget that I asked. I will. Snake, I've completed the double check on the Fulton recovery system. Any problems? None. Leave your recovery to us. Excellent. I suppose I should explain the procedure once more before the actual maneuver. No. I see. Well, the Fulton recovery system allows for rapid recovery of personnel from enemy territory, and it's perfect for these kinds of special operations. <sighs> Basically, how it works is the plane flies by and snags a nylon lift line that the soldier has grabbed onto and that's been elevated by a balloon. The Fulton recovery system was first designed in the 1940s as a method of picking up mail for the American Postal Service. During the Korean War, that system was redesigned to recover personnel. Jack, an ancillary organization to the CIA... Yes, good old Jack. It stands for Joint Advisory Commission Korea. Isn't that something? Hmm. So, Jack first used the Fulton surface-to-air recovery system to extract agents from North Korea and mainland China. Let's go over the procedure once more, to be on the safe side. First, the plane drops a canister about the size of a coffin to you. Inside, you'll find a balloon, a 1,500-foot cable, and a harness that attaches to your suit. Take the items out, attach the line to your suit, fill the balloon with helium, and send the line up. The plane will approach at 125 miles per hour. 
snag the cable just below the balloon with a hook on the nose of the aircraft, and whisk you away. Assuming the pickup is successful, you'll be reeled in with a winch and pulled to safety into the rear of the aircraft. Got it? Hmm. Snake? Yeah, I got it. I got it real good. Were you listening? Yeah. All right, then. You did an excellent halo jump. Not really. I didn't land in the right spot. A jumper who lost his pack on the first real halo jump. That'll make a good story for you. Who cares? There are no records of your operations. I know, but... What, you're embarrassed? No, I'm not embarrassed. It's the boss, isn't it? <sighs> what about the boss? Nothing, paramedic. Doesn't sound like nothing. Nothing to do with the boss, I mean. It has something to do with the boss, but you don't want to say so. Yeah, kinda. I understand, Snake. The boss has done a lot of work on the military study of halo jumps. And Snake here wanted to give a perfect performance on the first real jump. You know, to show respect to the mother of the technique. Major! Snake, uh, I thought you were over and out. <sighs> wow, is that right? You got something to say. No. I bet you do. Mm, not really. I just think it's kind of sweet of you to think like that. I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or an insult. It's a compliment, Snake. So tell me, is it true? What? Not that. Is it true that the boss really worked on research for Halo jumps? Oh, that. Yes, it's true. Halo stands for High Altitude Low Opening. It's a jump technique developed for covert insertions into enemy territory, just like the area you're in. A plane flies at 10,000 feet or above to avoid detection by ground forces, and the jumper free falls until he's within a 1,000 foot altitude above the target area, when he finally opens his chute. By using this technique, the chances of revealing the parachute landing to the enemy are marginal. The halo technique was originally developed in France. This was partly due to popularity of parachuting as a sport since the end of World War II. And the boss was an instructor for the research that was carried out there. In 1957, at the JFK Special Operations Center at Fort Bragg, the boss was invited to instruct at the first ever US military halo school. Of course, none of this is on the record, but she's the mother of modern day special forces. Snake, the fake death and revival pills we gave you are the latest in internal medicines developed for intelligence ops by the CIA's technology division. You can use the fake death pill to send yourself into a death-like state for a limited period of time. Use it wisely, and you should be able to fool the enemy into thinking you're really dead. It may come in handy if you ever find yourself cornered. To revive yourself from the fake death state, use the revival pill. But remember, timing is critical. The effect will be ruined if you revive right in front of your enemy. Interesting. But how does it work? What do you mean? I don't feel right taking some pill I don't know anything about. How does it make me look dead? How's it going to affect my body? Well, Snake, about that... I get it. I should ask paramedic. Paramedic! Allow me to explain. You know how there are animals in nature that play dead? Like weevils, ladybugs, chickadees, possums, and the like? Well, the fake death pill takes the natural art of playing dead and applies it to the spy world. When you take the fake death pill, it causes your body to rapidly secrete a number of chemicals adenosine and serotonin, as well as opioid peptides, such as methionine and kethylene. Those chemicals act to induce a state of hibernation, causing your heart rate, your breathing rate, and your body temperature to drop dramatically. It'll truly look like you've dropped dead upon initial inspection. The revival pill, to put it simply, is a counteracting agent to the fake death pill. When you take it, it causes your body to secrete stimulants like noradrenaline and other chemicals such as naloxone, which block the effects of the fake death pill. Basically, it wakes you up. Does that help? Yeah. Okay, I'll try and explain it in more detail. The secretion of methionine and kethylene triggered by the fake death pill causes the opioid receptors. Oh, okay. I think I get it now. You sure? Yeah. But you must want to know a little bit more. There are three types of receptors, delta, kappa, and mu. Methionine and kephalene acts on the- Uh, paramedic, I think Snake understands now. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah, clear as crystal. But- Major, I've got enough info about the pills, so I'm going to get back to the mission now. Yes, you do that. Hey, wait a- Ugh.
Major, what kind of place is this secret design bureau that Sokolov is heading? Hmm, the Soviets have a number of secret design bureaus like this one, each engaged in cutting-edge research. OKB-1, the bureau where the Voskhod spacecraft was developed and which plays a leading role in the Soviet space program, is one of those installations. Most of them are located in secret cities built in isolated areas, and we don't even know their exact locations, much less the nature of their research. And Sokolov's OKB-754 is the most secret bureau of them all. The intelligence communities of the West have tried time and again to find out what they're working on, but they failed consistently. So you have absolutely no idea what Sokolov is developing? We've got nothing. Then how did you get the information for this mission? It can't have been from Sokolov. From the boss. The boss? That's right. She has her own intelligence channels that she cultivated during the last war. She shared what she learned with us. That we were able to get the green light for this mission at all is thanks to her pull with the powers that be at the CIA. In other words, this mission would never have come together without the boss's help in a number of respects. Major, tell me about Sokolov's past work. Hmm. I assume you already know that Sokolov was the developer of the multi-engine cluster. The multi-engine cluster is exactly that, a system for fitting a single rocket with multiple engines. The Vostok rocket, for instance, had 32 engines. With the technology they had, it was difficult for the Soviets to develop large engines with massive thrust. So instead, they decided to focus on using multiple smaller engines to achieve the desired thrust. With this method, though, maintaining the fuel balance between the various engines was a major problem. Sokolov was the man who provided the solution. And that's what earned him the job as the head of the design bureau? Apparently so. So this secret weapon is some kind of ballistic device? Well, that's my best guess. We don't know for sure, but... You'll find out soon. As soon as I get Sokolov out of here. I'm counting on you. Snake, are you wearing that mask again? Yeah. For some reason it feels kind of... nostalgic. Yeah, well, um, for some reason I don't like it. Why not? Something about that face just rubs me the wrong way. It looks fine to me. But if you hate it that much, why'd you give it to me in the first place? Well, that mask was originally created for use in another mission. An agent was supposed to disguise himself as a Soviet officer and sneak into an enemy installation. We had it all set to go, but certain circumstances forced us to abort the mission. With the mission cancelled, the mask was going to be thrown away. But the guy at the CIA's tech division who created it pitched a fit. Why'd he do that? He said it was too good to throw away. Yeah. According to him, that mask is a revolutionary new design that lets the wearer blink, something that wasn't possible up till now. I'd think you'd want to make the lips move before bothering with the blinking. Yes, I thought so too, but for some reason he's obsessed with making it blink. Whoever he is, he sounds like a crackpot. Hmm. Well, he does good work, but I spend three days a month just dealing with the complaints we get about him. Oh well, never mind. Anyway, I decided to put this mask we had in storage to good use by hiding your identity from the gunship crew. I get it. So this mask is based on a model somewhere. That's right. What do I do if I meet that guy? That's not going to be a problem. Why not? The man the mask is based on is a GRU officer. You're in the KGB's sphere of influence. Chances are you won't run into him. And if I do? Beat the crap out of him. Snake, stay alert. The KGB and GRU both have their sights set on Sokolov. GRU is a military espionage outfit, the intelligence wing of the Soviet Defense Ministry's General Staff Office. It competes with the KGB, which is under the Ministry of Internal Affairs, and the two are always watching each other. Never let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Exactly. Now, added to that rivalry, there's a vicious power struggle going on between the Khrushchev faction and the anti-Khrushchev faction. So Khrushchev is using the KGB, and Volgin and the anti-Khrushchev forces are using the GRU? That's the idea. The two factions are fighting over Sokolov. We're in an extremely dangerous situation here. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Get Sokolov out of there safely. He must not be turned over to the KGB or to the GRU. Sokolov took off in the direction of the rope bridge. Get after him. Hurry! Major, tell me a little bit more about the space race. In 1957, the Soviet Union succeeded in launching their first artificial satellite, Sputnik, into orbit. Having been beaten to the chase by the Soviets, 
the US government accelerated its own space program in an effort to catch up. The following year, the space development programs of the various service branches were united to form the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA. That same year, the Mercury program was launched with the goal of putting a man into space. Seven candidates were chosen from the military as the first astronauts. These were the men with the right stuff. But as you know, it was a Soviet cosmonaut, Yuri Gagarin, who made the first successful manned spaceflight three years ago. NASA's first successful ballistic flight came one month after Gagarin's mission, with the Freedom 7 carrying Alan Shepard into space. After that, with America still lagging behind the Soviets in orbital flight, President Kennedy made a momentous decision. That America would put a man on the moon before the end of the decade. Yeah, I heard that speech, but a lot of guys I knew weren't real happy about it. They said no one was going to make them go on a mission to blow up some damn moon base. But rocket research and missile research are closely related. Imagine, if you will, a Soviet Union able to send wave after wave of nuclear missiles raining down on Washington from a base on the surface of the moon. Even if that's still a long way from reality, if we lose the initiative, we may never get it back. We're left with no choice but to keep moving forward one step at a time. The Gemini program launched two years ago represents the initial step towards establishing a moon base. And yet, I don't want to call President Kennedy a liar, but I simply can't imagine that in six years man will have reached the moon. I don't know. I never even thought we'd make it up into space. I guess it all depends on whether you have the will to make it happen. Perhaps you're right. Major, didn't you say that the boss was in the SAS with you? Yes, we formed the 22nd SAS Regiment together. When the SAS, the British Special Air Service, was first established, they invited the boss on board as a special advisor. In fact, you might say it was the boss who put together Rayforce and L Detachment, which laid the groundwork for today's SAS. You won't find her name in the history books, but her contributions were many and great. Yeah, the real heroes are never made public. Not in our line of work, anyway. The dummy run on Heliopolis and the nighttime raids on German air bases in North Africa were her idea as well. Yes, she was always one step ahead of the rest of us, both in thought and action. It's true what they say. Who dares wins. The motto of the SAS. Precisely. The motto itself is a tribute to her service. Needless to say, the SAS has become a model for special forces units all over the world. In that sense, the boss really is the mother of special forces. Major, have you been able to contact the boss? No. What about you? No good. You really think it's bad reception? We're looking into it. Major. Snake, you've got more important things to worry about than contacting the boss. Right now, Sokolov is out there wandering around the jungle alone. What are you going to do if he gets caught by the enemy? <sighs> We're still looking into why we lost contact with the boss. I'll let you know as soon as we find anything out. In the meantime, it's your job to find Sokolov and get him to safety. Got it? Major, what's this Grand and Design Bureau Sokolov was talking about? OKB-812. It's the same type of top-secret facility as Sokolov's own OKB-754. The director is a man by the name of Alexander Leonovich Granin. He's Sokolov's arch-rival, and the two have competed fiercely against each other since the days of the war. To hear Sokolov tell it, though, the rivalry was really all in Granin's head. In any case, Granin seems to harbour an unusually intense hatred for Sokolov. Knowing that Sokolov was protected under the aegis of Khrushchev, Granin threw in his lot with Volgin, the vanguard of the anti-Khrushchev movement. Apparently, Granin meant to use the funds provided by these opposition forces in order to defeat his old foe. Volgin, for his part, was intrigued by the possibility of using the high-tech weapons Granin created in the fight against Khrushchev. Thus, the two formed an alliance, and Volgin took the Granin Design Bureau under his control. But now Volgin's got his sights set on Sokolov. Yes, it would seem that he and Granin aren't getting along so well after all. Major, do you know anything about this Gru Colonel Sokolov was talking about? Yes. Who is he? A most dangerous man indeed. His name is Yevgeny Borisovich Volgin. His codename in the West is Thunderbolt. 
He's gained a reputation as the most brutal and cold-blooded of the Soviet spymasters. During the war, Volgin was assigned to the domestic branch of the NKVD. He was stationed in the rear of the Soviet line to catch and punish any troops who tried to retreat or desert. He's also notorious for his accomplishments in anti-guerrilla operations in the Ukraine and the Baltic states. Apparently, he likes to boast that he disposed of over 100,000 anti-communists. We also know that he was instrumental in putting down the 1953 insurrection in East Germany and the 1956 uprising in Hungary. He is truly a fearsome man. There's no telling what he might be plotting. Be careful. I will. Major, you said the enemy was KGB, right? I did. What unit are they from? The 6th Directorate? No, the 9th Directorate. The 9th? Yes. But I thought that was... Exactly. It's the unit that protects the Kremlin and provides bodyguards for high-level VIPs. But they're assigned to protect party and government figures. I thought that only meant high-ranking officials and their families. And now they're being sent out to stand watch over a field exercise? That's the idea. What's really going on? I don't know. <sighs> what I do know is that the director of the Ninth Directorate is a well-known protege of Khrushchev. The Premier may have wanted to assign this mission to someone he knew he could trust. So he can't trust any other units? Ever since the withdrawal from Cuba, Khrushchev's position has been getting weaker day by day. This secret test is an act of desperation by a cornered man. If nothing else, the completion of Sokolov's new weapon in this test should help re-establish Khrushchev's authority in Moscow. So what you're saying is, there's also a good chance that whoever doesn't want to see that happen is going to try and interfere. Most likely, Khrushchev must have anticipated this and sent his most loyal unit, his trump card, to make sure that all goes well. Major, what should I do with this wreck of a drone? Just leave it there. Are you sure? Yes. But isn't this thing top secret? Yes, it is. After the U-2 spy plane incident four years ago, plans were laid out for future spy missions in Soviet airspace to be carried out by an unmanned craft. That craft was the D-21 spy drone, the basis of the one you came in on. The D-21 is launched from a craft called the M-21. The M-21 itself is a derivative of the A-12, a supersonic long-range spy plane currently being developed as the successor to the U-2. However, for this mission, we used a modified YF-12A, a long-range interceptor version of the A-12. After being released from the mothership, the drone can achieve speeds upwards of Mark III at high altitude using its ramjet engine. It can't be shot down by ground-to-air missiles, and it's nearly undetectable by radar. With Selinoyarsk in such a high state of alert after our last escapade, this was the only reliable way to get you in. This is all top secret military technology. Are you telling me I'm supposed to just leave it here? That's right. Why? The purpose of Operation Snake Eater is to send an American agent into the field in order to eliminate a defector and traitor, namely the boss. Part of that mission involves making sure the Soviets find out what we're doing. So we have to leave behind some kind of evidence that the US was involved. Don't worry. The technologically sensitive components of the craft were rigged to self-destruct when it landed. The only thing the Soviets are going to find is a pile of American-made scrap metal. Got it. Just one thing, though. What is it? I think they'd better redesign the landing impact buffer. People are going to get hurt landing that thing. I'll let them know. The Soviet intelligence community must be up in arms about the boss's defection. The great Voyevoda has abandoned America and embraced the Soviet Union. Voyevoda? Apparently, that's what they call the boss behind the Iron Curtain. It means warrior or mighty soldier in Russian. When used to refer to a woman, it means something close to Lady Knight. In Russia, where they've had a number of female emperors throughout their history, it's a term of great respect, well, poetic in a way. The boss's exploits have made her name famous in the East as well. Major, why did the boss defect? I don't know, but I will tell you this. America is all too eager to get rid of her. What do you mean? She knows too many of our secrets. If she were to relay all the top secret information she knows to the Soviet bloc, it would put us at a severe disadvantage. It might even lead to the downfall of the West. Even if we survive, the boss is still too much of a hero to us. 
With her in the Soviet camp, we'd suffer a fatal loss of morale at home. There are even whispers that some of the less stalwart elements of the military might follow her example and defect themselves. I assume you're aware that since your last mission, several key figures within the CIA have been placed under house arrest. Yeah. The loss of the boss has been a painful one indeed. What about you? <laughs> Me? I still can't believe it. As a comrade, I would have placed my trust in her before my own family. But now that I think about it, the boss always seemed to have an aura of mystery about her. I never would have expected it to manifest in this way, though. <sighs> oh, well, it won't do to get all misty-eyed about it. She's an enemy now, worthy of nothing more than our contempt. Understood. Major. What is it? Why did the boss betray us? Leave it alone, Snake. But... We've been through this before. Besides, asking for reasons now won't change anything. I thought I'd find out if I met her face to face. I thought for sure she'd tell me, but... Then you'll have to find your own answers. By completing my mission? Yes. <sighs> Major, what's this temptation Eva was talking about? In the Old Testament of the Bible, Eve was seduced by a snake into tasting the fruit of knowledge. By eating the forbidden fruit, Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command and were cast out from the Garden of Eden. Thus, it was the snake who led mankind into original sin. Come to think of it, I did break a rib in the virtuous mission. Maybe that's where Eva came from. But the one who tempted Adam into eating the forbidden fruit was Eve. You may be working together, but she's still a KGB operative. Don't let your guard down. I don't intend to. Major, I appreciate you allowing me to use weapons, but shouldn't I be carrying some rubles? You mean fake currency? Right. Snake, do you remember the Francis Gary Powers incident back in 1960? Powers was flying a U-2 on a spy mission for the CIA in Soviet airspace. He was shot down and taken prisoner. His confession brought to light the fact that the CIA was spying in Soviet airspace. As a result, the U.S.-Soviet summit scheduled for two weeks later was cancelled. Yeah, I remember. U-2 pilots are required to carry items that mask their identity. Powers was carrying ruble, mark and lira coins, as well as French gold coins. He was also carrying two gold watches and seven women's rings. All of these objects were meant to conceal his national origins. But for this mission, we've got to demonstrate to the Khrushchev regime that America is involved. There's no need to conceal your origins. And besides, all you need to do is complete your mission. As long as you're not captured or killed, the details will take care of themselves. Okay. Thanks to last week's nuclear incident, the Soviet Union is now on secondary alert. We're one step away from a nuclear war. DEFCON 2, huh? In American parlance, yes. From what Western intelligence has been able to gather, the radical elements in the Soviet command are showing signs of impatience. They say we're on the brink of World War III here. And with Khrushchev's position getting weaker every day, I worry whether he'll be able to hold them back. One week. Yes. America must eliminate the boss by its own hand to prove its innocence. There is no other way to resolve the crisis. Everything rests on your shoulders, Snake. Failure is not an option. I know. I see you've equipped the binoculars. Yep. Scouting is the bread and butter of sneaking missions. Are you finding them useful? Yeah. The performance is top-notch, and they're easy to use. These are some good binoculars. Really? Sigint will be pleased to hear that. Why does Sigint care? Because he made them. Now I get it. What do you mean? Don't worry about it. From what I hear, it took him more than a year to finish them. I'll admit they're good binoculars, but what took him so long? Was it grinding the lenses? No, it was the style. The style? Yes. He said he could never get the body design just right. Thanks to all his blasted tinkering, we went three times over budget. He'd better have a will ready before I get done with him. <sighs> Major, why was the boss there? Did they detect my infiltration? That's impossible. The drone shouldn't have been picked up by their radar at all. Then how did she know? It couldn't have been a... That's also out of the question. We've taken all measures to ensure this mission stays secret. Then what's going on? I don't know. <sighs> it won't do you any good to dwell on it, Snake. Major. Yes? I was just wondering, why do they call you Zero? 
What do you mean? We go back a long ways, but I just realized I never asked you why you're called Zero. You want to know where it comes from? Yeah, if that's all right. That's a bit nostalgic, really. Nostalgic? Hmm, the first British intelligence outfit was established in 1909. The head of the Foreign Intelligence Division was a man named Mansfield George Smith Cumming. He was referred to simply as C after the first letter of his last name. Since then, out of respect for Cumming, the heads of the SIS have traditionally taken the name of C. And James Bond's boss is called M. That's right. I myself was once known as O. And that's where zero comes from? Precisely. In another sense, though, it signifies a ghost, one whose true identity must remain a mystery, the primogenitor of the solo sneaking operation. Is that so? Eva was right when she said that operating in an unknown jungle at night is extremely dangerous. In my former outfit, the SAS, we'd always be sure to set up camp before sunset and wait until daybreak before setting out again. Being able to stay in that abandoned factory made things a lot easier for you. You ought to be thanking, Eva. Snake, I heard you got a scientist disguise from Eva. Yeah. Go to Uniform on the camouflage screen and choose Scientist to disguise yourself as a scientist. Scientist, huh? But it won't do you any good to go around the jungle wearing a scientist disguise. No one would be that stupid. You're right. No one would think of going around the jungle in a scientist disguise. If they did, they'd have to be a fool. Oh, oh, more than a fool. A complete dumbass. Don't you think so, Snake? Yeah. Snake? What's wrong, Major? I should be asking you the same question. Why are you wearing that outfit? I wanted to try it on. Did you listen to a word that I said? What are you thinking, dressing like a scientist in the middle of the jungle? Look at your camo index. You're a walking bullseye. Get back into your camouflage now. Ah, lighten up. What was that? Nothing. Major. What is it? That attack chopper is parked on the heliport. The one from before? Yeah. The one that took away the Shagohod during the Virtuous mission. Major, that attack chopper is here. The one from the heliport? Yeah. Sigint. What's up? The chopper we were talking about is parked at the heliport. The one that was hauling the Shagohod in the Virtuous mission? Yeah. Perhaps it's an armed variation of the MI-8 hip. No. Some of it looks the same, but the overall shape is different. It's got stub wings, and the cockpit canopy looks like an angular greenhouse. No kidding. Then it must be some kind of new model. I've heard stories recently that the Soviets are developing a flying infantry combat vehicle. That's gotta be it. A flying infantry combat vehicle? Yeah, a transport chopper with troop-carrying capabilities. Think of it as an attack transport chopper version of France's AMX VCI or the Soviet BMP. They must be doing field tests on the initial prototype. A next-generation chopper that's a little smaller than the hip. Maybe we should call it a hind. Hmm, not bad. It's cool with me. Then it's settled. We'll refer to that new type helicopter as a hind from now on. The hind you see parked at the heliport must not be ready to fly. You don't need to worry about it taking off. If you're going to destroy it, now might be your chance. I heard you defeated the pain. Yeah, it wasn't easy. And there's still three more of them left. Four. Hmm? There are still four more Cobras left, including their leader, the boss. I'm aware of that. Good. Snake, did you kill another one of the Cobras? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was the end. Good work. Now you won't have to deal with him later. I guess so. What's wrong? It's nothing. Surely you're not going to tell me you wanted to test your skills against a legendary sniper that even the boss respected? Mm. Snake, this isn't a contest or sport. This is war. The only thing you should be thinking about is carrying out your mission. Yeah, I know. Major, do you know anything about this, Tanya? No. Nothing? Not a thing. Why not? He must have checked up on Sokolov when he defected two years ago. If he had a lover... Make no mistake, we conducted a thorough investigation, but there was nothing about him having a mistress. Maybe you didn't notice. That's impossible. Then he must have become involved with her after he was taken back to Russia. I wonder. What is it, Major? Something wrong? I don't think Sokolov would take a lover. Why not? I still remember him two years ago. 
After we got him across the border, the first words he spoke from his hospital bed after he regained consciousness were, are my wife and daughter safe? And right up until the time he was taken back to Russia, he kept begging me over and over to take care of his family, almost as if he was delirious. Sokolov is a man who loves his family. Betraying his wife is something he'd... Major. What is it? People change. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Yeah, maybe. Major, I saw that Tatiana woman again. Hmm. We've been analyzing our data, but so far we've been unable to find anyone matching that description. Maybe her posting was so obscure that we simply overlooked it. Or maybe she's such a VIP that all the data on her has been classified. That's a possibility, but I'd be tempted to go with the first explanation. We'll keep going over the data. Thanks. Major, I've made it to the ruins, but the door won't open. Eva must have bolted it from the inside. Why would she do that? Think about it for a minute. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Oh, that. Make sense now? Yeah, but she wouldn't bolt the door just because... Because of what? I mean, why would she be so mad at me? I was just taking a little... Snake, what the hell are you talking about? She obviously doesn't want the enemy to see her meeting with you. Oh. You've got a one-track mind. Yeah. What in the world did you do? What a strange coincidence, though. Coincidence? Well, Rykov's full name is Ivan Rydenovich Rykov. And? Ivan is the Russian equivalent of John, and a common nickname for John is Jack. Ah. <sighs> You know, in Russian folklore, the youngest son in a family often receives the shabbiest treatment, but is actually cleverer than his brothers, and has the happiest ending of all. That son is usually named Ivan. I don't have any brothers. Really? I could have sworn you had several. What? Snake, have you found Rykov? Yeah, but he got away. What? Sorry, Major, I'll get- Stop your blathering and go take him out already! Okay, but- What are you waiting for? Get going! Major, why are you so pissed off all of a sudden? You have something against this guy? No, no, it's just every time I think of that face, it makes me furious. Doesn't it make you? Well... Just get moving. Knock him out and steal his clothes. Snake? Hmm. Snake! What? Oh, Major, what do you want? What happened? You've been acting strangely ever since you were washed down the river. I'm fine. I disagree. Really? Yes. Hmm. Did something happen to you in that river? No. Don't lie, Snake. I'm trying to help you. All right. But you might not believe me when I tell you. I'll believe it. I trust you. Okay, then. When I was in that river... Yes? I saw... the other side. The other side? Yeah. And by the other side, you mean... Well, the world of the dead, I guess. Oh. And the sorrow was there. He was sad. No, more than that. He said I was part of his sorrow. I see. Um, Snake, would you excuse me for a moment? Huh? Sure. Paramedic, what in the hell is wrong with Snake? Beats me. Maybe he got a nasty bump on the head. You really think that's all? What are you implying? Uh, Major. I mean, he's always been a little bit... different. Uh, I thought maybe... Good point. I was just thinking that myself. Major! Uh, what, what is it, Snake? I can hear you. Uh, ah, well, well, in any case, I'm, I'm glad you're all right. Uh, y yeah, me too. It's good to see you're back to, uh, uh normal. I'll be your eyes. Makes me... Want to cry? Why is that? It reminds me of something a certain spy once said. His name was Oleg Penkovsky, a Western spy who worked inside Gru. He was arrested by the KGB and executed last year. They say he sent a letter to the DCI at the time saying, I must remain on this front line in order to be your eyes and ears. His code name was Hero. A hero whose name will never be known. Yes. That's the world we live in. The Cynthia that Eva mentioned was a famous lady spy who worked for Britain during the Second World War. Her real name was Amy Elizabeth Thorpe. 
She was a lovely, intelligent woman, and she used those charms as a weapon to extract numerous secrets from the enemy. They say her most brilliant achievement was getting the French Vichy government's naval ciphers. But don't let yourself be taken in by Eva's charms. I'll be careful. Huh? Snake, take a look in your backpack. What the? My food's gone. I busted my ass to get those snakes, and now I won't get a chance to eat them. Major, what the hell is going on here? Don't ask me, ask Eva. Eva? When you aim your handgun in first-person view, align the front sight and the rear sight of the gun with the target, then fire. No laser sight? What? A laser sight. I heard the military was developing them, but... You want a laser sight? Uh-huh. A well-trained soldier has no use for a laser sight. No training wheels on this mission, Snake. Uh. Snake. What's up, boss? Don't you what's up me. Okay, then. What is it? I'm talking about your camouflage. Why aren't you using it? Oh. When you don't use any camouflage at all, you stick out like a sore thumb. Didn't you listen to a word I said? Well, I was listening, uh, but... Then start using your camouflage. <sighs> is that clear? Yeah. Hunters have known about camouflage since ancient times. But it's only quite recently, since the 18th century, that it's been applied to military operations. The first camouflage introduced to the military was a solid-colored uniform designed to blend in with the battlefield. It was really more of a protective coloring than true camouflage. Camouflage, in the modern sense of the word, wasn't introduced until the First World War. During that war, weapons such as aircraft, cannon, and warships were painted in camouflage colors. But it was almost never used to disguise individual soldiers. The widespread use of camouflage began in World War II. The Germans and the Russians in particular made active use of it in battle. Nowadays, with the Cold War raging, the Eastern Bloc has been hard at work developing all sorts of camouflage patterns. In the West, the French implemented it in their paratrooper corps, an SAS during the Wars of Independence in Indochina. I never saw it used in Korea, though. America has lagged behind other countries in incorporating camouflage. They're only just beginning to consider introducing it into certain units. Why is that? Apparently, there are those in the U.S. military who consider camouflage too passive a technique. Morons. You're telling me. But now more and more people are beginning to appreciate how useful and important camouflage can be. I'm sure the brass will see the light soon enough. Generally speaking, there are two methods of using camouflage. Concealing and disruptive, right? Right. Concealing involves disguising yourself with colors that match your surroundings, allowing you to melt into the background and avoid detection. Leaf patterns are one example of this type of camouflage. Disruptive, on the other hand, involves painting the target so that it no longer stands out in three dimensions, thus making it more difficult to perceive its contours. Like a tiger stripe pattern. Exactly. Which type of camouflage is most effective depends on the mission environment. It's essential to choose the right type of camouflage for each situation. Got it. In my day, I did my share of sneaking into enemy territory. You mean since World War II? Yeah. Mostly snatch missions. Snatch mission? That's where you abduct an enemy officer without killing him, right? Right. That's where I got the original idea for CQC. In a snatch mission, taking out the target's escorts by shooting them is not an option. If the enemy hears the gunshot, they'll know there's an intruder and tighten security. And the target will sense danger and try to get away. You needed a way to take out the guards and secure the target without making a sound. That was the idea. The CQC style that you and I developed is based on the techniques I cultivated during those missions. So... First time I've heard this. Huh? You've never told me any of this before. I didn't? No. Why? Hmm. Why didn't you tell me this before? Why now? I have my reasons. The techniques themselves, the strikes and the throws, are only one aspect of CQC. In order to make those techniques work, it's essential to have a strong body as well. 
But the most important tools in CQC are your wits, the ability to instantly comprehend and analyze the enemy's behavior and psychological condition to determine your actions. In short, mind, body, and technique. That's right. CQC can only be used effectively when all three of those elements are combined. Sounds like some sort of oriental martial art. It does, doesn't it? Anyway, it's not something that's easily taught or easily mastered. It takes rigorous training and years of experience to learn it. You helped create it, and you're the only one who can use it. Except you, right? Yeah. In the jungle, it's absolutely crucial to keep your position secret from the enemy. Sometimes even the smallest sound can be enough to give your position away and get you killed. You'll have to make sure your weapons and equipment don't make noise bumping around. Use tape to secure metal objects and other items that seem likely to produce noise. After you've secured your gear, jump up and down to see whether it makes a sound. Don't worry. I remember the drill. There is one weapon greater than any other in battle. Do you know what that is? Yeah. What? Do we have to go through this again? Yes. Will. An unflinching will to survive no matter what. Exactly. The will to carry out your mission and return home alive will see you through even the most desperate of situations. It's the most potent weapon in your arsenal. Don't forget that, no matter what. If you want to survive in the jungle, you're going to need to hone all of your senses. An unnatural movement in the undergrowth, a tiny shadow peeking out through the trees in the distance. Always keep an eye out for any signs of the enemy's presence. Your sense of hearing is equally important. Visibility is poor in the jungle, so you've got to learn to pick up the enemy's presence from the sounds you hear around you. Always be listening for that one snap of a twig among the chirping of the birds and the babbling of the brooks. Your sense of smell is also important. Body odor, sweat, gunpowder, food. These faint smells wafting in the wind will tell you where the enemy... Uh, no. No? I can't smell. You? What now? I can't smell. Not at all? Nope. Not even a little bit? Not a thing. Oh. Well then, you'll just have to trust in your instincts as a gamer. Tell me, what's the advantage of a solo sneaking mission? It's easier to go in undetected than with a group. Exactly. And therein lies the entire reasoning behind this virtuous mission. This mission into Soviet territory is a violation of international law. If this gets out to the public, we'll be faced with an international crisis even greater than the one four years ago. Four years ago? The U-2 crash. Failure is not an option. Not a problem. I'll get Sokolov out without them ever knowing I was here. What the hell have you been doing these past five years anyway? What's with you all of a sudden? It's like you've forgotten everything I taught you. That's not true. Then why do you keep getting spotted? <sighs> you keep getting spotted because your camouflage isn't effective enough and because you're not being careful enough. Pay attention to your camouflage index. Watch how the enemy moves and proceed one step at a time. Is that clear? <sighs> Is that clear? Okay, boss. Snake, do you know what epinephrine is? What's with the questions? Well, do you? No. Also known as adrenaline? Never heard of it. Really? Nope. I have. Good for you. Do you want to hear about it? Not really. Oh, I think you should hear about it. Here we go. So, epinephrine is a type of hormone it's secreted from the adrenal glands in high-stress situations, like when you're exercising or you're under pressure. The epinephrine is released into the bloodstream and stimulates special receptor cells on various organs throughout the body. This causes the heart to beat faster, the blood vessels to constrict, and the respiratory passages to expand. It also raises blood pressure. You ever notice how you're faster and stronger than normal when you're under stress? That's because of epinephrine, and when you're bleeding, it... Paramedic. Yeah. Is there a point to all of this? Of course. In the alert phase, your body secretes epinephrine, and so your stamina won't be depleted as fast. Uh-huh. There. Good thing I told you, huh? As always, paramedic. What's up?
Are you a medic or a doctor? I'm a well-respected physician, or I was until I joined the CIA. How is your reputation? My what? Your reputation. Oh, that. How was it? Why? Don't you trust me? That's not what I meant. Fine, then. Uh-huh. So? So what? Your reputation. How was it? My, you're relentless. Hey, I'm a snake. So? My reputation was spotless. I'm highly skilled, patient, and good-looking to boot. Everybody wanted to see me. What else would you expect? Hmm. No, seriously. Incidentally, her nickname back then was Quack. Major. Is that true? Hmm, is what true? About your nickname. No! Well, maybe a few people did call me that. So you were a quack? No. Well, yes and no. I mean, in a sense I was, but then again I wasn't. <laughs> Snake, her skills as a doctor are beyond reproach. You have my word on that. Yes, that's exactly what I was trying to say, Snake. Then why did they call her quack? It's because she... Never mind that. It doesn't matter. We've got a job to do and we have to stay focused. Besides, my past doesn't have anything to do with the mission and... Because she never shuts up. Yes, that's it. No, that's not it. Snake, tell him that's not true. <sighs> Say something. I'd better get back to the mission. Yes, you do that. Just a minute. Snake, don't you hang up on me. If you have any questions about stamina or healing, just ask me. I'll tell you everything you need to know. It'll have to be over the radio, though. So you won't be able to see me naked, then? Yeah, I'm devastated. But I'll bet that 50 years from now you'll be able to see who you're talking to on the radio. I'll be retired from active duty by then. I don't know. Somebody somewhere might just decide to give you a call. Wouldn't surprise me. Let's both pray that never happens. Snake, if you or one of your comrades is wounded in battle, what do you usually do? I call for a medic. What if there's no medic nearby? I don't even want to think about that. Think about it. That's my worst nightmare. Any soldier can perform basic first aid, but it takes a specialist to perform the more complicated procedures. I know a lot of guys who'd still be alive today if they'd had access to a medic. Me too. So I got to thinking, wouldn't it be great if we could parachute medics into the front lines where they're needed most? You bet. That's why you're called paramedic. Yeah. With a unit like that, we could save a couple of lives, huh? No. No? Not a couple. We could save many lives. Thanks. I think the Army needs a unit like that. And if no one else will do it, I'm going to create one myself. Sounds like a plan. Will you help me? Count on it. Snake! What? Are you smoking a cigarette? Nope. <sighs> yes, you are. It's not a cigarette. It's a cigar. Same thing. Not at all. In fact, there's a world of difference. There's nothing quite like the rich smell and mellow flavor of a cigar. And that thick, luxurious smoke is almost sensual when it... Yeah, 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 whatever. Y you know something? Probably not, but I don't want to hear it. Well, you don't have a choice. <sighs> Cigarettes are bad for you. It's not a cigarette. It's a... Quiet, you. <sighs> Smoking is bad for you. In a recent study, scientists found that tobacco smoke is full of carcinogenic substances, like nitrosamines. You know what that means? It means you're going to give yourself lung cancer if you keep on smoking. But that's just what some scientists think, right? Oh, give me a break. I heard it was just a bunch of hoo-ha. Do you really believe that? Sure. God, you're gullible. You ought to read this year's report from the Surgeon General. It proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that smoking causes lung cancer. Pretty soon the whole world will know that smoking is bad for you. Better quit now before it's too late. But... And don't tell me cigar smoke is harmless because it doesn't go down into your lungs. It just means the cancer shows up in a different place. Um... Got it? Yeah, yeah. Say, Snake, about that helmet and oxygen mask you took off right after you parachuted in? Oh, those? Those are the helmet assembly and oxygen system assembly I used to make the halo jump. The helmet is fitted with a bayonet fastener that attaches to the oxygen mask. It's also got earphones and a boom mic. I'm not interested in all that stuff. So why did you bring it up? It reminds me of something. 
reminds you of something. Yeah. The mask. Yeah, but I can't remember what it is, and I can't stop thinking about it. That's what you've been thinking about? Yeah, every time I'm about to remember it, it slips away from me again. Don't you just hate that? Mm-hmm. I know I've seen it somewhere before. Any ideas? How would I... That's it! What? The fly! The fly? Yeah, it finally came to me. You look just like him. Oh, I feel better. The fly? From the movie, The Fly? You've never seen it? No. Jeez, where have you been? It's about this scientist who's conducting teleportation experiments when he gets mixed up with a fly and ends up with the fly's head attached to his body. Never heard of it. Mm, that's too bad. It's a good movie. Paramedic. Hmm? You said you like movies, right? I love them. About the Major's code name. Major Tom? Yeah. He sounded like he wasn't sure whether or not Tom was the name of the tunnel that worked in The Great Escape. So I heard. So was it? Was it what? Was Tom really the name of the tunnel that worked? Right. So it was Tom. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Why don't you know? Why should I know? You watch a lot of movies, don't you? Yeah. But you've never seen The Great Escape? No. Why not? It didn't look interesting. You don't watch movies that don't look interesting? That's right. And yet you've seen The Fly. The Fly looked interesting, and it was. Hmm. Something wrong. Nothing. Tell me, what other kind of movies do you like? Let's see. There's The Quarter Mass Experiment, and It Conquered the World, and Earth vs. the Spider. Oh, and Mondo Kane. Hmm. Did I say something weird? Forget it. Hmm. By the way, Snake, what were you doing back there? Back where? You were giving some kind of advice to a Gru commander, weren't you? Yeah. He's your enemy. What the hell were you thinking? Really? What was all that about doing the thing with your hand on the first round or whatever? <laughs> By the way, Snake. What? What was that little lecture back there? Lecture? You were instructing the Gru commander, weren't you? Something about the first round or his hand? Yeah. What was that supposed to mean? Well... <laughs> Whenever he put a new clip in his gun, he'd always load the first round by hand, whether there was a round left in the chamber or not. It's a technique they teach in the Middle East. By making sure there's always a round in the chamber, you eliminate the risk of pulling the trigger with nothing to fire. He must have heard about it from someone or read it somewhere. In any case, he probably wanted to try it out for himself. And he was obviously motivated by vanity to show off his new technique. That's when you make mistakes. The battlefield is an unforgiving place. The only techniques you can rely on are the ones you've mastered through experience and practice. Uh-huh. And what were you saying about him being more suited to revolvers? When he fired, he was bending his elbow sharply to avoid the recoil. It looked like he wasn't aware he was doing it, but that habit can be either a fatal flaw or a gift. What do you mean? Automatic weapons use recoil to operate, so if you don't let the recoil hit you, it interferes with the operating cycle of the gun. Basically, he shouldn't be trying to avoid the impact like that. But with a revolver, there's no need to let the recoil hit you. Just the opposite. Avoiding the recoil lets you reduce the strain on your hand and arm. That kid might just be handy with a high-caliber revolver. Handy? Are you listening to yourself? What do you mean? He's the enemy. Why are you giving him advice? Uh, I... Snake. I don't know. For some reason, I couldn't help but point it out to him. Snake, are you all right? Yeah. Hey, that's Keraton. Huh? Right there, see it? Where? Right in front of you. This frog doll? That's Keraton. Don't tell me you've never heard of him. Is he famous or something? Come on, everybody knows about Keraton. Oh, okay. But what's this frog thing doing here? Keraton. <laughs> He's called Keraton. Right, so what's this Keraton doing here? He must be getting popular in the Soviet Union. Here? Not that you'd know anything about the magic of Keraton. 
On the other hand, you might be able to use Keraton's power to help you in your mission. What did you have in mind? Keraton cries when you shake him. If the enemy hears that, they might come to check it out. Maybe you could use it as a diversion. And I hear that if you find all of the Keratons and shake them, something good will happen. Try it out. What you got there, Snake? Some kind of drug. The label says pentazamine. Pentazamine? What the hell is that? Beats me. Let's ask Paramedic. Yo, Paramedic! Yeah? You ever heard of a drug called pentazamine? Yeah, it's an anti-anxiety drug related to benzodiazepine. It's a minor tranquilizer used to treat things like depression, autonomic ataxia, and aporioneurosis and things like that. Besides its calming and antidepressant properties, it's also known for its anti-convulsant effect. Anti-convulsant effect? Yeah. So in other words, it can help keep your hands from shaking. Mm, yeah, I guess so. This could be useful. What are you talking about? Nothing. I just thought that if I took this drug when I used a sniper rifle, it'd help make my aim steadier. Oh, I see. That's an interesting idea. I think it might work. Give it a try. Paramedic. Snake, it's so good to hear from you again. Same here. It's been a week, hasn't it? Four days, actually. Huh? I visited you in the hospital. You were still unconscious, though. Ah, then you must have seen me naked. Yeah, but you were all wrapped up in bandages and tubes, so I couldn't do anything but look. Better luck next time. Mm, let's hope so. But seriously, don't forget that you were like that until just yesterday. In fact, you really shouldn't even be on this mission. Keep an eye on your stamina gauge. If you start to run low, don't push yourself. Eat something to replenish your stamina. And try not to get yourself hurt. If you're wounded or get bitten by a venomous animal, go into the survival viewer immediately and treat yourself using cure. Yeah, yeah. I can see you still know how to nag. You're welcome. And I can see you still don't know when to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Maybe so. By the way, I heard you're going to lose your medical license if this mission fails. Yes, there was talk of that, but the mission won't fail, will it? Of course not. Good. I believe in you. But you know what? I really don't care about my medical license. Didn't they use that to force you to participate in this operation? No, I volunteered. Why? So that I could watch over you. Huh. Snake, you're the best agent I've ever seen. But you push yourself too hard. You're reckless. Someone has to stop you from getting into trouble to make sure you and the boss don't kill each other. Mm -hmm. So that's why I volunteered. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better guardian angel than me, right? Thanks. Stop right there. Huh? You can thank me when you get back. All right. By the way, Snake. What? You know the Ocelot unit commander? Ocelot? Yeah. That's not his real name, is it? I wouldn't think so. Is it a code name? You mean like Snake? Yeah. Maybe. Why? Is that strange? No, I was just wondering why he's called Ocelot. Why's that? Well, I looked it up, and it turns out the Ocelot is a wild cat whose habitat stretches from the southern U.S. down to northern Argentina. They live in a variety of different environments from tropical rainforest to savannas. The biggest ones can grow up to one meter in length. They're normally solitary creatures, and their diet consists mainly of small animals and fish. During the day, they sleep up in the trees, but at night... Yep. Uh, paramedic. Oh, right. So, the ocelot is an animal that lives on the American continent. But then I wondered, why would a Soviet officer be using the name of an American wildcat? Good question. Maybe it's because he's fast and agile like an ocelot. Hmm. Yeah, maybe you're right. Hmm. But why'd you go to all the trouble of looking it up? Because I was curious. Was it helpful? Uh, sure. The horse the boss was riding sounds like an Andalusian. Andalusians are from the region of Andalusia in Spain. They're renowned for their beauty, their gentle nature, and their physical prowess. Hmm. Just so you know, you can't eat them. Hey, I didn't say anything. Yeah, but you were going to. I was. Yes. Don't even think about eating a horse, got it? Guess I'll have to mark it off the list. What did you say? I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. 
Snake, look at your body. Yep, looking good. Not there. Then where? See the leeches? Leeches? Yeah, you've got leeches all over you. Leeches will sometimes attach themselves to you if you spend a long time in the water or the swamp. When you've got leeches on you, they'll suck your blood, causing you to lose stamina. You should get rid of them as soon as possible. To get rid of leeches, go into Cure in the Survival Viewer and press your cigar into them. Or, if you use the insecticidal bug juice ahead of time, the leeches won't bother you as long as the bug juice is in effect. Snake, I looked at your medical record. You've been exposed to an atomic blast? Yeah, the Bravo shot. It was a hydrogen bomb test conducted at Bikini Atoll on March 1st, 1954. I was at the American base on Kwajalein in the Marshall Islands when the ashes of death started falling from the sky. Any symptoms? None. At least, not yet. But a lot of the guys who were in it with me are now suffering from thyroid cancer and leukemia. Some of them are dead already. One of these days... Anyway, I'd better get back to the mission. Yeah. Snake, whatever happens to you, make sure you leave a descendant, okay? Are you saying you want to have my baby? No. I'm saying that in the 21st century, the genes of soldiers like you are going to be in high demand. Genes? Uh-huh. Remember when Watson and Crick discovered the double helix structure of DNA back in 1953? Ah, uh, no. You know, they won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for it the year before last. Of course, you have to feel sorry for Pauling and Franklin. They were researching the exact same thing. Sorry, I don't follow. Inside every living creature are little blueprints called genes. Through the union of the sperm and egg cells, these blueprints are transformed and inherited by the next generation. That's why parents and children resemble each other. The concept of genes was first proposed over a hundred years ago by Mendel, but he didn't know what they were exactly. For a while, it was thought that chromosomes were composed not of deoxyribonucleic acid, but of proteins called polypeptides. Later, it was shown that deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, was a biological macromolecule. Then 11 years ago, Watson and Crick discovered that DNA had a double helix structure. Yeah, this is all fascinating stuff, but what exactly does it have to do with me? The inherent characteristics of any given individual are determined by his or her genes. By duplicating a set of superior genes, a separate body with the same set of characteristics, a clone can be created. But genes don't control a person's fate. That's true. But having an offspring that's genetically identical to the parent is more efficient, right? You can expect better results that way. More efficient? You can't mass-produce human beings. Maybe, but now that we know the true nature of genes, human cloning is that much closer to reality. Nuclear transplanting is already theoretically possible, so one day... My genes are going to be a valuable commodity. Exactly. They'd never let that happen. Just think, even if your body dies, you survive and go on to bigger and better accomplishments. If you think about it, it's kind of an honor. Does that kind of technology seriously appeal to you? Well, I am a doctor. Hmm. I can't condone it on moral grounds, but I'm fascinated by the possibilities. Especially when I see such an excellent specimen as yourself. Yeah, well, thanks for the compliment, but it doesn't make me feel any better. Don't be so glum. It's not like it's going to happen anytime soon. We'll just have to wait and see. You say there are attack dogs? Those attack dogs are Great Danes. The breed is originally from Germany. They've been used for hundreds of years as hunting dogs. As you can see, they're very large, strong too. They've got a calm yet courageous temperament, and on top of that, they're extremely intelligent. In some cases, a trained Great Dane can be more dangerous than a human opponent. Watch out for them. Interesting. Forget it, Snake. Forget what? You were thinking about how they taste, weren't you? I wasn't thinking. Don't lie to me. I could tell by the look on your face. You can't see my face. No, but I can imagine it. <clears throat> Don't you dare think about trying to capture an attack dog. <clears throat> you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Snake, be careful of those attack dogs. Don't worry. I know how dangerous they are. 
No, you're the one who's dangerous. Me? Those dogs are just innocent animals, even if they've been trained to kill. You shouldn't hurt them unless you have to. But... You know, humans and dogs have been living together for 50,000 years ever since the Stone Age. Sure, they make good pets and watchdogs, but they also help us out in a variety of different fields. Not just as police and army dogs, but as hunters, shepherds, rescuers, and seeing eye dogs. They deserve our respect. I know what you mean. I'm a dog sled fan myself. In the future, many of the jobs that dogs do now will probably be taken over by machines. They'll have miniature unmanned reconnaissance vehicle and security systems. And in the 21st century, I'll bet they'll even be selling robot dogs as pets. You've got to be kidding. But even if that happens, dogs will still be our most trusted companions. Unmanned recon vehicle? That's a pretty scary thought. Well, for now, trained dogs are the best they've got. That door appears to be locked from the inside. You won't be able to open it from the outside. But there must be some way to use the door to sneak inside. And what do you propose? Well, I, um... How about if you stand in front of the door and perform a ritual dance? A ritual dance? That's what they do in Japan when they find a door that won't open. Are you serious? Of course. She certainly seems to know a lot about Japan. Yeah, but this is the Soviet Union. I don't think doing a dance is going to make the door open. Then you think of something. Snake Eye... Huh? Ah! Uh -huh. uh, hello there? Paramedic, it's me. Snake? Oh, it's you. For a minute there, I thought you were someone else. Why are you so nervous? You've seen this mask before, right? Yeah, but it looks so cool. Huh? Cool. You know, kind of like a Venusian. A Venusian? I mean, not the crab kind, the other kind. Paramedic, do you really think a guy you've never seen before would suddenly call you on this frequency? I know it sounds ridiculous, but still. What if it was a being from another planet? You can't rule out that possibility. <sighs> Snake, your right eye. Mm. The cornea and the lens are severely damaged, and the eyeball is ruptured, so... So I can't heal it, even in the survival viewer. I'm afraid not. I'm sorry, Snake. I wish there was something I could do. Don't worry about it. I can still fight. I don't doubt you. But don't do anything crazy, okay? From here on, it's going to be difficult to see out of your right eye. Attacking in first-person view will feel a little different from before. Be careful. Yo! You're Snake, aren't you? And you're Sigint? None other. I heard that you're an expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting-edge technology. Close. Huh? I am THE expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting-edge technology. Ah. Uh. I'm the guy that designed your trank gun, active sonar, and motion detector. If you want to know anything about weapons or equipment you find in the field, just send me a message and ask. Later, I heard you fought against KGB troops in the Virtuous Mission. But this time you're up against Spetsnaz. Spetsnaz is the Special Forces Unit of GRU, the intelligence wing of the Soviet Defense Ministry's General Staff Office. Spetsnaz troops undergo rigorous training in all types of special ops, from assassination and demolition to intelligence gathering. That and Volgan's loaded, man. His unit is one of the best equipped in the entire Soviet Union, if not the best. I heard the enemies you encountered in the Virtuous Mission were only carrying weapons like AKs and grenades. Well, it ain't that simple anymore. In addition to AKs, some of the patrols you'll encounter might be equipped with Scorpion submachine guns and shotguns. The Scorpion is even lighter than the AK, making it much easier to handle. Basically, a guy with a Scorpion is not going to miss you as often as with an AK. The shotgun is a powerful weapon. One blast is enough to floor you and you're likely to be seriously wounded. Watch for that, man. Hey, Snake, remember back at the abandoned factory when you whittled the grip of that 45 down? Yeah. I've never heard of a customization like that before. Why the grip? To fit it with a knife. A knife? You're going to keep the knife and the gun both at the ready? That's the idea. Why would you want to do that? Sometimes a knife works better in close proximity encounters. So I equip both at the same time. That way I can switch back and forth in an instant. Badass. So that's that. CQC. You know that army motorcycle that Eva was riding? That's a replica of a German model. A replica? Yeah. 
After World War II, the Soviets confiscated an entire assembly line from a German motorcycle factory, machines and all. And then they took it back with them and started producing replicas? Exactly. Originally, that motorcycle was designed to be used with a sidecar attached. That means it's got enough power to drag a 200-plus pound sidecar around. So that's how she could pull off all those crazy stunts. Uh-huh. Of course, it takes a lot of skill to be able to control that much power. That Eva chick is something else. Snake, you said Eva said her Mauser was a Type 17, right? Yeah, what about it? That model was produced in the 1920s in a weapons lab in the Shangxi province in China. The cartridge part sticks out lower than the original to accommodate 45 caliber rounds. The barrel and chamber are a little bit thicker, too. But most telling of all, it's got Chinese characters engraved on both sides of the frame like you saw. And that firing stance Eva was talking about where you hold the gun horizontally? That's a trademark of the Chinese. Just like you were saying, when you're firing in full auto mode, the muzzle jump effect gives you a horizontal strafing motion. They say it's especially deadly in indoor and close-range mop-up actions. The Japanese called it bandit shooting and used to dread it. Makes you wonder where she learned to shoot like that. The Davy Crockett's that the boss took with her when she defected are mortars that fire nuclear warheads. They're named after Davy Crockett, the hero who died defending the Alamo in the Texan War of Independence. Remember the Alamo. That's right. The warheads are equivalent to between 10 and 20 tons of TNT. Every building within 150 yards of the hypocenter is completely obliterated. But the warheads the boss had with her were some kind of experimental super bomb. So they're actually even more powerful than that. I don't even want to think about what would happen if she used it again. Snake, you know what you have to do. Yeah, I know. Tell me something, Sigint. What's that? What does Sigint mean, anyway? It's short for Signal Intelligence. Signal Intelligence? The part of intelligence that deals with electronic information. Things like intercepting and analyzing electronic communications, determining enemy force strength and positioning from radar emissions and radio chatter. You get the idea. Code breaking is considered part of Sigint as well. Forty years from now, we'll be in the age of electronic warfare. It won't be long before information replaces firepower as the most valuable commodity on the battlefield. So you're saying they won't need guys like me anymore? Sorry to break it to you, but that's not gonna happen. No matter how advanced our technology gets, there's still no substitute for human beings. Hmm. Anyway, the Major is a man of foresight. He knew the electronic age was coming, and so he called out to me. And you responded? Well, I didn't have any place else to go. You couldn't find a job? Nope. None of the places where they do this kind of high-tech research would even let me in the door. Why not? I know you've got social problems, but... Come again? Nothing. I mean, someone with your talent ought to be able to... Yeah, well, maybe it has something to do with the fact that I'm black. Huh. The Major, though, he doesn't care about what color you are. I've never met anyone like him before. He's... different, you know? Oh, yeah, I know. I don't think racism's gonna go away even in the 21st century. But I want to work with computers and use them to bring people closer together. In the digital world, it doesn't matter whether you're black or white, American or Russian or whatever. Everybody's going to be the same. That's what I think. Snake, watch yourself. That area has been rigged with clappers. A clapper is a kind of warning device used to detect intruders. It's made of a rope stretched close to the ground with empty cans attached to it. When the rope is tripped, the cans rattle around and make a loud noise. That'll probably put the enemy into caution phase. They'll come looking for you where the rope was tripped. If you think an area's been rigged with a clapper, watch your step. If you do spot a rope, back up. Find a way around. If that's too much of a pain, try rolling over it. And if by any chance you do happen to set off a clapper, you better split before the enemy gets there. Of course, clappers are already pretty outdated. In the 21st century, they'll all be replaced by infrared sensors. Infrared? Yeah. Instead of a rope, it's an invisible beam of light that sets off an alarm when you interrupt it. But there's no way to avoid something like that. Nah. Every time someone comes up with a new trap, someone else comes up with a way to get around it. And it's usually a lot less high-tech than the trap itself. After all, the best technology is worthless unless you know how to use it. Sounds like the Cobra Unit's members' names came from the specific emotions they each carry into battle. Emotions? Yeah. 
For unbearable torment, the pain. For true oblivion, the end. For infinite rage, the fury. For absolute terror, the fear. And for unsurpassed bliss, the joy. The joy? It's another name for the boss, because of the joy she feels in battle, I suppose. Uh. During the war, she had a partner named the Sorrow. Sorrow and Joy. They say there couldn't have been a more perfect pair. That Order of Lenin that Granin was talking about is the most prestigious award in the Soviet Union. It's given to individuals, organizations, and cities for outstanding achievements in warfare, science, industry, the arts, and various other fields. You could say it's the highest honor the East has to give. You say Granin was involved in the development of the SS-1C. The SS-1C is the Soviets' newest short-range tactical ballistic missile. Based on what Western intel has been able to gather, it's capable of being launched from a mobile platform. A mobile platform? Yeah. It's a transport vehicle that functions as an erector and a launcher. It can travel on roads, then erect and launch a missile from any location. Of course, in addition to conventional explosives, the missiles could also be fitted with chemical or even nuclear warheads. A nuclear missile that can be launched from any location? I'll bet it wasn't the missile itself that Granin helped develop. More likely, it was the mobile platform. From what I've heard, the SS-1C is set for actual deployment as early as next year. That's bound to send a chill down NATO's spine. Sigand, Granin said something about putting legs on a tank. Do you know what he was talking about? If you ask me, it's gotta be a joke. Not only is making a tank walk on two legs a technical nightmare, but there's no point in making a walking tank to begin with. Putting legs on a tank would raise its clearance, increasing its frontal projection area. It'd also be less stable. Suppose the legs help the tank travel on bad roads. I, I don't see the logic in that. Isn't that what treads are for? I mean, anybody who'd seriously consider making a thing like that has got to be a wacko. Come to think of it, there was a guy in the States who wrote a paper on that subject. What was his name? Emerson? Heinrich? Something like that. I don't really remember. Of course, no one took that seriously. Sigand, Granin was saying that Sokolov's research project was a tank fitted with rockets. Uh-huh. Do you have any idea what he meant? Sorry, beats me. Mm. I wonder if it's supposed to increase the tank's mobility, or maybe give the tank short-range missile launching capability. But you're sure it has something to do with Phase 2 of the Shagohod, right? Yeah. Khrushchev traded Cuba just to get this thing finished, and Volgin blew up a Soviet research facility to get his hands on it. Whatever it is, it's gotta be big. Sigand, do you know anything about that philosopher's legacy Grandin was talking about? Not a clue. Never even heard of something like that until now. Right. One thing's for sure, though. Volgin's got a huge amount of money stashed away somewhere. Philosopher's legacy, huh? Maybe it is real. Major, why did the pain explode like that? Major, why do they keep exploding? It's part of their legend. Legend? The legend of the Cobra unit. I'll let Sigint explain. Sigint? Yeah, that. That's a microbomb. A microbomb? Yep. During World War II, the Cobra unit was used for the nastiest kinds of wet works, the kind that could never be let out into the open. Their missions were so top secret that not only were they forbidden to be taken prisoner, they couldn't even leave their corpse behind. Because of this, or so the legend goes, they carried a microbomb with them on their missions in case they needed to commit suicide. I always thought it was just a rumor. I never expected it would turn out to be true. <sighs> but why would they be carrying bombs this time around? It's not like they're in hostile territory. Maybe they're ready to die. Ready to die? Yeah. They've got no unit to go back to, not even a country. So they've got no place to die except the battlefield, huh? Yeah, no turning back for them. I wonder if the boss feels the same. You seen any enemies equipped with flamethrowers? Those flamethrowers are M2s. They were first used in World War II during the invasion of Guam. The M2 uses pressurized nitrogen gas to fire a fuel mixture of napalm and gasoline. It comes in handy for torching places that are tough to secure with conventional firepower, like trenches and bunkers and pillbox enclosures. Watch out, though. Get hit by a flamethrower in a narrow spot like a closet or a trench, and it's barbecue time. Don't wander too close to an enemy carrying a flamethrower. 
If you need to take one out, try sniping from a distance so the flames can't reach you. The flame trooper's weak point is the fuel tank they carry around on their backs. Put a bullet in the tank, and you'll toast them. What are they doing with American-made flamethrowers anyway? Well, like a lot of other Western weapons, those M2s were probably jacked for research purposes. But if they're actually using them, man, they must really have it in for you. What do you mean? The flamethrower is heavy, short-range, and can only be used for a short period of time. Not only that, but when a flame trooper gets captured, he's almost always put to death. Basically, it's a bad idea all the way around to use flamethrowers unless you're sweeping. And despite all that, they're keeping them at the ready just for you. What do you think of it? They're out for revenge. Well, you've offed an awful lot of Volgan's men out there. No wonder they hate you. Well, you've killed three members of the Cobra unit already. So you can see why Volgan has it in for you. You say Granin's shoes were rigged with a transmitter? That sounds like something the KGB's been working on lately. It's exactly like you described, a miniature transmitter that's small enough to put in a shoe. Granin said he got the shoes from a woman called Tatiana. You think she's a KGB spy? Could be. Or maybe it's some kind of ploy to throw suspicion on her. Hmm. Anyway, it's your job to find out. Good point. That thing Eva was carrying is a gun disguised to look like a tube of lipstick, also known as the Kiss of Death. It's a hidden weapon used by KGB spies since around 1950. The gun uses 4.5 millimeter rounds. It only carries one shot, but that's enough to get the job done if you fire it at the right spot from point blank range. <laughs> they don't call it the kiss of death for nothing. That idea Sokolov had of planting C3 on the liquid fuel tanks, not a bad idea. The fuel he was referring to is probably UDMH, unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine. It's highly flammable but difficult to handle. If you can blow it all up at once with C3, it'll take the entire weapons lab with it, no doubt. But that's only if you manage to plant the C3 in the right place on each tank. So don't screw it up. There seem to be traps planted throughout that area. And they look a little... primitive. Yeah, but this is their territory. Why would they need this many traps here? Maybe it's part of some kind of tactical research. Tactical research? Yeah. As I'm sure you know, the Soviet Union is leading a worldwide revolution among communist forces all over the globe. But a lot of the countries involved don't have the necessary funds and industrial technology, so they need tactics that are both effective and economical. That's what they're researching? Yeah, and traps are one of the best ways to do that. I'll bet that place is one of their testing grounds. You say they have flying platforms out there? Flying platforms are a type of personal VTOL aircraft. They were working on those in America, too, weren't they? Yeah, back in the 50s. They were supposedly going to be used for scouting and patrol missions, as well as to spot for artillery units and transport troops into rough territory. They even got an initial prototype off the ground in 1955. But the thing wasn't fast enough, and there were problems with getting it to stop and turn in midair, so they ended up scrapping the project. The ones you see there were built by the Soviets after they got their hands on the American design plans. The American model used a pair of contra-rotating rotors to generate lift, but those Soviet models seem to be using jet engines instead. They must have kept going with their research after the U.S. abandoned its own project. Now they've finally overtaken us. You gotta give them credit for sticking with it. They sicked attack dogs on you? People have been using dogs in wars since before recorded history. The Greek and Roman armies used to send out packs of dogs with spiked collars to charge at enemy ranks. Attack dogs were regularly employed in the First and Second World Wars as well. Traditionally, dogs have been used to keep watch, send messages, and assist in search operations. Then the Soviets came up with a new idea, using them to carry bombs. Bomb dogs? Yeah. They were trained to dive beneath tanks carrying a payload of bombs. Apparently it worked pretty well, but the Russians messed up, man. They used their own tanks for the training. Turns out the dogs kept going after Russian tanks and blowing them up. So the plan was scrapped before it got off the ground. Well, I don't think you need to worry about those dogs exploding on you. They don't seem to be the bomb-carrying type. But they are highly trained in tracking and detection. Don't underestimate them. They're excellent trackers and ferocious fighters. Attack dogs move fast and are deadly in proximity encounters. They'll pick up your scent and use it to track you so it'll be hard to shake them off. In a way, they're more dangerous than any human opponent. Be prepared. 
Those gun emplacements are DSHKs, a large caliber machine gun officially adopted by the Soviet Army in 1939. The name DSHK comes from the initials of the two creators, Dektyarev and Shpagin, plus the Russian word for large caliber. They saw a lot of action in World War II. The Russians used them as anti-aircraft and anti-armor guns for position defense, vehicle turrets, and infantry support. The combined weight of the gun and the emplacements is almost 350 pounds, so you can forget about picking one up and taking it with you. The gun is gas-powered and capable of spitting out 550 rounds a minute on a belt-feed system, which is bad news for you when the enemy's using it. Hide behind something and lob a grenade at it, or attack it from outside the emplacement's firing angle. Either way, it's not a good idea to rush at it head on. Or you might try using a smoke grenade to put up a smoke screen that'll cover your approach. If you manage to get close to a gun emplacement, you can take it over by pressing the action button. The weapon button controls the trigger. Beware though, the ammo supply is limited. To move away from a gun emplacement, just press the action button again. Use it when you need the upper hand. The armored vehicle you see there is a BTR-152. The BTR-152 is an armored personnel carrier that was first developed in 1948. The design was based on the ZIL-151, a medium-sized six-axle truck. It was supposedly created primarily for use in motorized rifle divisions. Besides the standard two-man crew, it can carry up to 17 fully armed personnel in its personnel transport chamber. But stealing an armored transport and driving it around isn't part of the mission, bruh. Just leave it alone and keep going. Snake, that's an MAZ-535, a Soviet-built eight-axle tractor truck. During World War II, most of the heavy transport trucks the Soviets used were supplied by the U.S. But apparently, their performance wasn't quite up to the standards of the Soviet military. The problem only got worse after the war as the size of the Soviet strategical rocket forces grew larger. The Soviets realized they needed a heavy transport truck with excellent cross-country capability to haul their ballistic missiles. So in 1954, they started work on a new truck design over at the SKB MAZ Design Bureau in Minsk, Belarus. And what they came up with was the MAZ-535 you see there. There are a lot of variations on the MAZ-535. What do the headlights look like on that one? It's got two of them. Then it must be one of the later production models. The early ones were equipped with infrared lamps. They look like they're used for cargo transport. But you're not into auto theft, are you? Just leave it alone and keep going. Hey, those tanks look like Object 279s. Object 279s? Yep. We don't have a lot of details yet, but apparently they're a kind of heavy tank designed to operate in situations involving the use of tactical nuclear weapons. They're distinguished by two sets of double treads and a disc-shaped shield, which keep it from flipping over in a nuclear blast. Basically, the four treads widen the traction area and increase friction with the ground, while the disc-shaped shield deflects the blast above and below the vehicle. The tank is armed with a 130-millimeter cannon. It's also got a 1,000-horsepower diesel engine, which gives it a decent top speed. As far as we knew, it hadn't been formally adopted because of the high cost of production. But it looks like we were wrong. Anyway, those don't seem to be ready for deployment yet. You don't need to worry about them going anywhere. Just keep moving. Sigint. Yo. Eva said she set up a ground effect vehicle for us to make our escape. So I heard. The ground effect vehicle, or WIG, is something like a cross between an airplane and a boat. It uses ground effect to fly. Ground effect basically means that when the craft skims the surface of the ground, the air between the ground and the wing is compressed, which gives the wing an extra boost. From what Western intelligence agencies have been able to gather, the Russians are pretty serious about developing these wigs. Apparently, they're planning on using them for anti-submarine patrols. I guess I can see why. The wig's long cruising range and high-speed capabilities make it a good choice for that kind of mission. Eva must have gotten her hands on one of the first prototypes while it was being field-tested as a transport craft. The wig has a top speed of over 400 miles per hour, and its range is pretty good, too. Not that speed is going to help you if you've got a supersonic fighter jet on your tail, but if you hug the surface and stay off the radar, you should have no problems getting away. Tell me something, Snake. Why did you let Ocelot get away? I thought I told you already. Because he's still a kid? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty lame excuse, if you ask me. You think so? Yeah, I do. Maybe you're right. Eva, 
What kind of unit are those ocelots I fought a little while ago? The ocelot unit is an elite group composed of soldiers hand-picked from among the ranks of Spetsnaz, the special forces wing of Gru. They've undergone even more rigorous training than regular Spetsnaz. Their skill with weapons is the stuff of legends. You'll find they're much better shots than the rest of Gru. Watch yourself. Eva, where are you now? I told you, didn't I? I'm right near the Colonel. Pretty weak answer, if you ask me. I suppose you're right. Eva. Snake, I'm under orders to cooperate with you, but that doesn't mean I have to tell you everything I know. I would assume the same applies to you, too. <sighs> Eva, is that attack chopper the escape route you were talking about? No, that thing doesn't have enough range for us to escape in. So what are we going to use? Something you've never been in before. Something I've never been in? That's right. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Snake, you beat the pain! Not without a tough fight. How did it feel to fight one of the boss's comrades? What are you getting at? I just want to know what it's like to have fought a member of the legendary Cobra unit. That's all. What you want to know is if I can really face the boss. Is that right? Well, that too. Don't waste your time worrying about me. I'll get the mission done. I certainly hope so. So the exit of the cave is up ahead? Right. Eva, remember how you said today was a day of rest for the scientists in the hangar? Yeah. What did you mean by that? Until yesterday, there were tons of scientists and maintenance personnel working in the hangar. But because Volgan was forcing them to work day and night, a lot of the scientists were collapsing from exhaustion. So now that the prototype is finished and things are a little less hectic, they gave the scientists a day to rest. I see. If they were still working like that, it would have been impossible for you to sneak into the hangar. But this doesn't mean the hangar is completely deserted. I'm pretty sure there are still a few guards and maintenance personnel left. Stay alert. Eva. Hmm? You said you got along with the boss, right? Yeah, we get along pretty well. I admire her. Although she's supposed to be the distant hero, for some reason she's nice to me. She even carried my bags for me the other day. <laughs> I was impressed. Your bags? Maybe because we're both defectors. We never talk much, but I get the feeling that she understands how I feel. I've had dreams about the whole thing. Snake? The enemy's attack dogs are very highly trained, so be careful. You can tell if a dog's been highly trained or not? I can tell. How? I used to have a dog. You had a dog? <laughs> yeah. What's so funny about it? Nothing. It's just hard to picture you with a puppy. Who asked you? He was really cute, but I had a hard time housebreaking him. When he finally did learn, I was so happy. I still dream about it sometimes. Snake, don't forget about our dinner. I haven't forgotten. Sushi, right? I want to try the Otten Frog. The what? The Otten Frog. Frog? They have frog at sushi bars, don't they? Of course not. But I heard they eat frogs as sashimi and tempura over in Japan. Who told you that? Paramedic. I suppose they might eat frogs on certain occasions, but not normally, and certainly not as sushi. Oh. Okay. Eva, what kind of guy is Rykov? He's Volgan's precious pet. Anything else? He's got a handsome face. Is that what you really think? No, I'm just being objective. I'm not interested in people who aren't interested in me. I was hoping to get some useful info for becoming him. Hmm, he seems mild-mannered, but the kind of guy who would sit in his room and admire his bug collection. That still doesn't help me much. Anything more? I really don't know, Snake. Uh, can't you just observe him and copy him yourself? Why are you so evasive about this? <sighs> People like me don't even exist in his little world. I see. Okay, then. Did he dump you? I see, huh? You don't get it at all. No, not that. I'm just not good with his type. But... If this conversation goes on any longer, I'm going to send my fist through this radio into your head. Figure him out yourself. Later. <laughs> Eva, what happened to Granin? Dead. 
killed by the colonel. They know there's a spy. And Granin was a hunting casualty. Yeah. Volgan doesn't hold back in his interrogations. I don't think he even cares about the answers. It just seems like he calls it that, while he enjoys beating the hell out of his suspect. Just violence for violence's sake. Grannon was a guy who loved his country and pledged his loyalty. There was no reason he had to die. But Volgan doesn't need reasons. Once he loses it, there's no stopping him. He's an animal. Does he suspect you? I'm not sure. But it feels like I'm next in the hot seat. After seeing Grannon, I don't think he would let me off easy if he did find out. Be careful. You too. Eva, about the escape plan. Yeah, we're getting out on a wig. The ground effect vehicle. Right. Here they call it an Akranel plan. The Soviet Union has already finished testing one of those? No, this is just the prototype given to Gru. It was designed to search out and destroy American submarines. That's why it has a long range and a decent speed of 470 miles per hour. It's far beyond the BE-1 developed three years ago. The problem for us is that the one here doesn't have any weapons on board. If we're tailed, our only choice is to try and shake them. I'll leave that to you. Sorry if I won't have the time to play stewardess for you. Snake, have you heard about the massacre that happened in the forest near the village of Gnezdovo? The Katyn Forest Massacre, right? During World War II, the German army came upon the bodies of 4,000 dead Polish in the forest of Katyn. Yeah, Germany blamed the Soviet Union, but the Soviet Union denied it, blaming Germany in return. The truth is that Stalin ordered the NKVD to carry out the killings. And it's not just Katyn. In places like western Ukraine and Belarus, there must have been at least 20,000 Poles in the prison camps. Why are you telling me this? Volgan was one of the people responsible. He was one of the vicious leaders behind it. Volgan was? He blamed it on a prisoner revolt to allay any fears and requested they be put to death. I've heard that Volgan even removed the blindfolds from each prisoner before he beat them to death. I knew he wasn't all there in the head, but this... Not someone you could be friends with. Eva, that was some pretty nice driving. <laughs> really? Ballsy, yet overwhelmingly accurate. That kind of driving isn't something you can pick up in a couple of days. I told you to trust me. I love motorcycles. It is not easy to jackknife a bike like that. So, you believe me now? Think I'll pass on going tandem, though. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, your Rykov disguise is complete. Now they won't stop you no matter what you do. Even if I punch someone in the face? Right. Really? Really. Why? Rykov's just that kind of guy. Uh -huh. Eva, about the contents of the backpack you got for me. Is something wrong with it? The food has all gone. Oh. Did you eat it? Of course not. Why would I? Then who did? Is there something missing? Yeah, all of my food. Well, how strange. You didn't. It wasn't me. Huh. All those snakes and crocodiles and suspicious-looking mushrooms, I, I wouldn't eat that stuff even if you paid me. What about the instant noodles? Mm. Eva? I was hungry, okay? Give me a break. It's just a little packet of noodles. It wasn't just the noodles, all those animals I worked so hard to capture. That wasn't me. So who was it? It was Ocelot. Ocelot? He said he wanted to eat the same things you did. Why would he do that? You haven't figured it out? No. You are dense. <sighs> Eva, you didn't lose any of my equipment, did you? Why? Don't you trust me? It's not that, it's just... Don't fret. I haven't thrown anything away. Not even that fine piece of literature. Uh... Honestly, in the middle of a mission? I... that's... I know. Jeez. All you had to do was tell me and it would have helped you out. What? Distracting the enemy. Uh-oh. Oh. Hmm. Eva, about the forty-five and the Mark 22 you showed me. Yeah? You said you got them from a vault full of Western weapons, right? 
That I did. Eva, about this explosive. The C3? Yeah. Wasn't this stuff developed in the States? That's right. So where did you get it? There's a vault full of Western weapons used for research purposes. And you stole it from there? Yep. How? A vault full of secret Western technology should be under strict surveillance. You really want to know? Yeah. Really? Yes. Well, I'm not telling anyway. Why not? It'd be a waste of time. A waste of time? Even if I explained how I did it, you'd never be able to do it yourself. What does that mean? Exactly what it sounds like. Eva, what happened to Ocelot? <laughs> Can't get enough of him, huh? He doesn't trust you. I know. So it's me you're worried about then. Eva. I'm fine. I know how to handle him. Besides, I think he's got his mind set on someone else right about now. What? Figure it out. Eva, that Shagahod data you got from Sokolov. Uh-huh. Are you really going to give it to Khrushchev? You think I'm going to answer that? I know I want you to answer me. You're asking me for something I can't give you. Uh. Snake, I have a mission to carry out just like you. Please, try to understand. <laughs> Eva, didn't you take a picture of me when I was about to leave the waterfall cave? Oh, that. That's a button-shaped hidden camera developed by the KGB. I use it to take pictures of the fortress and the Shagahad and... That's not what I wanted to know. Why did you take a picture of me? Because I wanted a picture of you. <sighs> if I told you why, would you believe me anyway? <sighs> Snake, I wanted to ask you something. What? In the torture room? Why did you protect me when Ocelot was about to fire? Because I knew that the chamber wasn't empty, and you'd be dead if he pulled the trigger. But your eye... I was tied up, and it happened so fast. It was the best I could do. I feel a little strange, but it won't interfere with the mission. What about me? Huh? Did you only save me because I was important for completing your mission? What other reason would there be? <sighs> and when the mission is over? Right now... It's just the mission. The mission you used to love? That's not what I mean, Eva. Snake? You're all right. Were you worried about me? Yeah, I can't continue my mission without your help. I'm touched by your honesty. Don't concern yourself with me. I'm doing just fine. But... What? Thanks anyway. Sure. Okay, back to the mission. Eva. Hmm? There's a house here in the middle of the woods. So there is. It looks like a cottage, but what is it? It really was a cottage once. It was originally the dacha of a high-ranking official. Now it's being used as a relay station. There should be a supply of ammo and rations. I also heard they put an M63 light machine gun in there. But watch out. There's supposed to be a unit posted in there. Eva, I wanted to ask you about Ocelot. Yeah, I know. He's pretty infatuated with you, isn't he? That's not what I meant. Aren't the Ocelots an elite unit? Yeah. So how'd he get to be their commander? He can't be any older than 18 or 19. I can't believe he's already a major. I heard from the colonel that he's been given special treatment. Special treatment? Yeah. He's the son of some legendary hero or something. Mm, no wonder he seems to have the right stuff. So who is this legendary hero anyway? Beats me. Mm -hmm. The colonel never told me. All I heard was that his mother was supposedly shot in the gut during battle, and that he was born right there with bullets whizzing past them. A pregnant woman in the middle of a battle? That's what I heard. They say that when they stitched her up, the scar was shaped like a snake. Well, that's battlefield medicine for you. What about his father, this legendary hero? He didn't tell me. I don't think Ocelot's ever met his parents. Are they dead? Maybe. I don't know. There were a lot of MIAs back then, during the last days of the war. Ocelot probably would have ended up the same way. But he was taken in and raised by Gru and Bolgan. Because he was special. That's my guess. Eva. What? I couldn't get a hold of you for a while there. What were you doing? What do you think I was doing? That's what I'm asking you. Why are you asking me that? 
Because I want to know, that's why. Want to know what? Will you stop answering my questions with questions? Are you mad? <sighs> See ya. Eva. Yes? Who is that Tatiana? <laughs> Taken a liking to her, have we? Mm. Yeah, she's a cutie. Who is she? I don't know that much about her, but from what I can tell, she seems to be Sokolov's lover. Can you find out a little more? Snake. She already has a man. Eva? All right. Just give me a minute. Snake, I found out what I could about your Tanya. Just as I thought, she's apparently Sokolov's lover. When Sokolov was taken away from his research facility, she was taken along with him. So she's been with him since he was at the research facility? Mm, that's what it looks like. Are you sure about that? Yes. Why? The Major said Sokolov wasn't the kind of guy who'd take a lover. Mm, maybe he was lonely, being away from his family for so long. And whatever else he is, Sokolov's still a man. It's only natural he'd be attracted to her. Only natural? She's irresistible. Gorgeous in a girl-next-door kind of way. Nice proportions, too. Hmm. Sounds like your type, huh? Eva. Gotta go. Eva, how are things on your end? Are you going to be able to make it? I'm fine. I managed to slip out okay, though I did run into a few snags. Is there a problem? I took a little detour on my way here. Detour? Yeah. I thought since you went to all this trouble to meet me, I should give you a present. A present? What is it? You really want to know? Yeah. It's a secret. <sighs> You'll find out when you get here. By the way, Snake. What? Why aren't you eating it? Huh? What are you talking about? The instant noodles. Why aren't you eating them? Do I have to? Of course you do. Why? <laughs> because it's a present for me. Um. You probably didn't know, but instant noodles are really popular among the troops here at Groznygrad. It was really hard to get my hands on some. And I even managed to get three whole packages of it. Three? But you only gave me two. Uh, anyway, that's not the point. The point is, you'd better eat it, or else. Eva, about this Major Rykov. Yes? You said he had Colonel Class authorization, right? Right. But his rank is Major, so how can he have Colonel Class authorization? Rykov is treated as an officer of equal rank with Colonel Volgin. Treated as the same rank? Yeah. Even though he's a major? Right. Why? You don't know? No. Even after seeing that photo? Nope. Has anyone ever told you you're a bit slow? What are you talking about? I'll leave you to think about it. Wait a minute. Gotta go. By the way, Snake, do you have a calorie mate? Yeah. Is it any good? Yeah. I haven't tried it yet. Oh. You want it? What? Do you want the calorie, mate? What? What are you saying? You want it, don't you? Well, I didn't say that. So you don't want it, then? No. But if you were going to give it to me as a token of thanks for me helping you out, then of course I wouldn't refuse it. Are you on a diet? What did you say? Calorie made is supposed to be really good for losing weight. <laughs> Are you saying I'm fat? No. I'm not on a diet, and I don't need one. I, I just wanted to try the taste. Oh, sorry. <sighs> be careful with what you say. Yeah, sorry. So, is it true? Is what true? <sighs> that it's good for losing weight. Yeah. Calorie Mate provides a nutritionally balanced source of energy, and it makes counting calories easy. That's what's supposed to make it good for dieting. Oh, I see. I heard that all of the geisha in Japan use it. Geisha? Yeah. I've never heard about that. Really? Yes. I'm sure there are some geisha out there using Calorie Mate for diets, but I doubt all of them are using it. Oh, I guess not. This is Snake. I've made it to the sneaking point. You're right on time, Snake. 
Yeah, for being dragged out of the sack at two in the morning, I did my best. Rise and shine. Don't you love mornings? Colonel, nobody loves being dragged away from their vacation. I'm sorry, but we needed you. Something big is going down. Very big. That's why. All right. So what is this important mission? I'll say it once, and only once. I am not taking out any Metal Gears. Don't worry. And no saving some VIP or old man. It's nothing like that. If it's like a hot damsel in distress, I'll think about it. Well, it's not quite a hot damsel in distress, but it is a rescue mission. Rescuing who? Apes. What? Monkeys. But not just any monkeys. Well, you said monkeys? Just listen. Your mission is to infiltrate the jungle and capture all of the monkeys. Again. You said monkeys? Yes, monkeys. This isn't really my thing. If you want your monkeys, you better ask Spike or Jimmy. Unfortunately, they weren't available. What about me? I was on vacation. Snake, we need you. If you don't do this, who will? It's not like someone else couldn't handle a stealth mission. Don't say that. This is the genre we turned over every leaf in. Why don't you make Sam or Gabe do the job? Snake. Isn't this just some monkey catching action? Snake, I'm asking you. It's a request from the professor himself. The professor? Natalie's grandfather? That's the one. The one who came up with the monkey helmet? Well, that was the professor's classmate. His classmate? From high school. Not only that, but the professor is a friend of Otacon's. He's Otacon's friend, too? It's because of the professor that Otacon has been able to come up with some of his inventions. <sighs> All right. What are the details? So you'll do it. Great. Uh, I'm not against some monkey catching, but I'd rather be collecting pants. Snake, the monkeys have fled into the jungle. When you find them, knock them out for capture. Right. I'm not going to be able to grab them when they're jumping all around the place. Right. When you've grabbed all the monkeys, your mission is complete. Gotcha. Commencing Operation Ape Snake. Snake, when you capture a monkey, yell out the password. With the password, a warp device will activate. Understood. Good. I'm counting on you, Snake. This is Patrol, requesting fire support. Over. Understood, Patrol. Commencing fire support. As per standard operating procedure, this frequency will no longer be used. Out. This is Patrol. The area is clear. Recommend discontinuing the state of alert. Over. Understood, Patrol. Backup units will be withdrawn. As per standard operating procedure, this frequency will no longer be used. Out. Understood, Patrol. As per standard operating procedure, this frequency will no longer be used. Out.